to a special edition of the Easy Shivers Game Podcast. This is a look back in the year we just left. I brought some lovely individuals with me today to discuss that very topic. Now, we're going to start with someone you know well. He's been on this show plenty of times. Emma Watkins Jr. from VGU TV. How are you? How's it going? Uh, I think it took a wrong turn. Uh, I was supposed to be on the uh, kind of funny game. No, again, you're fine. <laughs> no, you were. You are. What, ladies and gentlemen, he means he's supposed to be more successful than he is. I still don't understand nah. how he's in the top of something so far. Like, he should, should be, be more successful. I, I, should I, I actually I second this. Yeah, I, 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 I literally every, every few times he says yes to the podcast. I'm like, fucking loser. <laughs> like, I can't believe he's still saying yes. <laughs> can't believe it. Can't believe it. Uh, I'm waiting for the day he's like, <laughs> I'm smoking cigars with the Robert gonna, De Niro. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna big big name you one of these days. You're yeah, like, yeah. Sorry, dog. I'm I'm going to uh, Game Spot. You know. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm God. talking with who's over there. I don't know. Any whoever's over there, and then I don't that know. beautiful I'm voice, Imran Khan here. <laughs> yeah, is he over there? I don't know. Anyways, he, he's, he's not. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> the voice that was the first game game journals i could think of sorry yeah the you, voice that you, hear. you got lucy you got tam you yeah got lucy tam i know i told i bought shit i fucking bought shit you yeah know. yeah Kirk, 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 i think uh jesse gender's over there i know a lot of games thought people you just do. their names so. clearly you just yeah, named all of them yeah game spot shout out to game spot <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and that lovely well, voice that, that you're hearing is of course Brandon from Game Corner, how are you? Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, I, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I haven't made a video in a couple months, but we're out here still doing video game shit. So that's what's up. Yeah. You're playing video games, I assume. So you're fine. That's all of the course. criteria you need for the show. Always. Bingo. Speaking of video games, we're talking about pretty much the year of 2022. What um, some of our disappointments were. Couple games that we might have played through that kind of drought that we experienced all together in the middle of the year, and then of course we're talking big, big top ten of the year. Very exciting little collab. And remember, check the descriptions for everyone's individual channel names. We're going to ping everyone near the end of the video. But thank you so much for joining me today. I want to start. I want to get right into the show. Mm -hmm. We're, be we're beginning. Yeah, dude. Let's do it with something that you beat that didn't come out mm -hmm. this year. Your favorite game, something that you beat that did not come out yours. Now, originally, a little peek behind the curtain. I, na I named this the backlog category. Brandon had a much better idea for the backlog category. So, we're going to be oh. doing that one next. His actual wow. good idea instead of my bad idea. We're going to be doing that next. But first, I wanted to literally make this a talking point just so I can talk about a game called Inscription. Oh, hell yeah. And how oh, great of a yeah. game no. Inscription oh, yeah. was. That is something I actually got to. Prime time drought. I had nothing else to play. I heard inscription came to PS4, PS5, whatever, and then I went to play it. And wow, it was it was as good as everyone said. And I was not spoiled for a single aspect. So everything that happened was a surprise. And I won't spoil yeah. anything here. I just want to uh, spiel one more time about how much I loved it. I fell in love with the once the middle portion of the game I said act two I guess act two when that happens that I fell in love with the game and then when the the additional layer of the game began happening I fell in love with it even more so I love it because it is a game that it is a story in a game that can only be told through video games and I'm a big fan of games made a story made around our medium versus we tried to be a movie. Loved Definitely it. a video game ass video game. He said it, know. everyone. He said it. Yeah. Thank oh, you so yeah. much. Very, now, very video game, video game. It is game. very video game. Let's before we, before we move on, anyone want to talk about inscription? Uh, yeah, I would. I would love to talk about inscription. Oh my god, yeah, fantastic Please, video game. Um, I love the the lo-fi aesthetics going on mm. in that video game. Um, absolutely love the the mystery element. Yeah. There's so many elements in that game i think is is an important part to take away from that not only do we have a fantastic card game um yes we have we have an adventure game we have mm -hmm. a a little bit of horror going on here uh some some old school pc adventure bullshit yes. going yeah. on F yeah stuff yeah um, the one yeah, the some, only some time FMV i've ever said this stuff. but i genuinely wish i played it on pc 
That for, was actually for where things I, that that happens in the game. I, I was like, oh, this would have been so much cooler if I was on my computer. Yeah, I, orig- I originally played the game on the computer, but I didn't get to like the the halfway point, the second mm. act, if you will. Um, mm. And when, when it came out on PS5, I finally kind of dug into it more. And yeah, when, mm. when the game starts opening up and kind of exposing itself to you, I think it really becomes something very special. Um, and yeah, yeah, I, I very much appreciate that game as well. Um, I, it the, the intersection of all the elements, I think, is what really interests yep. me about that game. Uh, just just all of crazy to me that someone built something like that with just yeah. so many um you know layering elements to it so uh, definitely a really really dope game yeah it's going to be very similar to a game that we'll talk about later uh emmett anything on inscription before we move on to you um i i can't wait to play it i have bought it a long ass time ago and by a long ass time ago maybe like four or five months ago the classic emmett um, story yeah, I can't tell you how many games I buy, and I'm like, can't wait to play it. Oh, oh, life is happening. Goodbye, <laughs> dude. I see Emmett empty his wallet on Twitter like every week, bro. Like these are some of the best games I bought this straight month. Up. I, yeah, I, yeah. I hear him as he's emptying mm-hmm. his wallet mm-hmm. into the void. Yep. You know what? It's it that has actually affected a slight thing in 2023 that I want to do, where I feel like I I talk more than I do too mm. much when it comes to Twitter, and I, I want to cut that, that out. By a large degree, I want to cut that out. So it's the only time I've said this because I haven't tweeted about this because this kind of <laughs> you don't you don't you know, want to exactly. be one of those people that announces that they leave Twitter on Twitter like exactly, exactly. of course of course yeah. yeah so like you know that's that's something I'm definitely cognizant of so I'm gonna try and chill out on that I I'm not gonna say oh I'm gonna do this thing guys I like to just one day just come up and be like hey I did this thing let me talk in past tense because that means I did some shit. Yeah, um, I, I feel it. that. Yeah. I feel it hardcore. I'm, I'm good at yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's just something in general. But yeah, as far as description goes, I uh, can't wait to play it. Looks like a great game. I'm sure it is a great game. Um, now that you're telling me you should have played it on PC, I'm going to play it on my PC as soon as... If you haven't noticed, I've been looking down a lot because I'm on my tablet. That's where I'm recording from, but my <laughs> computer's up here. So that's... Once my PC that actually should be working, that isn't working right now, once that's working, then yeah, inscription's on the list, but eh, we'll give it some time. Yo, uh, Rain I'm or Storm, Emmett's here. Wait, what'd you say? I said the Rain or Storm, Emmett is here. Oh, exactly. Bingo, bingo. <laughs> as you are saying. Brandon, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just saying, I'm an IT guy, bro. I got you. If your computer is oh. busted, like, hit me up. I'll help you out. Like, no big gonna, deal. I'm not gonna force you to get on a plane to fix this. I might have another friend who's an IT guy that can help. But uh, that's we'll fair. See. That's fair. There's we'll a see. lot of us out there. So, thank God for all turning of turning it on. I'm, I'm turning it back <laughs> off, Emmett. See, it's been doing that on its own. Every no, it's so trying to fix special. itself. That's a special one. Yeah, yeah. It's probably a drive that's error, impressive. but we'll figure it out later. Um, in any case, yeah, inscription's cool. Fuck yeah. Emmett, please tell me your favorite game that you beat that didn't come out this year. Favorite game that I beat that didn't come out this year. Uh, I'll say this. There's another game that I was going to talk about, but I talked about it on a different podcast, and I haven't had a chance to talk about this game that I'm going to talk about. The one I that probably is actually my favorite game that I played this year is Dusk. Uh, first-person shooter, New Blood Entertainment published it. Um classic if you like if you like your unreals your old school boomer shooter aesthetics as they say um it's excellent it, it reminded me a lot of quake live that i used to play back in the day except oh it's single player and here's some really cool set pieces and blah 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 dusk is great if you want to hear me talk about that i talked about it on the eight bits holiday special as one of my favorite games of the year so uh go check that out that's i talked about it on twitter within the last week or so but i'll i'll share it again before this episode goes out so y'all can see that um but in any it case, looks awesome yeah, Dusk is really cool. I highly recommend that. Deck Verified, it's on Switch as well. Like, go go get on that. But the game I'm going to talk about here is Severed Steel, another Ooh. first-person shooter. Okay. Um, one that I'm hoping all of you picked up when it was free on Epic Store during the holidays. Uh, they were giving I away... Up. Up. Ah, I did too. I, I did up. too. Oh, no. I did the thing where it's like, oh, I'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah, It was I like saw, the day before Christmas, the right? Or something like that? Say again? It was it was the day before Christmas, right? Or is it the day after? It was one of it those days, and I was like, I'll get to it, and I was way too busy. I didn't get that. Yeah, I want to say it was the day before Christmas. It feels I, I think it was the 23rd, actually, specifically. Um, 
But in any case, yeah, so they gave it away for free. So if you happen to look at Epic Store that day, boom, congrats. But here's why you should actually play it and not just claim it. Um, it's basically what if we took the slow motion, like sh shoot a bunch of grunts of like the Fear franchise, and what if we just made it as acrobatic as Titanfall 2 and put it all together? And also, what if we like ripped off one of her arms and gave her an arm cannon so she can just like shoot through cover and like go through walls and stuff and just make holes? Um, it's a lot of crazy elements in one, and it is so great. It's it's the only game I played twice this year. I'll say that. I played it all the way through on PC through the Epic Store because I bought it on sale last year. Uh, or 2021 now oh boy new year huh? um i played it on there and then i bought it again on steam just so i could play it on my steam deck and it was great both times i love it both times and i i already said dusk is probably going to be on my top 100 list severed steel the more i think about it probably deserves a spot on that list just as much so um yeah severed steel is incredible uh and it's very short too it's like a three hour game like just to play through the single player and then there's like a roguelike mode on top of that there's a level editor that people are going crazy with it's a lot of game for not a lot of money so yeah definitely check that out it's on consoles as well playstation xbox all that good stuff yeah i actually um i saw your post for this about this the other day you you were sharing somebody else's twitter post or something like that and i had heard other people talk about it and as soon as i heard you talk about it i was like oh shit this is something I gotta. This is something I gotta look into. This is something that uh, I'm missing out on. So I, I have, I have uh, downloaded that now, and and I just need to play it. So, uh, Severed Steel is on, is on my backlog now. Hell yeah, we got another one, Steely Boys. <laughs> Steely Boys. Steely oh, Boys. Hell yeah, dog. <laughs> We're Steely Dan up in here. Brandon. Hell yeah. You are forgiven if you don't have something for this category. I see. He just learned minutes what the actual oh. category was. But did you have something that? You loved it from this year that didn't come out for this year. Um, yeah, uh, totally. Actually, I have, a, I have a super weird one. So oh. check this out. Mm. Um, I got into, uh, uh, I got, I dabbled with some emulators earlier this year. Uh, and, all right. And, uh, of course, with I games started, that you I, own. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. <laughs> not, of course not you own. That I own. Of course In you fact, own all these. It was, uh, yes, of mm. course. L legally speaking, of course yes. I own all these. Um, this was, I actually played, a English ROM translation what? of a Super Nintendo game called Tokimeki Memorial. Oh my god, no you didn't. I did. <laughs> I played it three times this year. Oh um, my god. And I fell in love with that game. Oh my god. Wow. I don't know if... I'm sure some of you have seen Tim Rogers' um, Tokimeki Memorial sure. review. Uh, amazing, amazing review of one of my favorite YouTube videos of all time. Um, it it got me going, and I I've been waiting for a Tokimeki Memorial like translation or something like that. I just want to point out right now that the translation is terrible. Um, I I I would probably recommend to most people that you should either wait um, for a better translation or. Learn Japanese. <laughs> Learn Japanese, yeah, because you're never going to see that game come come to English-speaking uh, countries. So anyway, I played this game about three times, um, and I absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, the, the, the translation was rough, but I was able to sort of see through the lines and really, really got into that game over a couple weekends. And um, I highly recommend it to anyone who is interested in... RPG mechanics or uh, just old Super Nintendo games or dating sims with weird shit going on. Like it's <laughs> it, it, it's a dating sim, but it goes like so much further than that. Like you're you're dealing with like a day to day RPG mechanics where you're kind of building on your character and building these stats to interact with these characters. And it really is a very, very special experience. Um, I'm pretty sure it's produced by the dude who does Castlevania and I think Hideo Kojima had a had a hand in it at a certain point. So um I, I mean it's cre cream of the crop when it comes to comes to dating sims. I, I I genuinely don't play dating sims, but um I figured this was this was a special case and I I loved it. It was great. It was great. So uh that that was my weird one this year. 
I love so much that I, that's the game you fucking. Yeah, I love this. This is cool. <laughs> this is thank very you, cool. You, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, I spent I spent quite a bit of time playing that, and I was very embarrassed uh, sitting next to my girlfriend while doing it, but I got <laughs> through it, and uh, it was it was great. I had a great experience, so I highly recommend it to anyone who who wants to get into that. Um, you just got to set up a, a Super Nintendo emulator. It's really yeah. easy. Um, just keep in mind the the translation is a little rough. And of course, mm-hmm. buy the game. Wink. Of now, course, yes. By Toki Mickey Memorial on Super <laughs> Famicom. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Anyways, uh, first off, I love this. Second, I think I saw this being mentioned in. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Emmett. Your top Is it the Tim Rod- video oh. essays. Is that what this it, was? Almost, because oh, this is wrong? there's a video essay from the same person, uh, oh, Tim Rogers. Okay. Uh, that is uh, Boku no Natsume. Uh, yeah. It's a different game entirely, okay. but he also did a review of this game here, Toki Miki Memorial, because I watched this review like a couple, like a month or two after the Boku no Natsume video. I was like, oh, fuck, I like Tim Rogers now. So I went back to that <laughs> one. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this video is great, too. I've been missing out. Um, so, yeah, like he Tim Rogers is a great fucking video essay. Amazing. If you, want, Amazing. If you want to look at great video essays, top uh, 22 video essays of the year. I put that out on VG not too long ago. So you can yeah, check that I, out. But, uh, where can we find that? Emmett? Shout out to uh, Emmett's uh, essay list. He, he killed it. Really great. It's very good. Out. Where can we find that? Emmett? Thank you very much for that shout out. You can find that on VGU.TV, the logo that I think I've been pointing to. Yeah, there yes. we go. You're I'm pointing it. to it. Yeah. I just had to get the mirror <laughs> right on my on my hands. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I really want to play Toki Miki Memorial. I, it's one of those things where like, if I just like woke up and I knew Japanese tomorrow, I'd play that first thing. But I have to learn Japanese in order to play this game. But maybe with this English dub or uh, translation, maybe I don't quite have to. We'll see if I want to bastardize the language enough for me to play it. But uh, I'm glad it's accessible in a way where maybe I could try it one day. And it is one of those, it looks beautiful still. Um, oh, yeah. it, it looks yeah, very totally. beautiful, especially given the hardware. It, I mean, the, my, the I looked at the video art, and it was nuts. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the pixel art they got going on in that game is meticulous. So, yeah, very, um, yeah. very. The, yeah, the people recommend. looked uh, incredible. Now, moving on to Brandon's, what he brought to the table today. Now, he originally thought backlog meant something that went into your backlog from this year. So I was like, that's a great idea. I'm stealing that for the show. I'm going to take all of the credit for it. And that is, of, of course, course, for me, Midnight Suns. Now, this is a little bit cheating. Mm. I've actually fell in love with this game. Um, but I did not beat the game before our beautiful New Year started. So it does not hit the top 10. I'm actually still playing it. This game is so long. We're talking like Persona <laughs> length. This thing is <laughs> insanely long. But it's at least good. Takes forever to start, but once you once the git is got, the git is real good, and I very yeah, much enjoy this game. I was actually one of the loudest people I, I think that said I didn't want this. I didn't really want if like the idea of Midnight Sun sounded so cool, and then they were like, "And it's a strategy card game," and I was like, "Goodbye, <laughs> <laughs> goodbye." <laughs> but. One Emmett Watkins Jr. got me into a little game called Slay the Spire that I played this year. Hell it was yeah. Very, very good game. Incredible game. Fell in love with it, played it for days. Very I'm glad we I got have some very taste addicted in to here, it. by the way. Yeah, we, we do. Have some taste going on. Not these other that. podcasts. Oh, kind of <laughs> funny. Yeah. These other are you kidding me? Who are oh. playing stupid <laughs> shit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dumb games. You, there you go. Yeah, I was about to Anyways, say, you're trying to think of a game someone else is playing. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Dumb game people are playing. Yeah, Gran yeah, Turismo. Like, fuck out of here. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, Gran Turismo. What? It's, good. it's a good game. It's good. <laughs> um, but I enjoyed it so much. I Once people started saying, hey, it actually does have a kind of Slay the Spire feel. And I was like, I'm in. Playing the game a little more. They are very meticulous with the detail in the game about how they want to teach you every single aspect of the game. And it's very granular. But... You do learn the game. I know this game in and out now because that tutorial was so thorough, but I could see why some people might be turned off on that because it does take way too long to get the game started. But once the game started, it is really good. And I cannot believe I'm going to say this, but I actually care about the hunter's story, which is the main character that you create. Can't believe mm-hmm. it. I thought this was going to be the most boring part of the game. I thought I, I was just hanging out with Captain America and Iron Man. 
the whole my whole driver of the game is that that story is actually very good and compelling and i want to see where we end at but i did not finish it this year i'm actually still playing it and that's why it is my favorite backlog of the year i respect that okay yeah i respect that too i heard great things about that game i just um it just didn't seem like my vibe but yeah um... you really do have to be into turn based hard based strategy game like that that's so many like like t- to thousands of people that hear one word they're out and then another word then they're out then you hear strategy and then there's even more people that get out of there but if <laughs> yeah, any of that sounds true. fun i do really recommend this game it is fantastic yeah if, definitely one i want to get around to too agreed agreed yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I i have plans too um it, it's one of those high price games too you know so it's like i have a you know, I buy so many high price games and yeah. I don't mind buying smaller price games, but Midnight Suns is like full price and I yep. don't know if I wanna yeah wanna dip into that quite yet. But I'll be shocked it's, it's if it's forty dollars like... now, but give it a couple oh. more months and it'll start getting to the thirty yeah. range. Yep. I'm, I was gonna say get, get get into that thirty, get into that twenty, I'd I'd probably throw down on that. So Yeah, yeah, it's a good and it's a, it, you will get like very much value because this game is so long and they made it the way they make it. Not to spoil things, but like they pretty much give you a character at the end of the game to incentivize you to play New Game Plus and you'll keep Ah. that character. So I'm like, okay, they really did really want you to play be light or dark because they have a Mass Effect Paragon Renegade system. And then they're like, all right, now New Game Plus do the other thing and then play with the new character that you get. One thing I was curious about is um, does that game have uh, like, like a like a social element to it and by social element i mean like do you you interact with the other marvel characters yes. right so like does that does that affect your combat and it does way, actually or? um so each person like has that. five levels pretty much of their friendship the way you interact with them with dialogue and how you hang out with them and bringing them into battle all increase your level you can also decrease if you mess some things up but it's pretty hard to do that you won't do it okay. too often but uh, giving them gifts and these things will bring them up. Once you hit max, you get their legendary ability and the suit that they keep shoving down your throat in every like ad for this game, like the that s- special <laughs> black and gold suit on every ad for this game. Um, and it's very fun to actually because the dialogue is actually very well written, surprisingly, in the interaction scenes. And I usually am listening like pretty intently, like what they're talking about. And as a comic nerd. They the stuff they talk about, I'm like, wow, you guys like really read a lot to make sure you understood all of this. There's a, they they mention like the elder gods are like in this game. And I'm like, wow, like you're digging deep into like like very crazy stuff to like cornerstone the game. But it's very good. Um you went into that actually yeah yeah i i like um the i i wasn't sure if it had like a social element to like uh to it like that and that interests me a lot i gotta admit um having I, that persona-esque yes sort of links, i will say link situation. it is weird you can't bang anybody pretty weird all right especially a fucking t- loser of the year more like fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's very weird because some of the dialogue i'm like are you sure we're not gonna fuck right now like what is happening <laughs> and well, things are getting hot and, and then the they're MCU, just like i feel like handshaking and then for away. Half these people if you interacted with them in that way <laughs> I, guess, probably true, yeah. I guess i guess my idea i'm like you get mary jane in that one comic book run yeah i guess Ooh. um yeah. yeah, that was really sad. <laughs> very, very. That was really sad. Oh, oof. Yeah. Really um, you know, you know, that's all I'm going to say. I can't believe you oh, know man. that, by the way. I mean, that's cool. Um, <laughs> it's a deep cut. Yeah, it is. Very. But Strange cut. They probably should have cut it, but yes. <laughs> they probably should have. But I will say, um, that is my critique with the game. It is very strange that you can't romance anyone. Peter Parker, known to bang anything that moves, you can't bang. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. You can't bang any of these people. And again, there's a lot of I had someone hit on me. Like literally they were hitting on me. I'm like, what is why did you put this in the game? You can't do it. So I almost think that they maybe did, but I had to take it out last second or something. I'm not sure. I feel but. like if uh if, if having sex is is the downfall of this game, like you're doing <laughs> 
pretty good. That right? is true. Like, yeah, that's, that's not, that's not, not bad. Not it bad. isn't that bad of, of, a, of a read. It's like I'm not saying like don't buy it because you can't have sex with any of them. It's just <laughs> very strange. Buy it. Don't Midnight don't buy. It. You didn't you bang anyone. Sex, okay. <laughs> yeah. What kind of yes. headline is this? You can't fuck Carl Danvers. Can't <laughs> crazy. I know, right? Crazy, dude. I make like him so that. hot, and you can't bang anyone. It's weird. I've been trying to have sex with Wolverine for decades, bro. <laughs> Do you understand? Decades. <laughs> Do you understand? Okay. Decades. <laughs> and then, okay. and then what is your favorite backlog game that you couldn't get favorite to backlog here? Game. Uh, this is the one that I kept saying. I swear to God, I'm going to play this. Swear to God, I'm going to play this. I'm so interested in this. It seems like absolutely up my alley. The fact that people talk about it with those hushed tones where they're like, oh, it's great. You don't want to hear anything about it, so I'm not going to talk about it. I need to play this. It's Immortality. I got to play Immortality. Oh, again. you Dude. didn't play it, bro. I, I, I thought you'd so get good. to it. Oh, I am, oh. I am oh. such a piece of shit because I literally said beginning of December, oh, I'm going to get to all these games. December is going to be my month. And then for reasons that, well, me and Elijah have discussed off the air and I can clue you in too after we're done recording. Um, things are happening in the personal life that are a little bit more important than playing video games right now. So, uh, Yep, haven't gotten into uh, immortality and a lot of stuff. I'm still like five hours into God of War at this point, so like oh, I'm woo. really slipping. I'm really slipping. Um, but immortality is the game where I'm like, because I know it's not even that long. It's like maybe three to six hours, if that. Uh, it's very short, and every time I see clips of it, I've been watching other people's like game of the year videos and just them talking about it, gushing about it. And I'm like, I know, I know, I'm gonna play it. I just haven't gotten around to it, but uh, that's something I definitely want to make some time for. I want to, one of these days where I'm off of work and I have nothing else scheduled, I want to just sit down there, kind of like I did this morning. This morning I woke up and just played Forager for like three hours on my Steam Deck, so like uh, Ladies I think and gentlemen, I'm, uh, I'm going to steal the floor from everyone because you did. That is the most amateur thing I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> the, I, I don't even know what the Forager is, but this is a, this has to be some sort of cookie clicker situation where I keep hearing about it and I'm like, so how is this critical acclaim game going and he's like well i loved this indie game that came out 35 years ago it's very good <laughs> i'm playing it, it on, on a backlog ps2 <laughs> <laughs> it came out in 2019 it's an indie game that's pretty popular it's on every platform it's not that obscure uh but it is effectively a flash game but it's great <laughs> i respect the obscurity i, I do i, I respect I the do. obscure shit that's, that's why i that. love emmett i i don't <laughs> hear a single person Talk anything like him, and that's what that's what allures him. As as he, he's like a siren call. The allure, the allure. Yeah. He's singing, us, yeah. singing us his forester song. And, yes, uh, trying to enchant, it draws me. It draws for sure, for sure. Yeah, when everyone zigs, I zag, and yeah, I just wish I zigged on this one because immortality looks great, and I know it will be great. I just it I is gotta, an Emmett ass game. I'm telling you. Yeah, the time. Like, is I thinking, wish I wish uh, we lived we'll close get. enough so I could drive over, grab you, and be like. Play immortality. Hey, will like you feel it. like driving a good four hours. <laughs> I could do it. I could do it. By the time you uh, get here, the good is already finished. Yeah. <laughs> Without spoiling too much, that is definitely one of my one of my top games of the year. And Agreed. um I would say it takes probably closer to like maybe ten hours if you want to see all the mm, shit it does, going yeah. on. So be prepared for that. But I quite literally just played through that this last weekend. And I had cool. a great time with it. So that's cool. it, yeah, it, it's like a perfect weekend game. Like it is. I put my whole weekend into immortality and it was my, great. me and my wife did the same thing. We sat down, it's, she got sucked in just like I did. Fan, yeah. And we were like detectives. Like Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were we were entranced with with just uh, like the book. what was going on. And yeah. It it was a great like uh experience for me and my girlfriend too, actually. Uh, it I, is. I gotta throw that out there. Yeah. It yep. it, it works well enough where you can like one person can control and mm -hmm. like multiple people can enjoy it, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much never mind. I'm not gonna say that. Brent. Totally. Good boy. Um okay, yeah, yeah. Top backlog game. Um something so you can get I, to I this I, year. I think I have a bit of a tie here, actually. Mm, um fine. so my my two really big ones that I've been trying to get around to and just haven't been able to is uh Faith over on Steam. It, oh, it, it, it's an it's an Atari an Atari like horror game, um, and also Norco, which is which mm. is sort of an, an a, a deep adventure game, 
sort of shit. I don't even know what the fuck is going on in Narcoff. I mean, completely honest. It looks, <laughs> looks, it looks crazy. But yeah, um, the, the vibes I got for Norco are very like uh, it's like rural Mississippi, but like near future totally. where like robots are starting to take the jobs. So it's like that mixture of like like, you know, the thing that we don't get a lot in games or really media in general, where it's like the working man, just normal living in the rural south. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's it's got like a very uh, dirty, cyberpunky, like sort of southern futuristic vibe going on that I'm super into um and so yeah i plan on getting to that that that's probably i gotta admit above faith a bit um that game looks fucking rad um and then faith is something i have purchased and i have played maybe the first 20 30 minutes of and really enjoyed it just at the time couldn't couldn't put the time into it so i had put it down but um yeah both kind of weird obscure horror-esque uh, of indie games that that I'm I've been really really interested in as of the past year or so and yeah I I, I really really would like to spend some more time with those um, especially Norco I gotta admit that 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 might actually take take over Faith but Norco uh, looks very good yeah it just oh, seems yeah? like a, a really dense and and cool experience um, I don't know what I'm normally into more gameplay what you know esque games. But uh, this past year, I've, I've sort of been vibing with some more like literature based, <laughs> like okay. adventure okay. games, sort of bullshit. So uh, that's kind of what I'm on right now. So yeah, Norco. It's on Game Pass. Highly recommend somebody goes and checks that out if it sounds like your shit. Uh, I think it takes place in Louisiana um, in in the the close future and like. You know, shit's just falling apart and people are trying to figure out what's going on. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Love it. Love it. It's my it. backlog game. Yeah, I love good. this because you guys are giving me games to play. I have not heard of Norco, so that's definitely something I'm going to be playing now. Yeah, I think I saw Danny O'Dwyer talking about that. And I was like, oh, Danny knows what knows what's up. So, yeah, I should I probably thought... check that out. Yeah, I saw Jacob Geller talking about Norco. Also, yeah, Norco, Geller, I believe, too. is on Game Pass, so check that out. Uh, and Indeed. Faith is one where I've been wanting to play Faith for a minute, but I'm just too much of a coward. It's Like you said, it's one of those like <laughs> NES, like super low-grade type of games, but then every second for a jump scare, it uses rotoscoping. So yep. suddenly it's like a very detailed monster instead of a sprite on the screen, and it's like very shocking. It's that I saw a video from Aaron Signal about that one. So yeah, definitely check that one out too. That's a it's a great one. You have some really good picks. Thank you. Thank very you. appreciate very, that. Very very um, impressive. Yeah, yeah. This look this all looks awesome. Faith. Yeah. Yeah, the game that looks uh, the, the rotoscoping shit they do in that game is is just very kiss. Scary. Looks awesome. So now we're all happy. Let's bring it down a little bit. <laughs> Biggest <laughs> disappointments biggest disappointments of the last year and i might have to go first yet again because this is something that i actually am very sad that i have to say this is a game that i also have on my list surprisingly but it should very much have been better than it was and that is gotham knights oh yeah. okay interesting yeah yeah, yeah. so um, in playing the game the story is actually very good a couple nitpicks with how it ends because it's like we all we all said this is how it would end it and you know what that's how it ended but mm. it had so much potential especially when you look at that first trailer we saw with the mr freeze fight and the way like everything looked and it looked all nice and that god that looks so good and then the product that we got is nowhere close to like to how cool that looked that looked like i remember saying like i will be shocked if it's not in my top five of the year and it barely even made the top 10. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Just as a little hmm. spoiler for you. Um, the, the performance, I'm not going to say anything new with that. The, uh, the loading, I actually didn't have any too many bugs happen to me, luckily. But it's, it's hmm. the same thing. And the frames just were way too low. Clearly, the game was not designed well. Um, I will say like things like the collectibles, actual stories, the boss fights, the way they actually did a lot of the core mechanics were done very well. But it was nowhere close to what I thought the game would be. I thought it would be like this marriage of like co-op with the Arkham system with like blah, 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 blah. Like 
all the it just good wasn't. things. It just, yeah, pretty much all the good things, pretty much an Arkham game, but it's co-op. And uh, you know what? I would have been fine with like a little dial back on like, oh, you know, we can't make it like super beautiful because there's got to be four people. You know, I would have been fine with all that. But it being 30 frames is laughable, for frankly, frankly honest. Yeah. Laughable. Not good. I mean, yeah, it, Not it's good at for all. a combat centered game. Like, I don't understand how that was. I don't know how not, that passed past the cutting room floor. I was going to say, have they not updated it since? Uh, like, I, they've I patched the, the game. game. They've patched the game. Okay. But it is not anywhere close to 60. I think they actually had to help it make sure it was a locked 30 for some people because it was actually dipping Oof. sometimes to 25 well, when a lot of stuff was right. going when, on. When they were releasing the game, they, they mentioned that it was not going to run in 60, right? Like it was yeah. going to be a 30 FPS game. And yeah. yeah, man, that's a huge killer for a game that looks like shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, again, I would have excused it. You can't look like you can't look that bad and have terrible frame rate. You got to pick. one. You, you can look great, have good frame rate or sorry, terrible frame rate. Or you can look pretty bad, but have a 60 120 mode. But you can't do both. I'm sorry. Agreed. Agreed. Oh, <laughs> And I, I'm done. I want to move on from God of Nights. That is the last time I'm going to be talking about that game. Please, Emmett. Or actually, you know what? Let's go to Brandon. Let's go to Brandon. What is oh. your biggest disappointment for this year? Um, I think my biggest disappointment this year was the Callisto Protocol. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Okay. I would love to hear. I love. I'm very excited now. Please don't. While I thought it was a an acceptable video game, and and to be fair, I have not beaten it all the way yet, so I I don't know the ending. Um, I where I am at at this point, I can't imagine it's going to pick up for me that much more. But if I can interrupt man, very quickly, you're not going to be surprised by it. <laughs> you probably could guess. You could probably guess what the ending is. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. Um, mm -hmm. and, and especially as someone who's just a huge Dead Space fan, uh, especially Dead Space 1, maybe Dead Space 2. Dead Space 3 can die out in the cold, most likely. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, as someone coming from that and being a huge Jason Schofield fan, like, yeah. man, uh, a huge disappointment coming from Callista Protocol, in my opinion. Um, just kind of a bland setting. Um uh, the emphasis on melee combat, I thought, was strange coming from someone who made a game all about dismembering enemies. Um, mm -hmm. And yep. uh, while the technical capabilities are very pretty, um, I mean, there's it, it's like watching a, a mediocre movie. You know, it, it just mm -hmm. it didn't grab me. It didn't make me fucking hype for, you know, some more Callisto Protocol. I imagine that the second in this series will end up being something worthwhile. Um, I, I think Striking Distance is really going to drill down on what made Callisto Protocol unique and, and hopefully do something interesting from that. But, um, I mean, before this, I was, I was like, Callisto Protocol over Dead Space Remake any day. And me now too. I'm like, Callisto Protocol can you know be left in 2022 and i'm i'm hyped for new dead space at this point so yeah um, so yeah. i think i think that's actually a perfect way of putting it where when i finished the game i sat there for a little bit and just went i'm really excited for dead space <laughs> like like i, I i'm excited <laughs> for the palette cleanser because i think i'm actually a tiny bit higher on it than you are but i don't think too too much the actual melee combat was incredibly frustrating i don't no, if I just am not good at it, if I'm but I feel like they happen too fast for me to really react in time. So yeah, I actually uh, found myself we're talking about the dodging here, right? Like, yes, the, the dodging. Sorry, mechanic. Yes, oh, the my dodging. God, it's yeah. terrible. It, it's yeah. not good. Um, it, yeah, It's I, so I, arbitrary. It doesn't f like when you dodge in a video game, normally you hit a button and you get yeah. a reaction from that, you know, and and in Callisto Protocol, you're just expected to move the stick to a certain place and you know dodge and like you don't get any feeling like there's no mm -hmm. there's no button press to um there's no like know. good feedback to it exactly yeah yeah there's mm -hmm. not like uh i don't i don't know yeah feedback there's not a good telling me what i'm doing right sort of mm -hmm. vibe i don't know that that was when a big I, one for me is the dodging just felt like a mess so i actually died a lot in the beginning of the game because you actually have to pretty much exclusively dodge in melee until you exactly. get a weapon or a gun. And I actually think the game gets very good, but it's only good because you don't have to use the dodge mechanic anymore. Um, oh I can gosh. now shoot it's stuff or I can finally. telekinesis. It's even, it's even this weird, like, um, 
like you're trying when they give you the gun you find it opens up and you're allowed to you know blow things to bits and before that you feel like you don't have anything like you're you're yeah. surviving you know and i like the element of survival i like feeling like i'm downtrodden like i don't have enough to take on these guys but i also want you to give me a little bit you know um yeah. and and i feel like there wasn't a good mix of that it didn't feel very survival horror -y, even though they were trying to make a survival horror game i will say uh, also to add to know i feel like um looking at a game like dark souls is a reason why is a great mirror to this why does it feel good to beat a boss but not feel good when i kill something in callisto is because callisto when i die i don't feel like it's my fault i feel like it's the game's fault because i couldn't read the mechanic correctly dead space or that's uh, sorry dark souls when I beat something, it's me feeling triumphant because I learned it or I figured something out or I used some ability. And in Callisto, I just I feel like the game killed me and not, oh, I lost because I didn't do X right. It's just like, oh, this weird mechanic that I don't feel like is being very good because half the time yeah. I don't know when I dodge stuff when I do, because as far as I understand, I go the pretty much the opposite way where the thing's going to hit me. I feel like I do that almost every time, but I still get hit. So it's like, all right, am I doing something wrong? Is it the game or in after a while, it just doesn't feel rewarding if it happens or not. It's just not a good input mechanic. Like you're, you know, like, like it's, it's bad game design. If I'm yeah. being honest, it's just, yeah. it's just bad game oh, design. Those shield. No, I'm kidding. It's whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it next time around. Don't if there was, a, if, if there is a way you could parry. So for instance, the guard mechanic is yes. you hold back when they hit you. Why they didn't put a parry mechanic there, I don't know. You just pull back just at the very right time and then just boop and like you're able to do it perfectly. Like that would have been good I enough. I think just translating that to a separate button would be because uh, playing video games is all about doing something and getting a reward for it, you know? Mm. So it's like it's it, it's bad game design if I'm just trying to move out of the way of somebody's attack and that is, you know, giving me a separate input or something like it's not defined enough. I, mm. I, maybe that's the problem. I, I, I guess I can't put my, my finger on it. But anyway. Emmett, your biggest disappointment um, of the year. Let me tell you what. You want to talk about space aliens. You want to oh, talk yeah. about fucking... What was the game you talked about, Eliza? <laughs> Gotham Knights. <laughs> you want to talk about Batman that are dead. This game <laughs> has dead. all that and more. No, nah, it doesn't have any of that. Uh, it's this one that I spent way too much money on to get this art book. Yeah, I oh, knew it. God. I oh, knew yeah, it. That was a disappointment. Oh, right. my God. Yeah. I was so sad. Uh, I was I, I was so sad for Emmett because because mm, uh, I remember I remember there was a video that we did together and I was like, God, Saints Row just doesn't look good. And, and you were like, what? What about it doesn't look good? And I was just like, I don't know, <laughs> everything. But then like you made good points. And I was like, actually, you know what? I'm high on the game again. So thank you. Yeah. you. You got me hyped and then it got me disappointed again. I appreciate it. And then that. just to burn it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just... uh, well, here's the thing about Saints Row, y'all. I, for folks who don't know, I love Saints Row. I played two. I played three. I played four. I platinumed four. I uh, played God Out of Hell. Uh, Saints Row 4, one of my favorite games of all time. It's like top 10. Like literally, I think it's number 10. Like right behind Nier Automata. <laughs> Ooh, like wow. That's, that's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, All like, right. I love fucking Saints Row 4. Um, and I love the franchise, of course. I, I was literally trying to play through the whole franchise leading up to this one. And, you know, life got in the way. But I got pretty far into the first Saints Row. And then I would have played every game at that point. The problem with Saints Row, this new reboot, is they, they want to be new. They want to be modern. They want to be like their contemporaries. Yep. And in trying to be like their contemporaries... You can't make the same meal that the people who have been making this meal for 20 years. Have. You can't make it to the same degree that they make it. So instead of doing what Saints Row knows to do, instead of going for the more over the top, more extreme stuff, like Saints Row has always been when Grand Theft Auto goes realistic, we will go over the top. Originally, that was just let's go hardcore into the gangster influence, the gangster lifestyle, and let's have all these wacky, colorful characters, and let's make it kind of like scary movie, but if it was about gangster movies, let's make it basically. Don't be a menace while drinking your juice in the hood. The game. <laughs> if you ever heard of that movie, <laughs> yeah, that's a um, way to explain it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's what Saints Row One and Two were, but then Two got just a little bit more serious. People were like, "Oh, that's an interesting way to go." 
then by the time three came around, it's full on scary movie. It's full look on. at all these references. Look at all these first cliches. Five minutes of the all, game. Wait, is it, is it that? No, it might be the bank heist is the first five minutes of the game in three. Sorry, uh, so the fourth one is in the first you... ten minutes in the fourth one. Yeah, and then just like yeah. cure cancer or solve war hunger. Like it's the exactly. one of the best prompts in any video game. It's hilarious. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Saints Row Four is just so it's so much all the time that you can't help but be endeared by it. Um, yeah, absolutely. This new Saints Row is they are intentionally not going that hard. Where there is still humor, there is still comedy, but this is more of a contemporary. I don't even want to call it a drama because it's not really dramatic. But they are trying to have characters that you care about. There are some moments that I thought were pretty cool in Saints Row. Like there's one thing where. There's one character in the game who's really in the car. She's like the mechanic of the group. Yep. And some car of hers gets stolen. It was her project car that was given to her by like some relatives. So she's really emotional about it. And there's like a really emotional scene that happens with that. And that's cool. Like that's a great scene. I'm sure I'm sure they're really proud for pulling that off and they had genuine emotions there. I don't come to Saints Row for that. And when you're portraying this type, if I want emotions in games. Naughty Dog's been doing that with 42 times the budget for decades. Rockstar's been doing that with Red Dead for, you know, decades. If I want that type of gameplay experience, and plus, if you're going to give me emotion, there are indies out here that are fucking killing it with some really hardcore emotional stuff that doesn't have the zany over-the-top stuff that Saints Row has to cancel it out. They didn't lean far enough in either direction. They didn't say, fuck all the dildo bats, we're going strictly serious, and they also didn't say we're going to keep leaning into this insanity and just go further and further into the into lunacy. They didn't say any of that, and so instead what you get is a game where it is still silly. You can still put on your crazy outfits, and I actually like a lot of customization where they have like a lot of prosthetics now. Yep. Uh, they have a very gender neutral way of presenting your character, so you can put any types of add-ons and clothing mm-hmm. and body parts, and it doesn't really matter. They're like, go ahead, have fun. I love that about the game, but you have all that stuff and you want to say, okay, we want to be like every other third person shooter. So you can't run around at supersonic speeds anymore. You, you, you can't do all these crazy gameplay things that you could do in three and four, but you can still drive around, but it's very basic driving because every driving is all the same. Shooting's all the same. Oh, and, but we have to have like some like doom 2016 type thing where you get your health back by doing an extra move on enemies. And it's like, you could have just made them drop health packs like Saints Row 3 and 4. Like, it would have been fine. Like, they they take a lot of steps towards realism or towards, like, contemporary gameplay. And instead of it making it stand toe-to-toe with all, all of the other games now, it just blends in. It doesn't stick out as much anymore. So, I haven't even beaten Saints Row. I, I played a good maybe 10 hours, and I was like, you know what? I didn't say I give up. I just said, I'm going to come back to this. And I haven't come back to it in the last six or so months that it's been out. And I feel like that speaks volumes. And it sucks because I was so excited for this game. I still think I'm going to go back to it at some point, but I have no desire to play this game. It's just another one. And Saints Row is not a series that should have just, it's not just, oh, it's just another game like that. It's not just another open world crying game. It was distinctive until they took out much to the personality. So yeah, it's it's not because they went woke because I know that was the narrative before oh, <laughs> before God, the game came that, out. Yeah, yeah. Well, so oh, many geez. people because <laughs> as soon as you turn the boss into a black woman, it's like oh no. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. If if you think the problem was being woke, you, you just don't know how to use your thoughts. There's, exactly. It's not it went woke. I want to tell a story really quick. Um, mm-hmm. I actually tried this game as well. I. Uh, did the opening and I was like okay this is kind of generic I hope it gets better I started walking around with the gun you look terrible I don't know who animated you holding a gun and walking around this is not PS3 anymore you you can make it look a little bit better than that you're literally like stationary and then walking around with it I'm like oh my god this oh, is yeah. terrible terrible but Fair. get through all that I'm like okay I kind of like where we're starting off so let's see where we're going and you go and you do this is when I turn the game up you go and um right. You go to your hideout for the first time. First off, it opens with a hilarious scene. You walk, the, your character walks in. He goes, hey, guys. It's almost like a sitcom. He's like, hey, what's up, everyone? He takes his gun out of his pocket and then hangs it on a on a hat rack. It's and it oh, looks fucking, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I was like, that is hilarious. And then they immediately go into just not hilarious dialogue. Just very plain. There's a guy with their shirt off and they're like, 
why don't you put your shirt on? And it's almost like a sitcom where they're waiting for like, like a, like a back, uh, a laugh track. Laugh track. <laughs> He's like, you don't like it. He's like, pose. I'm like, what game did we, I, I feels like I teleported into another game with this, See, with this dialogue. What I'll, what I'll say to that. Cause yes, some of the dialogue is a little iffy, but I like a lot of the characters because the characters, once you play long enough, you see like the deeper side of them. Mm-hmm. Like the girl I was talking about who has the emotional connection to the car, she's usually like the hothead. She's the one who's like, oh, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. But then you're like, oh, wait, she actually has things she cares about. And so there's deeper layers. I just don't care to see what those deep layers are because number one, that story isn't engaging enough for me to want to push through bland gameplay. And number two, it's bland gameplay. <laughs> it's just bland. It's just it not special matter. anymore. It doesn't so. matter how good the story is because like it's a game at the end of the day so like we got to play the yeah. game so it's like it seems a pretty like... good cw show and that's yeah. not what saints row is a pretty yeah. good cw yeah, show pretty it's, good a, CW it's show. a solid headline yeah, for that is saints row review. that is I, like that. I, I wish i saw mm-hmm. that on a on a ign review or something like <laughs> like it saints row it's a pretty good cw show like and that is kind of how it's it's not satiric really anymore it kind of is but then it's not I love the commercial that they open the game with. I'm laughing hysterically with how yeah. they made the commercial. I'm like, I love this. And then Moment the rest brilliance. of the game starts happening. And I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. I, it, it's yeah. almost more frustrating because I was like, some of this is incredible writing. Who, not many games know how to use like the character model to like in uh, to inject comedy. Like that person mm-hmm. putting the gun on the gun rack. That's hilarious. No one says he did that. No one yeah. mentions Physical it. Physical humor in a game is wild. Yeah, that's not that does not that has not happened in any game that I've ever played. Almost mm-hmm. any ever. Maybe South Park. Yeah, is is the it, one game I can. I Psychonauts can maybe. Is Psychonauts is a good one. Of, Psychonauts yeah. two yeah. was very good with the physical humor. Um, but that that was like that is brilliant. I hope that's more of this. And then you just never get it again, yeah. really. It, it feels like, like it got sanded down in a focus group. It really it feels had like to that. Be. It had to be. I there has to be that. some reason. There, or there were, af- and again, I'm not saying this is what happened, but maybe they were afraid of some jokes or something. Maybe they oh. didn't want to say certain things. I don't know. I'll, I'll say, because some people were thinking, oh, Saints Row coming back in 2022. How's that going to be? Because the humor has changed and all that. And you it's like, if you think about jokes. the old Saints Row, a lot of those, it's not like they were being risque often they were being a little immature and crass with like you know your dildo bats and whatnot but for the most part like the actual writing the actual like mission design and stuff a lot of those jokes were just silly and fun it wasn't necessarily punching at somebody it wasn't punching up or down it was just being stupid yeah they were were never pulling they're never pulling a, a south park like a trey parker you know sort of thing like like it was always pretty middling you know this crass yeah. humor for the most part but the humor like, didn't was, have bite it was just here's some silliness it, it was just <laughs> yeah. it was you know high octane all the time in your mm-hmm. face sort of stuff you know um yeah yeah okay. and i i haven't played much of the new saints row but i, I agree yeah from what i've from what i've ingested of of, of the culture of saints row <laughs> this this isn't it for sure it isn't yeah. it isn't at first i thought this game was going to be bl- brilliant and like try and have some sort of meta common consumer angle and ch- joke about like corporations becoming like almost paramilitary groups or something i was i got really excited from starting the game and then i was like nope this game isn't smart enough like like this game yeah. is not anywhere close to that it's, it's just another it's, shooter it's it just another so shooter more. every now and then they they have brilliant dialogue in the beginning and then i haven't heard anything about the rest of the game so i was like i ain't playing this yeah. very whatever no game. one got past the first like 10 no hours no, and I dare you. Not a single uh, person did, probably. I wouldn't be surprised if many people got past the free character uh, maker <laughs> demo that they released. That is true. Fair. That is true. No, that that is true. a solid demo. That character creator did get I, a lot I of agree. people excited. Uh, that, was a, yeah. that, was, that was a solid demo that they i thought the character creator aspect was, cool was, was a neat way to introduce people to the, to the world it, but um, bro, the black hairstyles they nailed all of them i saw oh, totally totally like, like, i remember oh, seeing that. people very excited that not just cornrows was in it i was like yeah that's, yeah, that's a good accomplishment that's good accomplishment yeah okay that's perfect yeah because because i remember seeing that i'm like yep because that's all Black hairstyles were in the last ten years. It's, it's just cornrows or an afro. Afro. Uh, totally, sometimes you get totally, a dread. Yeah. Sometimes you get dreads. But you know mm-hmm. they they want to get crazy and put they're, a dread. They're getting in. crazy <laughs> up there. Yeah, they're they're getting a little a little spicy. All right. Okay. 
<laughs> wow. So yeah, that's that's why the game's disappointing because you can see moments of brilliance. You can see that they cared. They just went in a direction that just like wasn't quite it, and it it just falls short of the ledge. It doesn't miss entirely. It just falls short to where you're still falling off anyway. So it is what it is. Totally. Totally. Yeah, Saints Row. <laughs> Let's just begin. Like Saints now. Saints now. Like Saints. Go, good way. Good way. Just the row, actually. Just, just row. Let's begin Saints. with our actual <laughs> top ten. But of course, it's not a good top ten unless you have honorable mentions, which I always do way too many. But I've been, I've, oh, I've been talking. Lie. I've been talking quite a bit. So I want to actually throw it to Emmett. Then we're gonna go to Brandon for honorable mentions, and then I'm gonna end it. So please, Emmett, tell me. What are in your honorable mentions? Now, I did not give anyone a limit. I did not mention anything like, mm. oh, it had to be this many, this many. So talk about as little or as many as you want. I don't have too many. I'll say one is honorable mention off of technicality. Uh, Wavetail, uh, three platformer, was Stadia exclusive in 2021, but it came everywhere else in 2022. Uh, it has a very beautiful art style. Kind of, If you play it, like the tone of the story, kind of has like um oh you say you're you're deleting it <laughs> oh oh for stadia okay anyway yeah. um yeah if you if you ever played the game the tone of it kind of has like an adventure time tone where it's very like sweet and like sincere and it's a very pleasant game the only reason it's honorable mention i played it when it was stadia exclusive in 2021 even though it came <laughs> out for everything else in 2022 so stadia i'm boy. not gonna take that one Oh yeah, I was I wasn't like a hardcore stadium, but I was eh, on there. I, I was pretty hardcore. I paid my pro. I I, I the only <laughs> I reason I was pretty hardcore is because as, of the only one legit at any yeah. degree. I mean, I paid my pro subscription. I, I'm out a hundred couple bucks because I paid every month for pro. <laughs> That's um, awesome. But they were giving away good games. They were giving away good games. So you know, it is what it is. Um. So yeah, that's the one honor mentioned. And the only other one I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give one to God of War Ragnarok right here. Because oh. I know I'm only putting it as honorable mention because I actually just looked while we were recording. I'm seven hours in. Oh. I'm just now getting to the point. I, I'm, I'm I'm speaking to a certain black. Y'all know who I'm talking about if you played it. I just got there. Just got there last okay. time I played. Yeah, yeah. So like I can I can see I can see it's starting to like do some shit. And I'm very excited to see what that shit is. Because I haven't seen too much of it up to this point, I've been like, oh, it's just more God of War. And I like it, but it's just more God of War. I'm starting to see that it's not just more. And I don't know what else that means yet because I haven't played enough. So it's honorable mention because I haven't played enough. I'm sure I would like it a lot. Uh, I almost put it in the top 10 at the bottom just because I've played it a lot. But for now, I, I want to play more of it. I know my like for it is going to increase, but right now, because you're talking to someone who didn't love 2018 as much as everyone else, I thought it was great. Everyone else thought it was like the best thing since sliced bread. And I was like, no, nah, sliced <laughs> bread is pretty good. So <laughs> here we go. I actually don't hate your take there. Um, I don't I, I'll talk more about God of War when we get to that topic. But um, I, I, I honestly, I think there was a lot of, I don't want to call it filler, but maybe Ooh. a pacing problem going on. There, so. Interesting. I can't wait to talk about it. Brandon, Ooh. please. First off, kudos to Emmett for only having two. Makes me feel um, a bit silly for how many I have. Please, uh, Brandon, <laughs> tell me your honorable mentions. I had a lot, too. Um, I had a lot, too, but uh, for, for sake of, of time and, mm. and not blowing up your podcast here, um, <laughs> I will I'll reduce it down a little bit. Um, I, and, and I'll reduce down to two. Um, first thing well, you're talking, I'm going to get a drink. Please continue. Of yeah. course. Um, Sifu came out this year, correct? That oh, was a, yes. that was a yes, this yes. year game? Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I think that game came out and just immediately just poof, like <laughs> went into nowhere. Um, and, and I feel like nobody was talking about it. And I saw some people more near the end of the year kind of picking it up again and stuff like that. But um, yes, I mean, Sifu is awesome. It, it, is. it is a mechanically beautiful video game um it, the 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 style the aesthetic the theme uh really speaks to me I, i've always been really into martial arts films and stuff like that so yeah. uh super big fan of that and i just think mechanically it is beautiful um and and really i just don't think sifu got enough love this year so yeah, um, if i may i want to stick with sifu for a quick second then i'll let you finish yeah. out um sifu a, a game i loved i actually don't have it anywhere only because i didn't like it why as much as everyone else did and i'm not i can't really put it why the art direction beautiful i love 
uh, the museum level. I, I don't think I'm very original in saying that, but I, it seems like everyone does. Like that's kind of everyone's like, oh yeah, the museum level is very cool. And I, I do very cool. I feel like I just was not in the mood for the game. Um, I, just, I don't think I was in the mood just for a hard game or something. I'm not really sure what it was, uh, but it's, I just couldn't get to it. I actually had to bump it down to easy, which I never do. I never do that. Know, but I was just like, I, I want to agree. I just want to play the game. Like I didn't feel like trying really. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put it on easy. I'm going to play through this. And I, cause I just, I, I kept hearing like this level is really good. This, I was like, okay, well I want to see what the levels look like. So let me go do it. I did it. And I don't I, I don't regret it. It was very, very, very good. But I am a little lower than, than most people just because I don't think I got super into doing the combat. But again, I don't think I was very good at it. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. And, and I completely agree with you. That, that was one of those games that I totally bumped down. I, I like was trying to play it on normal for a while. And I was like, fuck me, dude. I, I was hitting my I ass. I suck. Kick, OK, <laughs> I was um, so, so bad. At I eventually bumped that down to easy and, and I. I I love the game. I enjoyed it very thoroughly, and and I'd like to go back through and do it on on a harder difficulty at some point. But yeah, um, Sifu definitely. Um, if that's your thing, I, I once again I don't know if it belongs on a top ten list, uh, just because of how kind of specific it is. Um, but yeah, if that's your it's that's your jam, like you'll be very 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 into that. Um, and it, it's very mechanically sound. Um, and then just the uh, my, my my other kind of honorable mention I want to throw out is Plague Tale Requiem, oh. um, sequel to Plague Tale. R- 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 uh, it's Innocence. I played like part. Yeah, Innocence is it. Yeah, yeah Innocence is it. Plague I played Tale, it this year. Plague Tale Innocence. Yes, I also played Plague Tale Innocence this year. Um, got really really into it earlier in the year, and then was waiting for the sequel to come out absolutely adored the sequel oh my god fantastic video game i don't know if it quite makes my top 10 list yeah um but it deserves it probably maybe than some of the other games i put on there um it, it is it is a game that deserves more than it gets i think a lot of the time and um if you're looking for someone who is doing like narrative driven video games that isn't naughty dog or santa monica studios like yeah fucking plague tail requiem dude yeah. is is great I agree. um arguably a tighter story even than something like god of war ragnarok or um, I, I don't know if i'd go as far as saying it's tighter than the last of us or the last of us part two but good stuff um highly mm. recommend plague tail requiem especially if you're in into history or uh, French Renaissance mm. shit. <laughs> That'll be your jam. So if you're into the French, especially the yes. bread. Yeah, if you like, if you like the French at all. So. If you like French bread, yeah. you like big French, French onion soup, French fries. Yeah, a big, yeah, a big French fry, a French onion <laughs> soup fan. So you know, we French, French, French bread. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna rapid fire through through mine because I definitely don't have two, but I just want to be very quick with mine because I don't want to spend too long on them either. Um, I'll start with Last of Us Part 1, because if I didn't break a rule, it'd just be number one, just because it reminds me just how good that game is. Yeah. Last of Us Part 1 is one of the best games ever made, and them re-releasing just proves it even more. It's, I'm, 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 it's I a masterclass, I masterpiece. I agree. I, but Indeed. of course, I wouldn't agree. be so lame as to put it as number one. Um, <laughs> Vampire <laughs> Survivors. be lame. Yeah, I'd hate to be lame. <laughs> Wait, be video stupid. games? Come on uh vampire survivors cool oh. I, I i don't think i'm as in love with everyone else's i get it i i get it like i could understand mm. like wh- how that could be addicting i don't either i wasn't in the right mood or it's you know it's just not my thing but we'll get very it later cool. on it's good yeah it's very oh, yeah cool. we'll, we'll we'll get into that later for sure I, i'll yeah. be happy mm-hmm. to dissect i'm sure that, i'm so. sure i'm sure so well, let's move on uh somerville very good game very very good so close it, it, it probably is like 11 or 12 for me it's just a couple little aspects i was like don't love that but it was very good i'd highly recommend that a great backbone game by the way i played that on my backbone a little bit oh, oh um okay, cult okay. of the lamb should be on my list but the game oh. completely breaks at the end of the game and that i, about I just that game. couldn't yeah. i just couldn't rationalize putting it on my list because it became almost unplayable if i was not in love with that game i would have quit it literally were you kept playing it on were you playing it on Switch? Xbox. 
Oh, interesting. Oh, yes. Yeah, I was hard gonna say, crashes. I knew Switch was the one that had some nasty issues going on. I was getting uh, hard crashes pretty much, I want to say, uh, two levels before the end of the game or something. Like that. It was around the oh, end of the game. I had about 20 rough. survivors to 22 survivors. And apparently there's a bug that, like, if you get that many, something happens and it just doesn't like it when you kind of do anything. So it just could just crash at any point. I probably got into the 20s and the amount of crash, like, no joke, constant wow. crashing. Yeah, I got into a loop and I was trying to break it and I eventually was able to unbreak the game so I could move on. And I oh, again, I, I fell in love with that game, but the, it just falls apart near the end. Um, It'd be like that. It do, it do be like that. I do, I do love that game. Though. Just shout out, shout out to Cult of the Lamb. That game is great. So it's great. I I love it. I love it. it I, I wish it could be on the list. It just I couldn't let it. Um, and that is yep. That's everything. That is all my honorable mentions. Uh, let's move on to beginning our top ten. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be going ten, 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 nine, 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 eight, eight, eight. And we're going to start with me. We're going to go with Emmett. Then we're going to end with Brandon. Brandon, do you have questions? I'm going I'm going to go to the bathroom very quickly. Please. I'll be right back. Please, please. Excellent. While he is emptying his bladder, Emmett. <laughs> First off, you have a Gatorade. Yes. That looks delicious. I haven't had a Gatorade in yes. a very long time. I'm sporting an Arnold Palmer from the hit Chick-fil-A. Mm. They got Chick-fil-A's down there now? <laughs> yes. Oh, I guess yeah. it only makes sense. Yeah, they didn't have them when I used to live down there. Well, if you remember. Um, I'm gonna, if, yeah. If you remember. Oh, you don't. Um, there's so many places to eat here. It's just ridiculous. I don't know why we need 27,000 restaurants, but we do for some reason. And they're I all in business somehow. That was here. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't. I don't know how, but they all are still in business. Don't get it. Back, yeah. Back when I was down there, it was literally like, ah, oh, here's an Applebee's. Here's yep. a fucking Dairy Queen. Like yep. you, you would know the cool class, great place. Oh lord, I'm being texted by a person. Um, mm. or, yeah, yeah. It's good stuff it's just a question um but yeah there were like a couple handful of places to eat there wait pause is this in the show yes or is this good no okay. this is in the show this is in the show in that case i don't want to say specifically no. where you're at no no, no, it's, no you're, <laughs> so good. I, you're good don't say long story <laughs> short i used to live there um yes. and i knew the specific eateries that like everyone would go to yeah. and now it's like i i i haven't been there in since 2008 that's when yeah, i moved you, up here yeah so that been a long ass time. I'm sure they've made a lot of stuff. They did not have a Chick Fil A when I was there. I'll tell you no. that much. Yeah, there's I a whole giant it. plaza there where you probably mm -hmm. like. Or like, wait, wasn't this like a like trees and like not oh, anymore? Oh yeah, it's a oh, giant plaza. Go back just to see. Yeah, I, it was a big deal. A hobby lobby there and stuff. And it's crazy. Holy shit, a hobby lobby! God damn, y'all really got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see one. Of those. Of... I moved to Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Good lord. But yeah. Not, not a lot of Mormons in Atlanta, I don't think. No, no, probably not. That's <laughs> too much sin. Too much sin. Yeah. They're like, oh man, that's the LGBTQ capital, right? <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that. I don't think Keep so. that out of hands. <laughs> Good lord. But yes. In any case, be excited. I'm gonna start us off. Number 10. Mm -hmm. Entropy Center. I don't know if anyone here has played Entropy Center. But wow. it is a fantastic puzzle game. Uh, mm. The story quite gripping. I actually wish it was a little bit higher, but the actual story drags on a good bit. I actually thought the tr when the trailer sh when the trailer shows what the game's about, I was like, oh, I wonder what we're going to do. Like the whole game. Nope, that's the whole game. And you figure it out at the end of the game. And I'm like, wow. So it took a long time for us to walk through all this to like. And they do make a story reason. It's up to you if you find it fascinating or interesting enough for it to it. But it does get very abstract after a while. It does get uh, it actually ends very sad, which I think is quite mm. rare in most media that we watch. Like uh, Dead, Dead Space 3 sad or like uh, probably that sadder World than World Dead Space game. 3. Like it's pretty sad. Now, it does kind of. Hmm. hints that a glimmer of light might be there but if it isn't hmm. it's the most horrific thing you can possibly think of like it's, oh so it's dead space 3 dlc sad <laughs> yes yeah it is okay. horrific if you really sit down and think about what's going on um I understand but the game is good i do like the little robo astra that walks around it's very all everything's very cute obviously a portal game it's portal but it, what what if time pretty much you know like the mechanics portal, they get but what if time yeah portal but what if time um 
So we're just, that's the gimmick. They have the same little things. They slowly introduce you with certain mechanics. And of course, right before the end of the game, all the mechanics are together and you got to figure it all out. And it's very, it's, it's good. And I actually was quite surprised that I was actually invested in what was going on, but it does drag a good bit, but hmm. good enough to be in the top 10. Hmm. I respect that choice. Didn't expect that. Good one. Yeah. 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 I one. saw the faces. I, 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 I was like, Ooh, you guys haven't heard of this or we're did, like, eh, did this didn't look that good. <laughs> Emmett. I thought it looked cool. It's just, you know, time. Um, <laughs> vibe, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know. I get it. No, I get it. I, I don't think, I mean, no one else talks about this game. No one. I literally made a video like, no one's talking about this game, and I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's definitely one where I've heard some chattering about it, but yeah, it's definitely low key. This next game, though, I wouldn't describe as low key at all because it is the most successful, uh, I think, third party release on Game Pass to date. Oh, uh, now I will say this is another one where I talked about how God of War disqualified because I only played seven hours of this. I'm only like two hours into this, but I'm putting it on here anyway because oh. I like it a lot. I yep, like okay. that first those Tell first me. two hours a lot. Tell and me. I think per percentage wise, I've played a decent chunk of this game compared to seven hours to the 50 of God of War two to the like eight hours of this game is pretty good. Uh, high on life. I am oh alive. yes yes it's an yes, incredible game yes. i knew exactly once you mentioned the agree. most totally successful agree. third party launch it is it is an yeah. incredible game please emmett tell me and also we're gonna kind of do something here this is actually my number nine so we're gonna skip me mm. next time we go around ah, so please emmett let's like talk that. about some high on life uh yeah high on life is a great game uh basically you know justin roiland you know creative rick and morty uh solar opposites all those little comedies people like yep. um i don't watch rick and morty i don't watch solar opposites i don't watch any of that shit but I played Accounting Plus on PlayStation VR. Oh, yeah, yeah. One of the, yeah, one of the funniest games I've ever played, Hilarious. and it's it's so weird. What I what I appreciate about Justin Roiland, Justin Roiland's humor, but mostly like his world building, is he'll have this like weird off the wall shit, and he'll just use it at, like he'll have throwaway bits that are actually very cool pieces of science fiction yep. like at the beginning of high on life like when you pick up your little alien gun because if you haven't seen the game it's first person shooter but all the guns talk they're aliens and they crack jokes all this and stuff all one of them's voiced by jb smooth it's yes, yeah JB exactly. smooth. oh my yeah, god tim robinson is one of them and it's <laughs> yeah. amazing mm -hmm. exactly so like that's the whole main mechanic but when you first pick up the gun as a human you don't understand alien talk but the gun like spits in your face and you like wipe it off and then the gun's like, oh, sorry, I had to do that. I had to transfer the uh, the translation microbes. Anyway, and anyway, so we keep going. And, and it's like, wait, I have to spit in your mouth for that. <laughs> it's like, it's exactly. so random. It's just... it's like, but like that one idea, I'm like, translation microbes is such an interesting concept on its own yeah. that I'm thinking about that for several minutes, but they're on to the next gag, on to the next event. Like, it is just... There's so much smart ideas. And sometimes and it's just like a funny joke. That Keep is going. the perfect way of putting it. That is the perfect way to put it because they are so quick. It doesn't matter if you don't laugh at something because you're going to laugh at the next thing or the next thing. And that and that whole time was 30 seconds. Like the the, mm -hmm. the, the quickness with their wit is unmatched. Like, exactly. again, we were talking about yeah, it earlier. I agree. Like, we don't get they, they don't annoy you too much either. Surprisingly, yeah. like with, with a game like that, you think like they're talking your your ear off, which I mean, they do talk a lot, but like like they don't often like regurgitate the same line or anything like that it's like very often you're getting like new dialogue from this gun that is you know with you at all points in time and 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 all the diff all the guns have different dialogue too so it's like depending on who you're using at the time or whatever like you might get you know them saying something different than you would in a different situation or whatever so exactly yeah the gate it just doesn't run out of ideas and yes i'm only two hours in so it very well could have just repeating dialogue out the wazoo by hour 10 but i'm enjoying this thing so much it gives me vibes of like and plus it's look it looks really sleek like it looks yeah. like a next generation game yeah like, it looks pretty 60 frames per second great texture work and everything and just like some some fairly creative creature design where yes you have like basically care bears in the game but also <laughs> like some of these aliens like there's there's one like watch the bounty hunter character you you see towards the beginning of the game and like instead of you know how they do the cliche thing where it's like i'm wearing an eye patch because i'm gruff and I've, i'm experienced but he's an alien so all of his eyes are on tentacles but one yeah. tentacle is just a, cir a black it's circle, a black circle. circle. <laughs> and it hangs where an eye patch should be like it's <laughs> exactly it's just like, 
cute little things like that. And it's 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 a lot of personality and a lot of originality injected into what are some fairly cliche, you know, sci-fi tropes and stuff. But uh-huh. it's the humor that makes it fresh. And it's just those slight tweets where it's like, oh, that's actually a really interesting concept, but you're just on to the next thing. Uh, it's really fresh and it plays really great on Backbone through Game Pass streaming. So I love that game. 100%. It's good. Um, I was going to sh- uh, throw out there that Red Letter Media makes a uh, a a, mm-hmm. a show up in that game too, and they're probably my my favorite YouTube channel. So shout out to Red Letter Media. <laughs> I respect that. I respect that. I'm not too familiar with them, but I know that name a million times. So yeah, yeah. They, they kill it. They kill it. Uh, Mike Ciclasa, Jay Bowman, and and Rich Evans. Are, uh, those are those are the guys. So yeah, um, man, that game reminds me of Ratchet and Clank. Um, yeah, I, that's I, a good, I one. Think a good it, point. And the only thing I think that game is missing is is an upgrade system similar to Ratchet and Clank, where your guns mm-hmm. level up. I think that would have just just absolutely cemented that game. Um, but uh, as, as is, it, it is a very fun. Uh, action adventure title um with with some very witty and, and interesting humor which humor in general in games i think is something we you could make a whole video about um about how just you don't see that stuff often enough you don't you don't hear that stuff often enough and and this is a whole game dedicated to to making comedy in video games and they they kill it for the most part so um yeah great game I don't want to spoil Certainly. a specific part, but I will say there's a specific part about two thirds in the game where you have a very serious conversation inside of a uh, a food place, and it is some of the funniest, <laughs> funniest dialogue I have ever done. Because while this entire serious scene is happening, someone comes up to you and tells you real world like things to order and you can order them. <laughs> and it's like it's like you're ordering it off an actual menu from there to it. Oh, I can't uh, wait. It's hilarious. Yeah, the, it is gags, hilarious. The set pieces in that game are are are, are the, the key, in my opinion, like it on the surface, it's sort of just like a. A regular old first person shooter with upgrades and stuff like that but like th- those little moments you get where like your character is interacting with other characters in this world are, are magical so mm-hmm. there's a there's I'll a part in the no. game where this yeah. li- like really small creatures like i want to show you my world come come and you're like you walk you're walking around and he's like come look at my world and the moment you walk in you start breaking his world and he's like oh my god you're so big i didn't think about this you're killing everyone stop and you can run around and you can hear his dialogue forever and it's just hilarious like the game is just hilarious it's it's amazing there's a whole collectible thing about this guy <laughs> this oh boy. guy wanted another character to shit in his face and you complete an entire <laughs> complex right. puzzle so a character can get shit in his face and it's uh, stupid as it's you one can of the also watch about ever. you can also watch about 30 minutes of Tammy and the T-Rex um, no, as a whole movie. Yeah, oh, it's the whole movie. The whole ma- yeah, the whole say, I, I watched it up to a certain point and it stopped. So maybe it begins it, later in the if game. You keep, but, yeah, you can if go you to. keep coming back. Yeah. So there's a movie that you can go to. But also That's I've noticed sick. it plays segments throughout the game. So it like does, you can yeah, yeah. you can get like segments so like you can kind of watch the whole movie there or you can go to the theater and watch it. So they have a couple other movies too. One of the one that, I want to say it's like Blood Bloodlust or something. Yeah, like that. And then yeah there's yeah. another one too, and they're like hilarious B movies that I recommend you watch outside of the game. But it's funny no, that they the are in the game as well. Yes. Yeah, I'll I'll wrap it up by saying one of the greatest lines in any video game of all time when you first pick up the knife. Which is a talking knife, of course. Yeah, yeah. You find it's a grappling hook, and he's like, "Yeah, I can reach that." And more than just a knife, you racist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the fucking world. Yes, uh, I can do. More than just I heard that in the racist. fucking trailer, and then played in the game and laughed just as hard. Like it was, yep. it's perfect. I agree. It was great. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, the I wish the knife after you pick up the knife. I'll the one gripe I have is that he doesn't talk very much after that. Yeah, um, there's a couple and, times he comes up, but other than that, yeah, yeah right. I, I don't know, every once in a while he'll come up, but yeah, for the most part, he kind of is is subdued after that. But anyway. Tim Robinson is in the game, and he's one of my favorite comedians of all time. So, uh, A plus to, for me. So, <laughs> respect, respect. I will say very quick, and before we move to you, Brandon, um, there's a part in the game where they tell you it's like, "Hey, uh, wait here for an hour," and the game jokingly is like, "You can wait here for an hour, or you can leave." 
and I wanted to see what would happen if you stayed there. So if you sit there for an hour, the knife actually gives you dialogue and it's stuff actually pertinent to what he is and like his story and stuff. So I do recommend oh, people if you play that game. backstory. So yeah, it's interesting. So like, don't actually wait there for an that. hour. Just watch the YouTube video because uh, I saw a good YouTube video. That he just skips to, like to each voice line, but it is actually pretty interesting. His little backstory that he gives you is kind of cool. Hmm. Um, That's some earthbound shit. Um, and, 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 and... <laughs> Kind of yeah. in Earthbound, yeah. you you have to wait for two minutes at a waterfall for them to open the door, and you just like gotta not touch the controller. But anyway, yeah, I yeah. digress. Far Cry Four also did the same gag at the beginning of the game, so yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed, yes, yes. Respect to those, Brandon, please. Um, I Number 10. so I just I was I was going P at the time. I imagine we're going ten down to one, right? Correct, uh, correct. Yes, sending order. Okay, cool. So my ten was. Signalis, because I'm a pretentious indie gamer this year. <laughs> yeah, you I are. I respect it. I should have actually put that as my backlog game because I have not played it, but I keep hearing fantastic things about it. Absolutely rules. A great game. I, I honestly, I don't have much to say about it just because, like, I feel like you can't dig into it much without kind of spoiling mm. what's going on there. Okay. But, um, lo-fi playstation one aesthetics yeah uh creepy soundtrack creepy visuals if you like uh fixed camera angle survival horror games like this is going to be your jam um it's not very long either probably could finish it in under 10 hours i'd say mm. um your well, classic here. your classic pick up items put items in other places shoot the bad guys with the uh the ever decreasing amount of ammo that you have and um really well done really really uh, uh, just beautiful to look at and highly highly recommend it it is a uh, it, this has really been the year for for just outstanding indie games in my opinion um i know that we are always having like great indie games coming along but like just the the level of quality that is coming out of games like that nowadays is is insane to me, um, especially just how many we had this year. So, yeah, I, I think Signalis easily fits fits up top there. Um, I don't know if it like gets quite as far as like something like Immortality or Pentiment, but it does what it does really, really well. And, and I respect it for that. Hmm. I like so. it. I like it. Yeah, Signals is what I definitely want to get around to. As someone who I, I'm discovering slowly but surely, I think I might actually like horror games. I've never been a fan of horror films, but okay. I, looking back, I'm like, oh, I played a lot of these Resident Evil games. And every time I see stuff like Fatal Frame, I get really interested. Stuff like Silent Hill 2, I'm like, eh, I want to play these. So Signals is another one where I look at it and I'm like, oh, that looks like it might be fun to experience. Uh, so, yeah, that's definitely on the list. Definitely, for sure highly recommend um yeah i didn't really get into horror games until i was like in high school and that's when like my whole horror world opened up to me and, and now I'm, I'm a fanatic for it but um yeah highly recommend even if you're really not into horror games this is kind of horror light even it's the sci-fi horror thing it's got survival elements and stuff like that so this isn't gonna like scare your pants off but it, it's it's creepy and atmospheric so I like a good creepy and atmospheric. Let's go. Let's and it's, let's, let's of course, go. Of course, we're skipping me. So I gave my number nine high on life. So what is your number nine? This number nine, I'm going to be honest. I was thinking real hard. What games did I actually beat this year? <laughs> Because I I'm I'm scraping by when it comes to ten games. Ooh, that's that's getting close. You saw High on Life. I didn't beat. Um, this game I started to get into games that you don't really beat because they're not single player games. These are yeah. multiplayer titles. Okay. Um, this is one that I only got into very late in the year. Uh, played it a lot on Steam Deck. But it was also free on PlayStation Plus. But um, I was surprised. I I was not looking forward to this. No hype. No no one else had hype for it or anything. But I played it, and I'm like, oh, this is pretty solid. And that is Divine Knockout. Oh. Um, when you said PlayStation yeah. Plus, I was like, is he talking about Divine Knockout? Exactly, yeah. Divine Knockout is the one. Uh, and because people haven't talked about this game, so I'll just quickly explain. It is a multiplayer arena brawler. I uh, think, uh, basically, if you've heard of Rumbleverse, which is like wrestling battle royale, it's that type of vibe, that type of aesthetic, but it's Smash Brothers. So instead oh. of it being... 
take down their health, you knock them out, and the circle closes, all that stuff. It is a arena, and you're trying to knock people out. You're building percentages so that you can eventually build enough force to where they just get knocked out in one hit. Um, it is that, and then the, the whole is called Divine Knockout because these are all gods. So you got like different gods from different like mythologies, religions, all that stuff. They just added Zeus to the game, so you're getting Greek gods in there too. Is Jesus Christ in it? Jesus. I don't think Jesus Christ is or will ever be in this game. Oh. Um, um, I think this is actually it's from Hi Res Studios, and I believe Hi Res also did both Smite, Smite and. What is it? Paladins and a bunch of multiplayer games. They're actually based in uh, Atlanta as well. Um, if you're hiring, give give me a call. Yeah, um, yeah shout out. <laughs> shout out to them. But uh, yeah, it's it's just really fun. Uh, I played it a lot on Steam Deck. It, it runs very well. I don't think it's verified yet, but had absolutely no issues. It might as well be verified at this point. And it's just really fun using your little abilities that are all on cooldowns and building up that percentage meter so that you can finally get close and just give them that one last three pound combo to just send them flying. Like it's always satisfying and it's really cool to see people taking that Smash Brothers gameplay and putting it in a context where it's 3D. So it kind of freshens it up and makes it feel like a new idea ish even though you know it's a different idea already um it, it just feels really fun and plus you know playing a multiplayer game that isn't a fucking shooter because i feel like every multiplayer game i play is a shooter this is a nice regular one that i've gone back to uh just in between sessions like i said it's on steam deck and i'll just sit there for 10 minutes and just play a match right before i go take a shower or so on and so forth so yeah divine knockout very fun game very surprised how much i'm enjoying it uh it's on playstation plus like i said or it might not be on there now. I think the new games for the next month have already gone up. But uh, if you claimed yeah, it, it try it. Month, I think, but yeah, um, it's definitely worth trying. And it's 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 a pay to play game. It's not free to play at all. But it was free for like the first three weeks when it came out. So that's why I have it on Steam. Uh, so yeah, shout out to that game. It is really really solid. I don't have anything else to have add. To say? <laughs> yeah, I have nothing to add. It looked it looked cool, but I, I I'm ignorant on the game quite quite a bit. Yeah, I, I downloaded it from when PSN was given away. But to be fair, I, I I haven't heard anything other than you talk about it. If I'm being <laughs> honest, so yeah. um, I like this. It's sound. a fun I love game. Smash Bros. So I mean, I, I'm all it looks very Smash Bros. Like that, yeah. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, it's yeah, definitely just, solid. If you want Rumble vs. Me Smash Bros, I think this is a good one to at least check out for a weekend or two. Um, but you know, we'll see how long it goes with support and stuff. That is really the big uh, Achilles heel to to these multiplayer games right now, isn't it? It's like, can you keep it going for a year? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. Sometimes is it? Hey, are you going to add more content, or is it just is this going to be fun to play for a year straight? Exactly. <laughs> no matter yeah. how much content you make, so yeah, we'll or see will what it the story is. On if that you're one. talking about Ubisoft. True. Brand, Ubisoft. Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> True. What is your number nine? Uh, oh, oh, uh, my number nine is um, Shredder's Revenge. Whoa. Oh, wow. That's cool. TMNT. I'm still I'm keeping on with it. I got a lot of indie games. I'm boring you guys. A lot of indie games going on here. I but love it. Yeah, love Shredder's it. Revenge. That was fantastic. Um, obviously, huge uh, TMNT fan or used to be when I was younger. Um, played the arcade games a lot when I was a kid. So it kind of spoke to me in that way i remember going to like chuck e cheese to go play uh what turtles in time i think it was on on the arcade game great stuff um and yeah shredder's revenge is that but at home and all brand new and if you like that then you're gonna probably like shredder's revenge um it, it's really not complicated it, it's it's a a a beat em up game, you know, you, you can move up, down, left, and right, and it's quite a small area, and you slowly move to the right. Um, and you fight bosses, uh, bad guys, etc. Pick up power ups, uh, upgrade your characters, all that good stuff. And the pixel art is, is absolutely beautiful. And uh, turtles, they're eating pizza, you know, like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Stop the turtles, that would have been yeah. hilarious. Turtles, There's nothing really else to say here, like, they're. <laughs> They're turtles that eat pizza and fight crime. So, you know, pretty kick ass. Yeah, it was quite, I played a good chunk of that game. It's yeah, it was, it was such a fun game. I remember playing it and just being like, wow, this is really, really fun. Um, yeah, it was something that I, I sort of just kept coming back to where I was like, man, I could play some turtles right now. And, you know, I'd come back and 
play a little Shredder's Revenge and, you know, move on with my day. And and I figured it it, it needed a, a, a spot up here since I had put so much time into it and just because I thought it was so rad. So hmm. Something I watched recently that has nothing to do with what you just said. There's the it's... Batman TMNT movie. Me and my wife just watched because she's super into Batman oh, right wow. now. And I also have been, and I've also been wanting, reading the graphic novels. Very good. Is that oh, the one yeah. where Batman's like, this is where my parents died, Leonardo? <laughs> 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 I love that fucking panel. Uh, it's amazing. Holy it, shit. It is. I've, it I've is. never seen it's that in the first. It's in the first graphic novel. It's it's pretty oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah I'll, Cal- I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to check that out. After I will this. say it they do mess with amazing. it a little bit, but not that much. <laughs> That's pretty much what happens. <laughs> yeah. Cow a bummer indeed. Cow a bummer. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my number eight. Oh, boy. We, uh, y'all mentioned this earlier. Plague Tale Requiem. Yeah, wow. actually, my number go. eight. I Let's actually quite enjoy this game. I I will give you a little peek behind the curtain. This was originally actually number five on here when I originally drafted up the little list. Uh, it fell hmm. so much uh, mainly because I sat on the story a little bit and was like, love it as much. Uh, there's some problems. Uh, there's a little bit. Hmm. There's a little bit of problems. I would say some pacing issues. Um, and also, I actually feel like this might have been a disservice to the game, although not my problem, but I actually played Innocence, I want to say like two weeks before Requiem, because I had never played Innocence. Um, uh. And it is very similar, <laughs> like oh, yeah, very sure. similar, sure. very, very similar. Like, like I was like, wow, it feels like I'm kind of still playing the first game, at least in the beginning. And then they actually give you some more mechanics. You know, like, OK, this is. This feels a little bit more like a suku, kind of similar to God of War Ragnarok, actually, except mm. a little different. But um, it did quite feel quite a bit like it, even in the story beats. I was like, OK, are we doing this again? And then they do it again. And you're like, OK. But at the end of the day, I did enjoy the game. I do like the lore of the game that they established. The ending is kind of insane. Um, I, I'm, I don't I don't think um. Many people, at least in the industry, have played it because I just don't see anyone talking about it. But the ending, I was like, wow, OK, I'm kind of I'm interested if they'll make another one. I'm sure they will. But if not, that's just an interesting place to leave it. Um, mm. But I, I'm I'm curious what they do. They uh, do with the rest of the franchise. It is very, very good, albeit did feel a bit samey for a while, although I do. Uh, oh, and I would say it might be the prettiest game I've ever played. Um, the landscapes are quite beautiful on an OLED screen on an Xbox Series. That's I can't imagine if I had a souped up PC playing that thing. Uh, one of the downsides, it was actually 30 frames. But as far as I understand, they just can't make it work with any higher on a console because of specific phys- physics environments that they do. I wish they found a work around that. Um, apparently, the rats are literally the problem because they're at points literally thousands hundreds like hundreds of thousands of rats there's like a bunch of places, uh, spots in the games where like there's pretty much waves of rats at a certain point point. and i i was like okay yeah i i get it I, I get it i'm not happy but at least you have a good reason <laughs> gotham knights yeah like at least yeah. you have a good reason <laughs> and i can see the reason and i don't Plus have to of a combat game so you don't need those extra that, frames and that's too. Totally. i'm not running around you're literally crouched <laughs> for about 70 percent of the game yeah um, if you're but not this solving is... puzzles you're stealthing around pretty yeah, much so. stealthing around i'm in the grass with a small child like go <laughs> let's get out of here um but the game's pretty solid i recommend anyone try it was actually on game pass it's i mean that's compelling by itself uh if you have game pass it's included in your description but Nobody. that's all i really have left pick it up if you guys want if not emmett start us off but does anyone else have anything uh, to leave Plague's Tale on? And we already discussed it, so I, I won't be shocked if we don't have anything else. Left. Yeah. yeah, we sort of hit on it already. Um, yeah. I I don't think I have anything else to say. I, I think okay. you're pretty spot on with what you're saying. So yeah, yeah. I, mm. And uh, again, just Hugo, just that a million times in that game. <laughs> Hugo, oh, yeah. Hugo, Amicia, no, Amicia, I only know that oh, name. I only know that name because fucking Andy Cortez says all the time on fucking content. Amicia, <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I still uh, need to play uh, Innocence for that matter. But in any case, uh, number eight, uh, like I said, stretching this list out, what else can I fit on here? What's another game that heavily multiplayer centric that I can claim that I played because I put in like 10 hours into the multiplayer? Um, this one actually uh, does have a single player campaign. 
I don't love the po- traditionally I haven't loved the politics of these games. This one seems like another case where politically I'm like, eh, don't really fuck with that, but the actual activities I'm doing probably pretty fun. And that game is the one the only the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I I play every Call of Duty game. I've played every Call of Duty game since really since Modern Warfare 2, but I even went back to the two before that and played all those. So all of the from 2008 forward, I've played every one. Um, I actually played Vanguard this year, so I went and make sure to check them all off. I haven't played the single player Modern Warfare 2, so I won't speak on it too much, though. Some of the things I've heard and I've seen, I'm like, uh, this is a little bit messy, just like Modern Warfare 2019. Don't love that, <laughs> but probably be fun to play, but mm, just don't think about the narrative too much. Um, but the multiplayer here is really solid, is really good. Uh, it is more Call of Duty, yes, but after Vanguard, which was, I enjoyed Vanguard, but you could definitely tell it felt, this isn't the right word for it, but it felt cheaper. It felt less substantial. It felt like, oh, I just got a kill. It didn't feel momentous when you got a kill in that game. It felt like, all right, here's just another one. Here's the little numbers popping up on screen to make you feel good. Let's go. And, you know, there's some fun in that. Turn your brain off and just watch the pretty colors go by. Uh, this game feels heavy and it feels substantial whenever you're moving around, whenever you get a kill. And it does the thing that I love Modern Warfare 2019 for doing, where every gun feels unique, but every gun feels like you're trying to control the recoil. Like, it's not that guns kick around all the place, but it's something about the visuals, something about the animation, something about the sound, where it feels like you're holding a, like a bucking Broncos trying to go up and you're trying to hold that shit down. Like, that's what it feels like firing guns. And I, it feels that way in a very satisfying way. So just firing all the weapons felt great in this game. And um, I eventually did get around to playing some Warzone with some friends. Warzone is even more engaging to me than it was in the past. I really like Warzone 2.0. I think that's great. want to get around to, D- to the DMZ mode, their little uh, jump in and extract yourself mode. Yeah. I haven't tried that too much, but I want to try that. And then also, I really like the th- third person mode. I couldn't believe how good the third person mode was. You would think, oh, it's just another, they added it on, just another feature they can add to the list. But for as someone who played the Modern Warfare 2 original third person mode and it was like a poor man socom this feels like really fucking good like the the thing i talk about the guns where it's something about how it feels just feels really satisfying it translates perfectly into third person i don't know how they did it but without using any of the gun animations because it's not in your face anymore they pull off that same feeling and i i might play in third person mode just as much as i play in regular mode so yeah, kudos to them. I, I know Activision Blizzard don't really want to give too many kudos to that studio, but for the <laughs> folks in the trenches actually doing hard work, like they the people who put the blood, sweat, and tears into the art, they did a good job. I want to commend them for that. And because it's a fun it's a fun video game. Now maybe I'd love to play a game where it wasn't so pro war and pro conflict that it's a little disgusting. But other than that, you know, it's a fun game. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, can't disagree I, with anything you said. I haven't Dude. honestly touched uh, Call of Duty in probably since Black Ops 2, maybe. Absolutely um, fair. Yeah, yeah I don't it's blame been you. a while. I don't, I don't, I think they're always mechanically sound, you know, <laughs> um, so I'm sure it, it, I, it, when you're saying stuff like, like the, the, you know, re, third person camera, like feels nice. It's like that really speaks to me um, as someone who, tangentially kind of wants to maybe play call of duty on occasion but it, yeah it's i guess the the atmosphere around call of duty really turns me off but um it seems like oh, they, they really knocked it out of the park as far as you know making a solid video game this year and i, I mean i gotta commend them for that so i'll probably mm-hmm. pick it up at some point just when it's cheaper so yeah it'll be 20 bucks yeah. in like two months so don't worry about it exactly um and, uh, not maybe closer to 10 closer to 10 months vanguard I'm, was i'm, 30 so, bucks I'm sorry like economist my bad i didn't i didn't know i had to be exact i, I was I exaggerating i'm sorry brandon <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ terrible podcast so I can't believe i'm on the terrible <laughs> oh wow just um, terrible <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty, Marvel for two. Yeah. Um, I will say I actually was really high on it. I actually still am high on it. I think it is very good. Um, w- <laughs> uh, reading about what they do with like the producers and storytellers, what the uh, American government does, I'm like, 
Oh yeah. Ooh, we might be venturing into propaganda territory now. Um, I actually sure. implore everyone to go read about this. Um, I think Washington Post did a great write up on it. Um, and it really does kind of pan like, ooh, okay. Well, mm-hmm. and also it, yeah. they might have gotten funding, I think, too. And I'm like, I don't like that very much. Yep. But oh, yeah. Aside from oh, aside yeah. from all of that stuff. It was a very sound thing. I actually did very much like the story, which I never mm-hmm. really say about Call of Duty. I actually cared about the characters. I liked where it was going. I liked mm-hmm. the ending. It's all very cool. Again, it is very raw, raw America where we are almost centered around war at almost every turn. So if that's going to turn you off, this game is going to turn you off. But the game plays actually really good. I will say the story is actually incredibly good. And it does pair well with if you enjoyed uh, 2019. Although I understand if you're tired of Call of Duty because we've had 23 of them in the last 23 years. So, (laughs) well, uh, I, I personally will never forget seeing that clip on Twitter where they're like, calm down the civilians and you have to point a gun at the civilians i i did that and went wow this is either brilliant meta commentary or they just wanted they, it was just easier it, it was just really easier writing the line the there on on what on what that could mean but i was um, like i was like either this is brilliant and like deep or it's just easier if you hold left trigger at them and point a gun right at their face these poor civilians and i was like it's the second one <laughs> It's the second one. I thought there was going to be some sort of meta commentary. It's like, bro, what are you doing? Or like something. Or it's like, look how easy they point guns at people. Uh, now, this ain't no, the line. This ain't nope. No, yeah. Not at all. Not, they just not spec up the line. That was the correct choice compared to them. <laughs> According to them, that's what you should do in that situation. Of point course, a gun yeah. at them. <laughs> that's, what, that's what the authorities are for. Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, wow, that was a delayed reaction on that one. I was like, anyways, oh my. <laughs> my bad. I, I didn't mean to. No, no, no. That was awesome. That was, that was, awesome. That was perfect really timing. Like, oh, That's perfect timing. Anyways, uh, there Red, you go. Please. Yes. Wait. So, uh, num- num- my my number eight. Um, it, it may may be a slight shocker. Um, but it's uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Um, Ooh. Ooh. I put it down my number eight because Ooh. I was not. Super hot on this game. Actually. I got whiplash, everybody. <laughs> um, I thought that this game was kind of a middling entry to a clearly trilogy that we're going to be getting here. Um, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Game is beautiful. Uh, fairly well written. Fairly well acted. Tons of assets just pouring out of their horizon butthole like all of it. it's just just looks looks beautiful don't get me wrong um they put the their whole, whole horizon usi into this <laughs> <laughs> did i use that right i hope i did i don't know man i i don't know i was so disappointed by the ending of this game it just bummed hmm, really? me out Wow. I was about to put this as my biggest disappointment of the year, but I felt too bad about doing that. Oh my god! I, out of pity? Uh, yeah, I, I, I like Jenny. I was like, this game doesn't deserve that. Um, surely, uh, it, it is a perfectly good game. Um, I, but man, I, I felt like this was so. It was like a journey in the wrong direction, in my opinion. To oh, I want to nail this. this. I ending want to really that I was. I want to really I nail just, this down. I wanted more exposure. Light I wanted more light, ex- light, light spoilers for Horizon. I'm yeah, yeah. Maybe stamps. some light, light, light spoilers I'm, I'm here. But man, stamps. I was in the video. Check the uh, the description. I will skip ahead if I hear any spoilers. <laughs> so skip ahead if you don't want to listen to this. I need to know what, so, what it gets specific so, as you want. So damaged what, by that. What I turned was, you off? It felt like a rehashing of the first game, like, like where like you get all your friends together and and all your friends come together and then you overcome the the, the bad guy, but then you find out that there's a bigger bad guy at the end. And I oh, okay. and, and okay. I wanted mm-hmm. more closure. I guess that was maybe my and and I understand that like yeah, we're in the middle of of a three I think a three part thing, who knows at this point. But uh, like they're built they're clearly building a bigger world 25. here. It, uh, it, exactly and, and it's like i 
on the other flip of the coin here, I respect God of War to a certain extent for like making it only two games and having a, having an ending. And I also have mm-hmm. a bone to pick with that game, but we'll get to that later. Um, we sure will. But yeah, man, I I so felt like there play. wasn't enough closure here. I felt like there wasn't enough. There wasn't enough to keep me super. This feels like the the middle uh the middle redheaded stepchild like mm. that doesn't get enough love and i think we're going to end up seeing a horizon 3 and and i think that's going to really iterate on what they did here and give us the closure that i was looking for so pan me pan me now <laughs> <laughs> i'll say this i'll say this yeah yeah you started I did, yeah i did not feel like i understand what you're saying about the lack of closure for me it's less that I was craving closure. It's more that I was so impressed with how much, because that's the thing about the second horizon. I feel like it just expanded. Also, I'll go ahead and spoil. Like, I'm going to talk about this game at length. This was my number one. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. 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 Don't, don't, into blow, here. I like don't blow I like your, this. don't blow the load yet. We'll have a big conversation, <laughs> but please go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll just say like what I, the first horizon I thought was really cool. I love that game. One of my favorite games of all time sitting number seven in my top 10 list um, or in my top 100 list. But the thing that I like about that game is the lore. Nothing that's happening in the active plot I found interesting in the first horizon. Very little in the active plot I cared about. But what happened before and how she how Aloy came to exist, how that world came to exist, that's what's fascinating to me. Yeah, the agree, second agree, one, agree. Agree. The second one has a lot of cool lore as well, but the active plot is so much more interesting, so much more entertaining. Characters are so much more interesting. I give a shit about what's happening now just as much as I care about what happened in the past once you get to Horizon 2. And I guess them expanding the world in that way, because there are some things that you didn't even know was happening slash are possible until things happen in Horizon 2. Yeah. And that's where I'm like, holy shit. So I was never like, how are they going to wrap this up? I was just impressed that it kept going in all these interesting new directions so that when we got to the end and you find out, oh, it's going to continue going in that direction even more. True. True. I'm just excited to see where that goes rather than wanting to know where it goes right now. Yeah, so, so that, like, if I can yeah. if I can pick the football up really quick, please, please, um, yeah. I'm right there with you. Where when in the end, I was so terrified, and I, I actually I think there are two universes where I'm actually a lot more with you, Brandon. But I was terrified <laughs> they could have easily made this terrible, in my opinion, because it gets so crazy about what happens. But like yes. to me, that was so interesting because I was like, "What in the hell?" They went mm-hmm. like like that that entire plot with. With what the specific characters that you find in the game, like what happens? I'll just say the actresses, heroes, the, the the if you will, the the yeah. space alien superheroes that yeah, you, you meet. Yeah, you saw them in the trailers. Yeah, yeah. 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 You saw them in the trailers. In the game, that's all I'll say. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll, with everything happening there, I was like, God, this is so cool. And then we're at the end of the game where they tease what the third one's gonna be. I was like. If they say the word aliens, I'm punching my TV. <laughs> so like I'm there with you. Like I feel like I was one story plot away from probably being with you, but I was on the train the whole time and enjoying every loop that we did and every turn and every like uphill thing we did. I I fell in love with all, but I do kind of agree with you. They did kind of do the same thing again. They did I, gather I was mostly, all the friends so... and then they did a big fight at the end. And I feel you. I don't keep in mind really... that I. I was coming off the heels of putting like 200 hours into Elden Ring at this point. Uh, uh, and then I, I came okay, into okay. Horizon. The veil um, has been lifted. Okay, I'm exactly. starting to understand and, and, and a to, lot more. To there be we go. fair, I, I do think I was slightly distracted at the point by what I had just experienced, you know. So once again, I, I felt bad. For doing what I have done to this this game, um, I really do because I don't think it deserves it. I think it's a great game, and I don't think I don't want to like speak badly on it because I I don't think that's fair to Horizon. Okay. But man, yeah, coming off of Elden Ring and then going into this, I was like, holy fuck! I went from like art house, like blow your mind with some like deep bullshit you know and and then i came into horizon and it was it felt a lot more simple and and just it didn't rather than one exactly it didn't i was expecting 
something bigger, something more by the by the end of this. And and while I I enjoyed the addition of the new characters, I enjoyed the addition of the new mechanics and and the expanding of the world. I it it, it almost went in a direction that I didn't enjoy very much i i thought it was going to stay a little bit more contained i guess and and they really are reaching for the stars if you will uh um, wink in a very literal <laughs> sense yes um yeah, angela bassett this time you're right it, yep. exactly <laughs> so so like they it, it it went in a direction maybe i just don't think i expected and and i think it, it kind of um was a surprise to me i guess Fair. fair. I, I never say anyone's wrong for the for these types of things, especially if you played Elden Ring. I have actually a, a quick story. Um, I played Last of Us Part Two, and then for some god awful reason, uh, Sony thought it was a good idea to release Ghost of Tsushima like a month later or something. Like that. Oh my god! Yeah, and I remember, a... and I played that game and went, "This ain't it." And I turned it off like within like an hour. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "This is." I was pretty much in the. I was in the hangover that we all kind of experience when you feel when you play a really good game. Just nothing is gonna fulfill the the, the kind of hangover. So you either gotta stop playing games and do something else for a while, or you find that perfect. You're not perfect having game. those expectations. Yeah. So too true. Too true. I do feel and, you there. As soon as you said you had played Elden Ring and went to this, I was like, that is almost yeah. perfectly what happened with Last of Us and Ghost of Tsushima because I didn't play Ghost of Tsushima for another year. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, I picked, yeah, it and, back, um, picked it back up and fell in love with it. But I, it, that's how first, long it took for me to care. The about. first Horizon had a similar problem for me, um, in which it, it came out immediately after Zelda dropped. Um, and love Zelda, love the original Horizon. But really before, yeah, actually, I'm, that's how much. Oh, that's got. right. Yeah, 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 yeah it, it, it was came technically out like a week and also or two Brandon, before that. Yeah, Brandon, mm -hmm. this, these are the wrong two to tell that to because we don't give a fuck about that game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I, sure. that game is so overrated to me. But oh, I, I love Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I don't, I'm the minority, not you. So fair enough. Like, no, no, continue. fair enough. Hey, hey, to each their own. Just yeah, man. That that's. That's where my head is at. You know, yeah, no, no offense it. to anybody. I, I, I think Horizon is great. Um, I, I love what Guerrilla Studios is doing. Oh my god, um, I, I, I like I, I cannot give enough kudos to that game. But for me personally, it just didn't, didn't hit quite as I expected it to. So. Hmm. I love that. Understood. I, love, I, I always love different opinions. So, like, as soon as you said, hey, hmm. I'm like, I got to dissect you. Like, I need to know. Oh, yeah. I I was like, yeah, I'm all, I'm all about crazy. that. Yeah. Fuck so yeah. Crazy. We can we can dissect all yeah. day, boy. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, man. That, that was awesome. Um, let's move. On, yeah. Oh, uh, any last words, I mean, just in case. Uh, you wanna, yeah. I mean, I love Horizon. We'll probably talk about it some more in a little bit. But uh, Ooh, that's yeah. why I kind of agree with frame. you. Okay. <laughs> Number we'll seven. Discuss why later. I had I had the the out there uh, uh, take on that one. You for did, sure. uh, you did, but it's cool. The I contrarian, like it. if you will. Like it. I was actually I trying see. to gather people that I I knew would be different. And Emmett good. Delivered. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad yeah. I could I could Having provide Emmett, Emmett said, hooked I you up. Know existed. So. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, number seven. I'm actually breaking a rule here uh, that mm. I've he upheld. For a long time, I actually never put online games on my Game of the Year list because I never liked the idea of online games because, one, most of the time it's Destiny and it's a specific expansion and it's me. Expansions on content can't really uphold to an entire game. So that never made sense mm. for me putting it on my personal top 10. I don't disparage people from doing it, but that's just my opinion on that. And then two... I don't love the idea that in 10 years, if I look back at a list, I can not play that game anymore for whatever reason. So I, I just uh, never liked man. that idea. Okay. I always liked okay. this list is what I loved this year. And I hope in 20 years I can look at this and be like, I would, you know, what did I love? Blah, blah, blah. And I click up and I see it. And um, But I'm breaking that rule. Uh, and this is also the first mobile game I've ever put on a top 10 list. I, I'm sure I everyone knows what it is. Hey, it is Marvel okay. Snap. Yeah. And this game. If I could snap, I'd do that into the mic. Fuck grabbed yeah. my eyeballs <laughs> since it has been released. It is. Hmm. Where do I start? Um, the monetization, because it's a mobile game. Everyone thinks, how do they rake you over the coals for money? They don't. And that almost sounds like that's not possible. That doesn't even sound real, right? No, it's a mobile game. What does it do? Nothing. If you want to pay money, you can buy bundles in the store and it gives you early access to some cards. Or you can pay money and get variants of cards. Or you can pay money and get credits to upgrade your cards. But you can't pay to win in any way. You can't pay to 
go up higher in level. You can't do any of that. So it, they figured it out. I, if, if any mobile game from here on out, if you don't have a good monetization strategy, don't know what to tell you. It's your own, your own fault. Two, the gameplay is so, so good. It is the perfect mobile game. You only have six turns. You can only have 12 cards in a deck. There, there are three locations you play on. Whoever has the highest out of two locations wins. And uh. so simple, yet so complex with how much you can do. It's, of course, Marvel, so it's million different people in the game. Ha probably two-thirds no one's ever heard of. I'm over here nerding out because they put Noel in something. I'm like, no one knows what Noel is. This is awesome. <laughs> like, His name's literally Noel. No one knows who that is. Yeah, no oh. one knows who it is. No one boy. Sentry in the game. No one knows discount Superman in Marvel. Like, this is crazy. Like, it's so cool. I, I, I've played this pretty much every day-ish. Not really, of course, but I would at least at, out of every five days out of the week, I've at least turned it on and done something. And I can't attest to as much uh, uh, to more than that. Like it's got me in. I love making decks. I love how they don't beg for money every five seconds. They respect me as a person. <laughs> like they're not mm. they're not beggars like, please, more money, sir. <laughs> they, they don't lock you out if you play too many matches. None of that garbage. None of that mobile garbage that's kept me away from this platform for literal years like decades pretty much like a full decade i've never touched mobile games and wow. i, Do you I can't sing these praises enough the cards are balanced to perfection there's of course some here and there where you're like yeah that's a little op but not to me there isn't really a card that's like it's winning matches like by itself like you need this card and that card and this card and then you need this the combo with this. and almost every single Stratagem has a counter or a perfect counter to it. And there is a perfect kind of like balance to this game. And they figured it out. And I want to second dinner. I want to give I wish I could I would every I give them everything. All the flowers. Best mobile game of the year by far. Best card <laughs> game I've ever played. Best best everything. It, it's him in a year with Slay the Spire. That's wild. But I well, respect it. Did it Slay the Spire come out this year? It didn't come out this year, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> oh, 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 I see what you mean. And yeah, it's probably yeah. still better than Slay Spire, but it's, it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would it's argue great. that Marvel Snap is probably one of the best card games. Um, yeah, I was. You could play right now. Yeah, I was um, hard into Hearthstone. They lost me a long time ago, <laughs> like a yeah. long, long time ago. That with with how they were trying to balance the game, it never really worked. There were always kind of five things that were just stupid OP and. You bought cards until you eventually got the card you got. And this one, it's you just rank up. You have a set amount of cards you get until you get to a certain level. Then it's just like a level up boxes that you get every couple levels that guarantees you a card. It's, it gets a little complicated, but it's, I mean, it's, it it's arguably perfect. I don't know. It, it's it's great. The way no, they launched I, it, I, it's awesome. I agree with you. Um, I, I went through a probably... um three four week phase of marvel um uh, snap i i have fell out off of it since because i actually paid into the season pass like at the very end of the season pass and then it ended and the new one came up and i was like ah oh, shit i don't know i'm not quite ready to jump back into that after just giving you you know 15 bucks a week which, ago um so which... i, I kind of missed the mark on that but i was going pretty ham on it before that for you know yeah. three or four weeks and loving it and um, I, I mean, I was riding the bus like a couple times a week at the time. So, you know, like that was my bus game. I'd get on the bus and pretty much play Marvel Snap till I got to work and then do the same thing when I was going home, you know. Um, so, yeah, uh, mechanically beautiful. Uh, how not disgusting it is with microtransactions is really interesting to me. Um, the the developers and people that they have behind that game are are beautiful, but it's uh, the one guy from from Hearthstone. Ben Brode. Is, yeah, yeah, Ben Brode is is doing Marvel. Like he's the guy, Jeez. you know. To, so, um, yeah, I mean, really, really well built card game. I I am will not be surprised to see this gain far more popularity over time, and maybe even take Hearthstone's place. Um, j just in the way that they don't totally fuck their audience with microtransactions and yep. and buying into the next thing you know um they're very lax about that surprisingly yes yeah. 
greed will kill them, kill them. So as long as they don't let it happen, it's not going to happen. They, they, yep. They've done this beautifully. They've actually said, I, I believe it was Ben Brode in the beginning, that he never liked the idea of expansions and like you had to like pay like a, a big sum of money to keep playing the game. He'd rather like have this season pass model and then like have you pay like your variants and things and your bundles and such and such or whatever. So oh, hopefully totally. that keeps that's it. that's part of their Bible for the game. And they just never break that rule. And it's just like, hey, pay the season pass, buy your bundles, pay your credits, buy your gold to get your favorite variant that was in the shop that week or whatever. Who knows? But if they do right that, now, they're going to make a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah so, they're, they're, um, they're, they're not already making a lot of money. So I'm, I, so, I'm so happy with this game. It, it, I, when I, saw, I remember seeing this, I don't remember where it was. I remember was seeing a trailer Disney presentation. From, oh, you know what? Probably was D twenty three thing. Yeah, D twenty three. That's it. Yeah, probably. It I remember did. writing about it and being like, "There's a Marvel Snap, a car based game." And I, I think I literally said, "There's no way this is gonna be good," or something like that. Like it, <laughs> like it's like just zero chance that like someone would care about this. It's just if I, it, I heard you talk I just, shit. <laughs> I assumed little effort would be put into it. That's just how I thought. I was like, "There." It they're sort of came out of nowhere. Like, it like did. it just. It sort of came out of nowhere and, and just fucking broke the mold. And, and like, I mean, kudos on them for that. Like, uh, card games are not easy to do in the first place. And making one that's highly collectible and has potential to be one of the biggest ones in the world. Um, it, it's a pretty big deal. So pretty big deal. Um, and also, yeah. again, the balance is insane. It really is. Yes. I don't understand yeah, how the totally. balance. Also, with Marvel, of course, they're using Marvel characters the way they brilliantly utilize the character and their ability like somehow they've done a perfect job of yeah it makes sense dr doom summons two doom bots at two other locations like stuff like that like i'm like wow like they it's not just oh let's put cosmo in the game and he just you know barks like he does something specific. It's very cool. Yeah, one, like one of my favorites creative. was uh, Mr. Fantastic. He'll punch the, yes. the two cards on the yeah, side. And yes. I thought I always thought that was really, really cool. So, so cool. Um, and the, the little um, animations that cards do are always very cute and things. So I, I do done. think uh, one gripe to pick with Marvel Snap yes. is that the the sparkly variants of cards that you get don't look very cool. Uh, I think they'd need an overhaul on the yeah. the the super sparkly uh, versions of the cards, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. But that's the way the me. variants kind of work are is always confusing too. They should just simple it out a little bit, or, I agree, or let I agree. you it pick. Could, it could use some rounding out. Yeah, let you pick. There's our and the, there's a lot of cards where if you upgrade them to be animated, you got to like really like what does this do? Like what is animated yeah, about it? Really, <laughs> it looks the, the 3d like animated portraits they have are beautiful looking, beautiful. but yeah, once when you upgrade them once more than that, they're supposed to be like holographic. And, and I, I feel like it doesn't pan out very well on the phone. Yeah, I don't know it, why, it but it doesn't look great, but, uh, I spilled enough. Emmett, uh, if you don't have anything for Marvel snap, move to your number seven. The only thing I have to say about Marvel snap is that I don't feel safe downloading that. Cause I don't think I have enough impulse control. <laughs> As someone who put what like a thousand hours into Cookie Clicker, I don't think I have the impulse control for Marvel Snap. So I'm yeah, just I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would not even, not even mess with that. Huh? Exactly. I still got the fucking mobile version of Cookie Clicker. I open that every other month just to see if how many cookies I got. Um, <laughs> it's a problem. Anywho, oh speaking of games that aren't addictive, this is also a technically portable game. But this game, knowing me, knowing the types of games I like, knowing the franchises I'm into. You would think this latest entry would be top five, maybe even two or one. Uh, but for a lot of reasons that we're about to talk to, this game has some of the highest highs and some of the lowest lows in the entire franchise for me. Y you might be able to guess it, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It's Bayonetta 3. Oh, I totally agree. Unfortunately, oh, my God. I, I completely fucking It breaks agree. my heart that Emmett Watkins Jr. has Bayonetta as number seven. Yeah. Top 10 of the year. Sad day. Sad day. And I'm it's not surprised, which Bayonetta is even fan, worse. Which is even mm -hmm. worse. This man's going to yeah. dress up as Bayonetta on a stream. Yeah, so I had uh, the costume. I just couldn't fit it. <laughs> tell me tell me what you hate about this game. I'd love to. <laughs> All right. So what I dislike about this game, because like hate feels even too strong. But number Great. one, I as someone, the first experience I had with Bayonetta was on an Xbox Series X at 4K 60 frames per second. So when I think of the franchise, that is the standard I have in my head. 
And yes, Bayonetta 2, exclusive to the Wii U and the Switch, played it on Switch for the first time. And it was great on Switch. I enjoyed it. I, I still liked it, even though it was very much so a smaller scale. There was still a novelty to playing it in the handheld form. I don't know what it is about Bayonetta 3. Or actually, I do know what it is. I'm going to tell you in a minute. <laughs> it is so... It feels like a 360 game derogatorily. Like, yeah. I say that all the time. I say, oh, it looks like a PS3 game. I say it as a term of affection. I don't mean that here. I mean that as I'm upset about it. Yeah, it no, is, this is not a good aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. it never yeah. looks great, yeah. Yeah, it, it's trying to go for those like it's it's a game with like realistic player models and the actual models of like Bayonetta and some of the other main characters look pretty good. But it's a lot of wide open environments with nothing really technically there's like debris and whatnot, but most of them just feel empty if they aren't just actually empty. There's very little to do in these open environments. It kind of there's rumors that like during development, they're trying to make this like an open world type thing. Mm -hmm. And it resulted in just a lot of big ass environments that just feel empty. Then they look and... at the switch and we're like, "Oh, we can't make that." Exactly, exactly. When they were, I, some people were saying this is like the leftovers of scale bound <laughs> that they kind of. <laughs> yeah, that would so, be interesting if that's true. Yeah. So whatever, whatever happened, you got these big ass areas, and yes, Bayonetta can like run really fast, and she has like different forms in this game that she can turn into to to give different moving abilities. None of that cancels out the fact that these environments are way too big, and there's not enough in them. Um, I like combat still, but I like I like fifty percent of the combat because if I'm playing as Bayonetta, oh, it's great. Give me my little yo-yo weapons. Give me my giant train chainsaw thing. Dude, the train like, is oh, sick, that's, dude. That's the so interesting. So I, I have a I have a game on my list that's pretty much the same thing that you're bringing up. The reason, but please continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I love all these weapons that they give Bayonetta. It's great, but. Even if I think the character Viola is, is pretty good, I like Viola as a character, I never want to play as her ever again in my fucking life. Oh my god, I feel you so hard. It I don't even so I don't even like Viola. What's, I, I think what's she's funny just... is this seems unanimous. It's not just a you mm -hmm. thing. I feel like everyone I've heard talk about this game is like, why is Viola in this? <laughs> it's literally, it's I'll say it like this. I'll say it like this. What if <sighs> all right, so y'all were talking about Callisto Protocol. Yeah. The dodging mechanic, how you have to dodge left and right, right? What if halfway through the game, you play as a different character, and suddenly their dodging mechanic is just up and down? <laughs> how about yeah, that I know, fuck exactly. with you? Whoa. That would fuck with you so much, wouldn't okay. it? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Okay, yeah. Totally. I've never heard just... it described that way. That sounds horrific. Yes, it's exactly the same thing. Where Bayonetta, everyone knows. You, you dodge at the right point in Bayonetta, you go into slow motion, that's how you get your hits in. It's awesome. It's great. Everyone loves it. You could always, there's always been weapons in Bayonetta that you could equip if you really want to get high level with it. And you can learn to parry. You can learn to like hit it at the right time. But most people, the accessible things to dodge. Playing as Viola, you can, if you want to trigger slow-mo, you have to parry. So you have, it's a completely different type of timing. It's everything. And it's just often enough in the game where it's super annoying. Every time I had a boss fight with Viola, I better stack up on lollipops because I have to heal up all the fucking time. And it is so frustrating. It's not even a roadblock. It's like, I can get it, but I just can't do the one thing that would help me mitigate damage. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with you. I'd, I'd even go as far to say that I think the parrying mechanic in Bayonetta 3 is already kind of weak. And then when you make a character that completely hinges on that to activate part of the game mechanics, you know, part of the fighting mechanics, it's like you you lose a lot of the, the potency that you had there with, with you know, the, the ease of just dodging out of the way and, you know, getting that slow-mo or whatever. It, it takes the satisfaction away, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. So that and that's just the gameplay parts. Like, like I said, I don't love Viola. I don't I like Viola's character. I think it's endearing to have like, oh yeah, she's like this pul punk rock. I don't tell me what to do type girl, but she's also an absolute dweeb and isn't being taken seriously. I like that I like that contrast in her. I I don't want to spoil some of the things that happen towards the end of Bayonetta 3. Viola is shockingly important by the end of the game. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Who's the guy? Who's the boy? Actually, we're, I have an art book. No, it's over isn't there. It some, room. Isn't it some um, lame like, Luca. cabin I, or something? L Luca. Oh, it's Luca. It. Luca. Yeah. Luca. Yeah, Luca's always been in the Bayonetta franchise. He was kind of teased as being like a little bit of a love interest in the first game. And then by the yeah, second I game, meant, he's completely sidelined. I meant that sideline. little man. I was like, what yeah, is Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like he was kind of just like Bayonetta's boy toy for the most part. And so people totally. didn't really take that seriously as anything more than just her being flirtatious. It's always been... 
fans really have said this. Fans have made this canon, even if it's not canon. But like John and Bayonetta have been the pair. Like it is, oh, it's a lesbian love story. We all understood that kind of, and we all took that as what this actual story is. And I took that as what it was. And I'm not going to get into specifics in Bayonetta 3. It ain't that. We get to the end, and not only is well, not only has it never been about Bayonetta and John, it is a completely it, it catches you off guard. It's not, it's not, oh, actually, they love each other. It's y'all are fated to be together. Oh my god. <laughs> it is like it is like it, in every version of this reality, this would happen, and it just feels like it shits so much over everything. What's the funny ending is, is embarrassing. Complete. I'm sorry. It is. No, no. I actually I talked about Emmett. I, I had Emmett on the regular Easy Achievers Game podcast that I do normally, and uh, when he came on and I had I was able to talk to this, I had told him I uh, I was like I, I've read about it, and um, uh, yeah, it's embarrassing. You had one of the strongest female characters in gaming, arguably. Arguably stronger than Tomb Raider is, although of course Tomb Raider is like very nostalgic for a lot of people. But she was like a very powerful female character. She was pretty identifiable. Yes, she uses a lot of her sex appeal and things, but that's a little empowering to a lot of people because she's owning that. Exactly. And you it's made her in a lot more ways than just kicking ass. Exactly. You know? like, mm -hmm. And yeah. you made her like this at the end of the game. Are you? Oh yeah. Oh. I can't... Yeah. I literally can't imagine the creator in a writing room, like, and people not laughing at that. Like, I, I have like, like fucking Black Widow being like, oh, uh, what was the guy? Oh, Hulk, I oh love you God. so much. No, what are you it talking is. about? What is it? Like, it just was so. I really, I, it's, it's better. It's just, it's uh, how you put it, right? It's embarrassing. I really can't imagine in a writer's room. Mm -hmm. I would look at and be like, that's funny. Like, what, what were you really going to bring? I would, I would even like, go as far to say even, that, like, it doesn't feel real. Bayonetta 3 doesn't feel like a game about Bayonetta at all. It doesn't feel like a game that like she's not the main character, really. Like you sure you play as Bayonetta and she is around, but like it is not really focused on her all that much throughout the story. And then when they wrap it up in the end with, with all that stuff, it just is like it, it's mind boggling how how they would take a genre or, or a, a series like that in. in and put an ending on it like that is just it's crazy. amazing I'll definitive say, that way but yeah that too like, that's the weirdest part you you open up this whole different sentence. world and you're like look at all the possibilities uh but don't get creative this always happens that is so yes. late like that is the laziest thing i've ever heard it, mm. it's, it's now, embarrassing like you said to say i mean there's a reason it's still on the list at all despite all these complaints and that Definitely. you're kind of hinting towards it like yes, the combat's still great. Like I said earlier, okay. the it's it's a multiverse story. So while I agree with what you said, this game is not much about Bayonetta. It's not about a Bayonetta, That's which might true. be part of the problem. That's it is true. a tour to a bunch of different Bayonettas in a bunch of different worlds which, with a bunch of different doesn't that art sound styles. awesome? Yes, like on I mean, paper that sounds yeah. incredible. Totally. And like let me tell you, I then damn near cry. Luca shows up. Well, well, I'm not. I'm I'm off Luca now because now I'm talking about good things. But I damn near cried when. Do I want to? You know what? I'll say this. Light spoilers. At some skip point, ahead two minutes. Yeah, you go ahead. Light please. spoilers. Light spoilers for Bayonetta three. I'll have it in. At the some search. point, you go to Africa, and there is an African version of Bayonetta who is oh, skin totally cool. correct. And that's cool. for me, as much as I love Bayonetta, for them to throw me that fucking bone, and Are I was alive. I don't know. I quite, <laughs> you still have both of your know. hands? I thought you would have uh, rolled one of them. I'm, I'm still alive because that level started with me playing as Viola. So like, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. That's okay. I'm still here. That's how I'm still here. But yeah, like, they'll do some crazy shit like that. And even outside of that bone that they threw me, like, I love some of the costumes you get. I love the the mm -hmm. weapons are so creative here. The forms are so creative. There's literally one weapon they give you that is just a fucking like mic on a stand and you chant and you scream and sing into the mic to give yourself different debuffs in the middle of combat or yeah. buffs in the middle of combat. It that's is like, cool. it is awesome. And like, that's the creativity I crave from this franchise. But when you pair it with the problems with Viola's gameplay and the problem with Luca being so important, suddenly it's like, they had a lot of very specific ideas and they executed it. And it looks like they had the freedom to execute on a lot of it. 
not all of those ideas were great ideas to the point where they announced another Bayonetta game the same year at the Game Awards, and I was like, whatever. I'm not yeah. even excited Ooh, yeah. about the little side Origins. part that they announced. Like yeah, or, yeah, Theresa Taylor or something like that. Exactly. Whatever I got this when 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 was it, when Luca popped up in the trailer for that one. I was like, "Fuck that guy!" He wrote, "I know, yeah. right?" Like, exactly. This dude. Like, yeah. We're gonna be dead. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, I'm very passionate about the game, and it has a lot of good, has a lot of bad. That's why it sits at seven because I feel like the bad just overshadows that greatness so much to where I I can't just put it that high up. It's the Star Wars of gaming. Mm, yeah uh, oh my god it, it, yeah it, it does sort of pull a, a rise of the skywalker on us for sure. <laughs> uh, um definitely i i agree i honestly 100 percent agree with you emmett uh, uh i i was going to make that one of my most disappointing games but once again i i felt kind of bad for putting it in that position because i don't think it deserves it because it's not mm. a bad game by any means it's just not as good as bayonetta one or two so mm. Um, and I will say, yeah, I, I feel like the it seems like almost unanimous, like around the, the gaming discussion. I've never seen someone that was like, I actually like where it ends. Like, it seems like everyone's like the one best action game. Is somehow. <laughs> that, is, that is true. Uh, I they, mean, they, the, they only the played the play first like, hour for itself. The, the, you know, like when you're playing as Bayonetta and you're running people over with a fucking train. It's rad as mm-hmm. shit, you know, exactly. and you're bashing people with yo-yos and stuff like it's dope. When but then it's just a frog. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Like, like you got all the you got all the good bayonetta stuff there. They even have a, a what what the the clean angel version or whatever. It's like that's great. I, I even, love that. Yeah. They're really digging into what we like about bayonetta, the fucking crazy bullshit. You know, I'm all yeah. about that. But yeah, man, they. I don't know what Hide, Hideki Kamiya was doing in that uh, storyboard room, but. Apparently smoking crack because <laughs> <laughs> like fucking a dude they uh, just went off the rails with that shit man. I mean so, I, I will yeah. as the last thing I'll say is that Hideki Kamiya you know cr- creator of the franchise and all that stuff Hideki already talked about how much he personally loves Bayonetta and how Luca was a self insert character a bit for him. I so, saw that true. For, true for as much as this game this game has a lot of fan service. He let the intrusive it does in. yeah. Exactly. For as much fan service as this game has, ultimately, it is trying to service the fan that is the guy who made the series more than anything else, and that is to the detriment of everyone else. Yeah, yeah isn't it? Right. Didn't, didn't he even mention that Bayonetta is literally his perfect woman or some, something like in the, some interview? Something like that. I think some like in that glasses interview where he was like, "Oh, they wanted me to cut the glasses, so I gave everyone glasses." <laughs> like, <same laughs> interview, I think. I was like, what? That sounds <laughs> like Kamiya, so I'm <laughs> not gave, surprised. I gave him glasses. Yeah. Oh my god, alright. Yeah. Bayonetta's you, always been yeah. A- yeah, in the first Bayonetta, every single character in the game wears glasses at least once. That's, that's true. That's pretty he was funny. mad. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's pretty funny. He, he definitely uh, took it on the chin, I guess. Um, number seven, Brandon. Citizen Sleeper. Ooh, okay. You did a lot uh, of reading this year. <laughs> I, I did a lot you of did, reading did. this. Yeah, I don't. I want to uh, preface this by saying I don't normally read this much, but I I don't know what was up with me this year. I was in a mood apparently, but yeah, a, a lot of reading, a lot of uh, watching film, and also playing games at the same time. It's a good time, good stuff. So, Citizen Sleeper, um, gameplay barely there. Uh, storytelling all the way there yeah and uh, like i genuinely can't say much about this game without without spoiling things or like i don't know giving away something like you really should go in pretty much blind other than knowing like this is a a sci-fi game with some cyberpunk elements and it's got a rich narrative and you're gonna be mind blown by the end of it and i mean that's all there is to say if i'm being completely honest it's pretty short um or it's not there depending on how you play it true very true it could go either way so uh, it, uh, mm, uh, it's really good it's a really good video game um, as someone, without spoiling, yeah as someone who is an absolute disco elysium fanboy um something like citizen sleeper really speaks to me um i, I i'll one gripe I'd have is that, like, I wish 
there was maybe a little bit more going on um, on maybe a gameplay element. Like you really are just sort of clicking around and making decisions. That's really what it comes down to. You're spending your time wisely or unwisely is kind of what it comes down to. But um, man, what is there is a solid, solid experience. It's on Xbox Game Pass. Like you you really, really should play this game if uh, if you're looking for a, a shorter uh, more narrative driven experience absolutely fantastic um I, I don't need to go on and on about it too much if i'm being completely honest like i said not much to say about it without spoiling but goddamn, if you like a good story you like some deep rpg elements and you like making decisions this is probably the game for you so i will say very quickly while I wasn't interested in this game because a lot of reading, blah, 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 uh, Christian, ISO Christian or Christian Makas, as you might know from Penelope Conquest, Popcorn Pod, uh, large Popcorn Pod, um, he made a video essay, which was featured in my top 22 video essays of the year, uh, about uh, climate forward art, uh, specifically solar punk type art. And this game came up and it got me interested in wanting to play it. So um, not only your glowing review and, you know, people talking about, about it like uh god i was about to say jonathan uh jacob geller <laughs> also discussed this game and talked about how he loved it too so yeah i'm getting a lot of recommendations for this one perhaps i'll break my rule of i don't like reading that much to finally check this one out so yeah definitely I'm i really to... had to sorry i didn't mean to cut you off no 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 uh, very quickly i'm going to discuss it very shortly so i'm not going to add anything yet mm. okay fair enough please brandon go ahead i was just going to say that um I don't remember what I was going to say. So, no mind. Awesome. I'm, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad I ruined everything. Game good. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Number six for me. It saddens me uh, that Emmett has not played it, but Immortality. Mm-hmm. Me and Brandon can gush about this game right now. Um, yes. It's cry now. unique. <laughs> oh my god! Um, I know Emma can leave the podcast now. He actually, can. I think. Yeah, you can go ahead and head out. Um, no, but I know this uh, studio has actually made other games like this, but I have not played any of them because none of them actually looked super intriguing. But I heard so many people discussing this game that I was, I was just like, you know what? Let me go try it out. And I was actually very fortunate because no one, I very much respect people who talked about it because everyone said the same thing. I'm not saying anything about it, but go play it. And I was like, okay. So I did it. And what I found was an incredible, incredible story narrative with gameplay, with full motion video, which is something I historically hate. I never mm. like full motion video in games, ever. It always seems strange. Wow. I never liked real people. But what I found that what is I really don't like is game mixed with FMV. Ah, Since this was FMB the whole way through and there's no like game in the middle, it's not as weird to me, I guess. So I didn't mind it at all. And the story was so, I mean, so gripping. So it's the, so the quiet it's man then. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, pretty the, much. The uh, critically acclaimed quiet Criti- man. Yes. Yeah, critically. Critics can't stop acclaiming. But more like critically acclaimed, yes. <laughs> pretty much. But me playing this, it was the definition of the game I could not stop playing and thinking about. Like, I yeah. kept playing. I didn't stop until I got all the achievements, by the way, until I got every single scene and knew every wow. single thing about the game. And I fully understood it. I read what other people thought. I was Same putting here, together yeah. what the story was over, like, a weekend with me and my wife. I was fully engrossed in um, uh, both the experience and the acting. When you really put it down, yes. we've never seen in video games, at least, and at least in my memory, we have not seen such a meta level acting that we have had with this game. Like, if you really sit down and think about it, the actors have to act, at, at least the main actress, um, Man Engage, Man Engage. Yeah, yep. Man Engage is her name. She has to act pretty much three levels at the bare minimum. And that's just like... It's yeah, not, she, that's not what happens. You get a, a VA, you, three movies and an actual person on top yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, and maybe something else like uh, the madness uh, hmm. in this game is incredible. I fell so madly in love from kind of go because it was so strange. It's almost eerie the entire time you're interacting with the story. Mm-hmm. There's always this sense of what's happening. There's always a little creepiness. 
Every time like something happens in the story, you're like, what is going on? And then you get a little trickle of what it might be, and you go, what is going on? And I will say, it is one of the most unique things I've ever played in both mm. gameplay, narrative, and acting. Like, in every aspect of this video game, you can at least say it's unique. I love unique. Uh, I would have played this. <laughs> I, 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 I completely agree with you. Um, I will do a little light spoiler here. This is my number three on my list, Ooh. Immortality. Um, uh, I, I adored this game as well. Um, it, I literally just beat it over the last weekend, actually. So I, I'm fairly hot off the heels of this as well. Um, and oh my god, as someone who I, I absolutely adore movies and in film and in watching artsy fartsy bullshit, you know. And this and, is like the definition. And I actually this never like the that definition of, of artsy fartsy bullshit. Yeah. And 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 it does it on on a level that's not like annoying or obnoxious or like in your in your face. It's, nothing. It's like... it is so well done. It it yes. is. It might be like one of the best movies that was made in 2022. Like like mm. even to go 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 past what it means to be a video game. Like like it is it is an interactive experience. It it you could call it a video game, but it is. It it is an experience, truly and and utterly. Um, from beginning to end, you you are trying to figure out this mystery, and the mystery is split into three different movies, and and dives deep into these yes. multiple characters throughout time. Like like there's thirty years that pass, you know, thirty forty years that pass between these movies, and like like how it all pieces together, and then eventually you get to a point where like the the gameplay itself becomes meta because you're you're like reversing footage and in like finding these bits and pieces that are like hidden in 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 place i don't mean to spoil too much but like hidden throughout this, this collage <laughs> of of thing and like then it it blows up even more and you're starting to learn about like what's going on with these characters way in the future and how it's affecting like their past selves and how it affects mm. you as a player and I, I gotta play this game man <laughs> dude dude oh i wasn't gonna God. say I, any of this but now that he's he put the guy out back i mean yeah, everything it's, about it's, this yeah is... I, I still don't know what because like you're saying all these words and i'm taking them in and i'm like i don't know what that could mean it, <laughs> so it like, is in in at its core it it is an oh, fmv man. interactive movie and at its most it is it is, uh, um, I, I, I even hate to say this, but a, a, a transcendental ex experience. Yeah. Like, like yeah. it, is, it, tr it truly goes past the medium that it exists in and becomes something Both holy in and of itself. Literally like, and figuratively, it does transcend. It's, it's throughout the story. Like, yeah, literally and figuratively. Like, mm. like I, I can't, as much as Final Fantasy VII Remake is literally a remake of Final Fantasy VII, <laughs> and you are literally dealing with the ghosts of the past that are affecting yeah. the universe in which you live in, this game does that way better. <laughs> way like, better. Way better. Like, like to, to a T. Like, ah. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, I'm, I won't go into too much more, but fucking A, Immortality. So, so, I'm so shaking good. a little bit right now. Yeah, yeah, you get the shakes. Way. You take, you Boy, take the metal. Fuck, dude. Uh, that uh, game rules. Rules. <laughs> I, um, I, I promise I'll play it. <laughs> please, please, please do. Please Ow. do. It, it'll take you a day or two to get yeah, through, you, you know? Can finish it's one it in the you just You, you yeah. sort of sit down and you decide you're doing it, and then it's over. And it is and, kind I mean, of the games where you decide yeah. when you're done, kind of. True. Okay. There is That's an end. There is an end. Like you will do something, and yeah. it definitively ends. There's credits. It I'm definitively saying, though, ends, and then you stop. kind of decide to dig in more. Or at that point, I I dug in further for a few I hours, and then I actually went and like looked up what other people's ideas were, and you kind of like Why? mix mm. all that together. Oh, it, it's it's okay. like I said, it's an experience. It goes past, you know, just it, playing the game. It's ugh. I know Dude, the achievers out there watching like this that. are some degenerates. So please go play this game. <laughs> it is incredible. Yeah. If you do uh, anything, any, anything, uh, your life, just artsy fartsy with the last year, uh, I highly recommend it's this. So yeah, please. Oh, yeah. Uh, again, at the bare minimum, you 
it's it's very meta. You are a person operating a very specific machine that is very old that and you're piecing film together. So like mm. it's very cool. Anyway, yeah, you're yeah. pretty you're pretty much on a, Game Pass. a video editor. Yes, it's on Game Pass. Yes. And it is on the Game Pass, yeah. Number mm-hmm. six, Emmett. Hmm. In the grand tradition of games as art, pushing the medium forward, really truly innovating in every single way possible. Like game awards. Here's another just just mind blowing experience that you've never seen before. A first for our medium. My number six is Shadow Warrior Three. <laughs> I was like, the I can't biggest, tell if this is serious or not. <laughs> the biggest surprise of them all. Exactly. <laughs> Who knew Shadow yeah, Warrior no. Three would push us this forward? To you, yeah, I, 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 you know what? I, I heard Putin played it. He's stopping the war, everybody. <laughs> I, I, was like, hey, I, I don't know if you saw the headlines, but he's like, uh, I found out about the cancer diagnosis. Why keep going? <laughs> like, Why keep yeah, going? It's over, man. <laughs> it's done. Uh, I think it's like the 14th diagnosis of cancer in like 12 years, but whatever. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Shadow Warrior 3, it's a solid, solid video game. It is one where we talked about Bayonetta 3 and it had high highs, but really low lows. Everything in Shadow Warrior 3 is just right there. It's just right in the middle. Um, I like all of it. I'm not losing my mind over any of it. None of it's blowing my mind, but it's just a really solid shooter. It is basically, it's like store brand Doom 2016. <laughs> and that that, we, we have Doom yeah. 2016 at home. Yeah, exactly. This is Doom 2016 <laughs> at home. But like I say that and I don't really mean it as a negative. Like, yes, it's lacking some of just a little bit of the polish of Doom 2016. Um, but it is still a fun shooter. Uh, I really use that comparison just to say that it is doing things differently, not that it's doing things worse. Uh, much like Doom, it is, you know, it's arena shooter, first person. You're running around and just shooting a bunch of bad guys. And once all the bad guys are dead, you move on to the next arena. Um, just like Doom, it has quote unquote glory kills. They don't call them glory kills in game. But the difference here is in Doom, every glory kill gives you health back. And that's all you can expect. In Shadow Warrior 3, all of the quote unquote glory kills, I think they call them some other thing, but all of those give you some type of special ability. So if you get like a random, just normal enemy, yes, it gives you a little health boost. But if you do a glory kill or whatever on one of the bigger enemies, you can take out like a piece of their body and use it as a weapon. So they have like this one enemy that's like just a giant sentient accordion, basically. And it's like slinking around the map. And if you do like little special move on it, you can like take out the little, there's like a confetti cannon inside of it. You rip it out and you're just like cranking it and you're just shooting enemies while you're running around the arena just for a couple seconds until it runs out of ammo. It's like every time you trigger one of those, yes, it gets you out of a jam. It gives you some extra health, but it can also turn into a fun little power up that you can use for a second. Um, So I really love that about the game. Uh, It is still... It, it kind of does, honestly, it does the Saints Row thing that I complained about earlier, where it takes a game that was really cool. Because I love Shadow Warrior 2. Like, I love Shadow Warrior 2 so much. I think that is the best looter shooter ever made. Before Borderlands 3 came out, I said this. I think that's the best looter shooter ever made because it's not about a billion guns. It's like 20 guns. But you can put charms in them that are randomly generated, and then it'll change the effects of the guns. So you don't have to refamiliarize yourself with a new weapon all the time. In this new game, you get like eight weapons and that's it for the whole game. You you have an arsenal of eight weapons. You get some upgrades here or there, but it, it standardizes it. It kind of takes all the complexities out so that anybody can enjoy the game. That's why I compare it to Saints Row, where it's like, oh, let's take out all the crazy stuff that is niche in any way and just water it down to the most basic point. But it kind of works for Shadow Warrior. It still is fun. Um, they take a lot of elements from stuff like Titanfall. You got your wall running, your, gra- your grappling hooks. You got all that stuff here. Uh, And it's just a solid little shooter. Narratively, it's still very corny, very, I'm not going to say cringe as far as the humor goes, but it's like, it's ridiculous, but not in the Saints Row referential way. It's ridiculous and just like a, like Harold and Kumar saved the world from a giant dragon type of energy. (laughs) That is the energy. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes that's fun. Sometimes it's like, all right, let's just get to the next combat encounter. Uh, But I enjoyed it. Uh, I reviewed this one. This is actually one of the only games I did review last year. So uh, you can check that out on VGU.TV, of course. Uh, But, yeah, I like the game. I think it's solid. It's right in that five or six range because it really is, like, middle of the road. Doesn't blow me away, but also did everything competently enough to where I'm very positive on it. So, yeah, 
good one. I would, I would like to add because I'm not adding anything else to the conversation because I, I just have nothing to say. But I watched the trailer. I always try to watch or have some tangential knowledge when you bring up games. I don't know. Um, the trailer features a pinata chicken firing a laser beam while a tank top wearing giant muscle man holds a 90s windows monitor in his hand while he kicks it and a giant lady with big hair also kicks so, sounds uh, familiar this game is solid, pretty wild solid game yeah solid, okay. solid video game there yeah. <laughs> shadow warrior 3 has some random shit and also it's like it's so weird that this is the third game in a series of games where i didn't care about the story much so to see that they're still sticking to these events that happened it's like oh y'all care y'all care about the lore so like they're like they're bringing characters back and stuff and i'm like oh shit they mattered <laughs> it's crazy I, so yeah i absolutely adore devolver digital and i know this is yeah. the publisher not the developer but um yeah. uh, flying I mean, wild hog, absolutely the devs. Flying wild yeah, hog, flying yeah. wild hog yeah. absolutely any anything that devolver touches i'm a fan of so i haven't got to play this yet but it is definitely on my list of, of things to check out for sure. It's, a, it's definitely a fun afternoon. It's a good like eight hours. Just get in, get out. I, I almost platinum it. I'm like one trophy away from the platinum. But uh, nice. yeah, it is. It is a fun game. I enjoy it a lot. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Brandon. Number seven. Oh, uh, number six. Um, number I six. got um, seven. Pokemon Scarlet slash Violet. Um, I'm a huge Pokemon fan gigantic pokemon fan been playing since uh, the beginning since pokemon came out was released and um i as someone who was a fan of sword and shield i know a lot of people do not like sword and shield very much i quite enjoyed sword and shield put a lot of time into that game even though it maybe wasn't the best pokemon game ever um uh, really enjoyed Arceus or Ar Arceus when it came out early in the year. Um, I, I loved what they were doing, kind of where they were going, the direction they seemed to be moving in. And this game is a lot of that. Uh, there are some things that I wish they would have taken from Arceus and moved into this. But to keep with the classic Pokemon formula, I get it. And I, I've spent a lot of time playing Pokemon uh, Scarlet specifically over the past, what month or so that it's been out now um, mm -hmm. collecting Pokemon, just roaming around the open world and, you know, fighting, fighting bad guys, uh, collecting badges and doing all that stuff. Uh, it, it helps that my friend group, um, it happens to all also be very into Pokemon. So they're all very into shiny hunting and stuff like that. So while I don't maybe go quite as far as they do, it's nice to sort of have that small community of of people that are we're all sort of working towards a you know a, a goal or whatever. So like when raids happen over the weekend, I you know hop on and grab a Charizard or whatever with my buddy and kind of move on with my life or whatever. So um, I, I think it does what Pokemon does best, but kind of introduces it into this new formula. Um, and, and I think it mostly does a pretty solid job at that. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to the, the writing in that game is surprisingly good. It is. Um, it's not like mind blowing in any way, but there, there's some deeper elements that are going on there, which I appreciate. It's not just like some kid without a dad living in the Pokemon universe. It's like, like, like he has real problems about why his dad left and you know like like it gets a little bit more deep and i know I, it sounds silly i'm talking about oh, fucking pokemon no. here but <laughs> when you said a guy with a father walking around i was like what if one of the pokemon trainers were like fatherless behavior <laughs> <laughs> yes so funny to be. First of all, we uh, need our first incel in the Pokemon universe. I we think do. we're we too late yet. on that. Um, I, I I really think it's a missed opportunity there. So, yeah. um, and, I anyway, agree. yes, I, I, not much else to say about it. It has god awful technical problems. God awful, horrible, terrible, uh, honestly inexcusable. But it is hard to uh, disagree with just how fun that game is to play. So. If I may, I'll, I'll pick it up. Um, I agree with pretty much everything he says. The writing was, was pretty good. I actually enjoy how the game ends, which I don't think I've ever said about Pokemon game before. I agree. Um, yeah, interesting for sure. I, I find I did like it, and I do like how the Paradox Pokemon are like shown off, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. I like it. Um, I played Violet, so I got the Futury ones, and, and that was really cool. Sure, I, sure. I liked it. I um enjoyed the twist, kind of. Um, yeah. I was like, wow, this is actually kind of sophisticated for what I assume a Pokemon story would be. 
So I did. Exactly. I did like it. I did like that. This is the first one where it's like, hey, go do what you want. And I love that. I did do what I want. I fought some things where I was a little underpowered to like make it a little harder, and that was fun. I I remember Sword and Shield. I did like it, but I mean, I could beat that game with my eyes closed. I felt like like I was just mowing <laughs> things down in one hit. Like I would just. I mean, I was genociding things in that game. It was ridiculous. Like, oh no. <laughs> so we're going to this Did one. I was like, okay, ring? yeah, I committed war <laughs> crimes. Um, but going into this one, I was like, okay, yeah, this this is actually a little more sophisticated. I like it. It's still not as sophisticated, but that I want. But it's it's for children, not man children. So I understand. Like, I, I get. I'm not going to get what I want. It's fine. I, I'll be okay. Um, I would like to reiterate though. It is inexcusable for how bad this game is, uh, yeah, technical wise. Totally. Inexcusable. It's bad. I want everyone to understand Pokemon is arguably the most. Yeah, probably the most uh, profitable franchise ever. Probably uh, Call of Duty probably okay. is up there. Um, but if you really put it down, Pokemon might be like number one with cards, with the plushies, with their marketing, various marketing deals. Uh, the games, yeah, by the yeah, way, you... that they make you buy two yeah. of them uh, that they got away with mm -hmm. and just never stopped, which good for them. They've been making Call of Duty money for at least a decade more than Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. like Definitely. so yeah. I just want everyone to understand that's how much money we're working with. And for mm -hmm. this game to be anywhere close to this in terms of uh, how it runs is very inexcusable. But I also have put about 100 hours in the game. So Same here. I am yeah. both talking out of my mouth and my hand is doing something else. So I do not want to come across as hypocritical because <laughs> that's exactly what it is. It's hypocritical. I talked all this shit. I bought the game and played it all the way through much more. So did the raids, all that good stuff. So hmm. little hypocritical, but the game is great. Solid. Albeit, it, it, albeit it, terrible in other ways. It's fun to play. I, I can't can't take that away from it. So hmm. it's impossible. Okay. I expect that. The only thing I'll add to this conversation, because of course I didn't play this fucking game. Um, I got a birthday card where I'm Ash Ketchum. So shout out to that. Shout out to Gabby who made this card. Yo, that's fucking sick. Yeah. So oh, thank yeah. you for this. That, that is one thing I'll add. That's literally all I have, though. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Ash Ketchum games. for winning the uh, Pokemon League. I just he gets to retire there. Uh, at the yeah, right old age of 11. <laughs> oh, that's great. yeah shout out to the uh, gotta catch them all and he did gotta catch them all gotta catch them all number five yeah. i'm gonna be quick um i uh it was already talked about citizen sleeper um yes respect beautiful in terms of art in terms of dialogue it's probably one of the best written games that i've ever played the actual yeah, dialogue and writing I, when they introduce a character they have a voice there's no voice acting in this game i want to make that clear but they have a voice the way they write them the way they insert mannerisms the way they have this almost like i mean it's almost like you are talking in their voice acting about voice acted it's kind of crazy the, the way how finely tuned the dialogue is it you is feel very the good for the words yeah yes like it's mesmerizing. One of my favorite characters is actually someone that you um, get mushrooms for for them to make soup. That's yeah. well, that's what the that's what the quest is. That's all you do. Mm. You get various foods, you cook and you the deal is he feeds you for free, but you get him ingredients and you become mm. his like little test uh, person to try food out. And that character is just so beautifully written. Every time I'm sitting there, I'm in, I feel like I'm in that cafe with the sounds that were beautifully uh, inserted, the, the the chatter. I, I didn't play this when I had it, but I have surround sound now. I, I wish I had it then because it, I, I bet it sounds beautiful. But even with the just sound bar I had then, it felt like I was sitting there and listening to this guy tell me it's like a couple stories that he had. It's, it's I mean, at the end of the day, I think the best word to sum it up is beautiful. This game is beautiful. I. I I don't want to mince words here. Like I, I love what it says. I love the uh the narrative that they pull. I love the persona like sense of urgency that the game kind of has, where there's a countdown and you want to like do this before this to make sure this happens. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Games uh, with calendars and 
clocks are yeah. my shit. You know, yeah. Like if you, for if some you're reason, putting me yeah. under like a, a, a time management problem, like, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm all about that. Yeah, you give me a deadline. I'm I'm into it. Uh, I liked. I don't know. There's so much that I like about it that the the actual reason that you're on this ship is so intriguing and what's going on like with the planet that we left and and where we're going mm. and how you can pick like and this is really when it's my shit where like you get to pick like engineer or you can be good at hacking or you can be good at um I think it's a uh, deceiving agriculture or so- something or deceiving um, okay it's, I Didn't think expect it's that. I think so I forget what the third one is but but it's a give and take so if you're good at engineering, you're going to be minus one on tech. If you're good at tech, maybe you're minus one on engineering, and by, you know, they, so on and so forth. It's a very, stuff. it reminds me a lot of like Disco Elysium in that way, where it's like, I still never if you, I if you push really hard into like being, you know, physical or whatever in that game, like you're a fucking idiot, you know, like mm. sure you're strong <laughs> and you can beat a dude up, but like you're super dumb and you will always, you know, you'll fail at stuff like that. So it, it's got a good, good, in, uh, uh give and take on the rpg mechanics for sure yeah and i love it and and like the way you play out the story like you will miss out on some things but you'll nail the like i played an engineer like i I was pretty heavy engineer the whole game so like i was able to do all the engineering stuff but there's a meta not meta um uh, apologies there's a um second layer to the map where you like hack stuff So, so i'm not that good at that so like I have to like make sure I'm really good at with like my choices there and make sure I'm like not being too pushy so I because I don't want to die or anything like that. So like stuff like that is I mean this game is it's great. It's incredible. I love it. It's top hmm. five of the year and it's has it's thick. almost no it's gameplay. Pretty sick for sure. <laughs> it, argu- it arguably actually has no gameplay and that's crazy that m- both my five and six yeah are it, games it that I pretty much didn't play at all. It's kind of a glorified visual novel, but yeah. it's a really, really good one. So. Really good. It's really good. I wish people would play it. Um, I actually found it because it's funny how I found it. So my former co-host, Alex, played the game and said, oh, yeah, I thought it was going to be cool. But then I realized it was a text adventure. And I was like, oh, shit, it's a text adventure. So like literally the opposite reaction. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I wasn't into it because I didn't just feel like reading for the whole time. And I was like interesting so it's just reading and that and that made me want to start it and i went and played it and i fell in love with the game i actually am probably going to play it again because i kind of I, I got an ending but i wanted to keep playing the game so i it lets you revert and do the other thing where you get to leave and do something else so i did that but i kind of fucked myself because i used i tried to do some dlc while doing the main story and i sh- just shouldn't have done that it, mess, it, it messed you up too much is going on so i think i'm going to restart do a bunch of different choices um, and huh. see how it plays out. But uh, that was my number five citizen sleeper. Um, we already talked about huh. it, so I'll, I'll go ahead and move to Emmett here with his number. I respect one. that. Sounds like a sleeper indeed. Um, oh my god, I'm <laughs> calling the police. Love it with the segue. Uh, yeah. Always. Yes, indeed. I want it sometimes. Uh, speaking of which, uh, from one dystopian hellscape to another dystopian hellscape, let's go to hell once again with Metal Hellsinger. Oh, my oh, number nice. five. Oh, wow. I, yeah. This one might be a surprise. I have not played this. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Have you played this at all? Oh, wow. What's up, unique boy in the house? Um, Metal Hellsinger, I like a lot. I was always interested in it because just looking at it, not even knowing that it's a, it's a rhythm-based game, it just looks like Doom. Like Doom 2016 or Eternal, yep. take your pick. It just has that gameplay look to it. But it's that gameplay layered over, layered over a rhythm game. So it's not just shoot them up, do the little glory kill to get your health back. It's that where you're having to do things on pace. So all your guns, you have to shoot at the beat of the song. Like you have to do all that. All of your glory kills or the equivalent of glory kills in this game. You have to do at the beat of the song. And all your reloads, you have to do at the beat of the song. And I'll tell you what, that seemed intimidating when i first started because there's a whole calibration sequence they give you they're like let's this determine the latency of your tv and i'm like oh my god Whoa. like they, they're really getting the timing on this i'm like fuck am i gonna get this but then after a couple minutes i was getting it and i started doing the thing where i'm like nodding my head while i'm playing and moving and it's just one of those games where you know people i what is it uh noah caldwell Dreve talked about this in his video on the god of war series 
when people say, oh, you're, you're playing this game and your eyes just glaze over. How dare you? Games are so bad for you because your brain's off. And it's like, no. If a game is that engaging to get you into that state, it is doing something really good. And Metal Hill Singer is one of those few games this year where just eyes glaze over it and I'm in a trance. I am trying to keep with this music. I know that and fun. yeah, it was so fun. I When I get to them high, like 32x combos and I'm getting millions of points with every kill, it is like, it's a feeling like few other games can give me. Uh, and on top of that, I enjoyed the metal music. Like, I don't listen to metal at all. I am strictly hip hop, R&B, some old school like disco or soul and that is some pop music too that like my ariana grande and shit and my chloe and Haley albums on the wall above me but other than that i i stick to my genres metal is not a genre i've gone to ever i was stepping tapping my feet to some of these songs and not just because the gameplay demanded it like some of these vocal performances are really going good some of these drum patterns are really like sending me for a loop in a good way i liked a lot of metal music in this game it made me appreciate that genre more than i ever have um, and yeah, just ultimately, yes, there is a Troy Baker narrated story. It's fine. The story is very of course secondary. He found himself in this yeah. game. Of course he did. I did <laughs> not know that. Oh my yeah, god. I didn't either. See, not only is he in this game, your starting weapon, he is the voice of your starting weapon because it's just a he is. So I didn't it's even just know choose fireballs. Um, so yeah, he, he's in it. There's not there are other voices in the game, but like he's like the star, quote unquote. He's the biggest name, I should say. He's not the star at all. Um, but yeah, it's just a very fun game and it's only like, it's like eight levels, maybe five hours. I think it was closer to four for me. Um, and there's a couple challenges you can do if you want like extra perks and whatnot, but I skipped a lot of that stuff cause I just wanted to see the end. It was engaging the whole time. It was fun. Didn't overstay its welcome. I enjoyed it a whole lot. Thank God for game pass. Cause this was another game pass classic. Uh, just a very solid video game. If you just want to just dip your toe into that genre of like rhythm matching, but you're playing a different genre that isn't a rhythm game, it is good. So I'm very happy I tried this one out. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed Metal Hell Singer quite a fucking bit. Yeah. I don't have anything to add. So if you do not, uh, but this is definitely a game I'm going to check out. I actually think I'm tone deaf and not jokingly. I actually have trouble listening to music because I can't always understand it. So, Dang. um, uh, that's no why like podcast so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like podcasts, and also I like um. What if um, we did a whole show on beat? Like, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's why I actually grab it towards to rap a lot because I just understand it better. I don't know why, honestly, but I, I have trouble like like pop music, for instance. Like, I, I kind of struggle hearing the 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 voices, the melody, and and I'll oh, be oh. I'll be with my wife. And like she'll know everything she has. I'm like, hey, what did they just say? Like, I need, I don't know the lines like people mm. seem to do. So I feel like I'm missing something in my head or something. I don't know, but I, don't, sure. I, I, I would, I would like to try the game, but I am a little scared because I do kind of struggle with a lot of music because I, 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 I like music. It's just I struggle understanding it. I guess, I guess is a good way of saying it. I don't know. Oh, uh, Brandon. No, yeah, I, just, I, I kind of, I. I don't want to say it's not that I necessarily don't understand them, but I tend to gravitate more towards like the the instrumental in the background compared to the lyrics, I guess. Um, maybe that's just a personal thing. Maybe I that's know. what I do. Uh, I, I can't. And I yeah, yeah, don't sometimes know I, I won't be paying paying attention to what they're saying, I guess. But um, anyway, not a huge metal person either. Never really have been. But um, this is on my list of games to play um, more so just because I am very interested in the the atmosphere the gameplay etc etc so um i do like heavy, heavy music so i do i do want to try i mean i grew up with like a bench of a metallica all this stuff so i do want to try it it's just i was a little finger. worried but maybe i should try it just just to see if i like it yeah that's true sure. number five brandon please Kirby forgotten lands no oh! Oh! oh yeah it had to be in there somewhere, right? Had to be in there somewhere. Uh, uh, absolutely amazing fucking video game. Uh, the first, the only uh, 3D, or uh, you could say 3D Kirby game. I guess technically what Crystal Shards on N64 was 3D, but I feel like every 2D. Kirby game mentioned it, it, it could all be fake. I, didn't, I don't know. Crystal Shards <laughs> is the first time I've ever yeah. heard that name. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, absolutely amazing game. Um, perfectly executed. Uh, really like, uh, there's I don't I don't think there's anything bad or like negative to really say about this game. Like it is super solid, super great. If you like Nintendo games, platformers, 
action adventures at all in any way, shape, or form, like you'll probably be into this. Um, the mouthful mode uh, does a great job at at really expanding upon that and giving you fun things to do in the environment. Um, the one maybe gripe I would have is that it it's not more open ended, um, which is mm. which is a, 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 an honestly insane thing to ask with, with this sort of package, but. Um, uh, the ending absolutely rules. You fight God practically, and then there's there's yeah. literally yeah, you do. Uh, like level the the whole world <laughs> beyond the last world. So like there's a whole end game in Kirby, and you you fight God. It, like it's 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 like oh it's great. <laughs> uh, I need to go back to that game because I forgot there's a world behind the final yeah. boss so i gotta whole, check that out there's a, a world eight if you will a whole yeah. you know a whole thing behind that or whatever so um <laughs> really really great the the last boss is surprisingly difficult the music is surprisingly great and um dude kirby all mm-hmm. day yes yeah i oh, love dude, the way you said at the end you fight god and you're talking about a kirby game dude yeah pretty much oh you're my god practically yeah you that that's what you i mean that's actually if, to be fair if you've ever beaten a kirby game that's fairly on par um, what the fuck are you saying yeah i'm dead serious like you usually will ddd <laughs> is like just the beginning and then you go like up into DDD space it's and... just the beginning <laughs> yeah dude kirby rules yeah absolutely so huge kirby fan um ddd is the son eventually you find the father and, um, and then you tackle the holy ghost that's i'll be right oh back by, by the way i, I, go I gotta i gotta i gotta step Please. away for just a moment of course no worries, because that gives me time to talk a little bit about Kirby as well. Yeah, yeah, I figured um, we would, yeah, we would forgotten. let you discuss them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely on there. It's very high. We'll find out how high soon. Um, but oh, no. yeah, just to... <laughs> we, there's a hint. There's only so high it can go, because I already said what my number one was, but you'll find out. Um, but yeah, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. It's I actually don't agree with Brandon on the point of he wishes that it was more open ended because I found it refreshing to have these linear levels. But there were like things hidden in the nooks and crannies that like, oh, if you go behind this corner, there's suddenly a whole little chunk of level here. Or if you go behind this corner, there's like a small little challenge here. I appreciate that more than I like the, you know, everyone wants the Breath of the Wild. Oh, every, there's a nook and cranny around every corner. Please. But there's too many corners for me to appreciate it, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I like just one thing here, two things here, and then the level's done. That's what I like. So I really appreciated that structure of it. I love how I, I'm saying this, and it's crazy that I even have to say this or can say this considering what released this year. This is my favorite Platinum game released this year. <laughs> and yes, yeah, Bayonetta it's... 3 did come out, but by the middle point, or really like the last third of the game, is a Platinum game. That's like hilarious. it is, you want to talk about over the top? Yes, you fight God. You do I some can't believe insane. You keep saying, you fight yes, God. but like they Prince don't call it like, at the end. It's not even that. It's not like the title screen pops up. Duh, I understand. And then, Jesus Christ just, like, doesn't come out. I understand. Yeah, it's not even that. It's just like you fight a being of such immense, unfathomable power. Yeah, as this little pink blob, it is incredible. It is so. It's so cool, and like they they haven't been teasing it, but they've kind of like been escalating the the things that you fight as Kirby where, yeah, you're fighting these little cute little enemies that are your size. And eventually you start fighting like these big ass monsters and eventually you start fighting even bigger monsters. And then by the end of the game, you're fighting a complete, like a thing that's like the size, like two or three stories of building size. (laughs) And it's like, okay, we're here now. And then you turn into a bunch of like, it's mouthful mode. So you turn into a bunch of like larger items and you do damage to these enemies in some of the most like, like, yes, Bayonetta is, like, a game that I thought about a lot while playing Kirby, but really, the little bit that I know about Wonderful 101 probably has very similar energy to the end of Kirby Forgotten Land. Um, It's great. And also, just, I have never been a Kirby person because I didn't want to play a 2D game, especially when almost all of them were on, like, the Game Boy or the 3DS or whatever. Right, and also, okay. just... As a side note, uh, there was a guy, I don't know his name anymore, but when I used to go to church a lot as a kid, um, there was this one kid who just Denzel found out Washington. about games... Yes, Denzel Washington went to my church. No. Um, there was this one kid who I liked video games, he liked video games, so people just put us together. And it was one of those things where, oh, you like games, cool, what do you play? And it, his eyes lit up because that's the first time anyone ever asked that question. 
every day. Kirby this, Kirby that. Never played a Kirby game in my life. Never cared about Kirby in my life. Just inundated me with Kirby lore. And I'm like, I think I'm done. I, I don't think I'm ever going to play Kirby now because <laughs> you've ruined Kirby. this. Yeah, because now it's like, God, every time I think of this, I'm going to get mad because you're just washing me in this thing that I don't want to, that I don't care about. So you keep talking. Um, but that's when I was like 13. Um, but yeah, I like Kirby now. I'm a stan. I got my little amiibo up here. I bought a bucket hat for Kirby if Entertainment Earth ever wants to ship it because I bought that shit like six months ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love Kirby. I got a Kirby hoodie that I wore during my uh, birthday stream uh, for charity. And yeah, I, I love Kirby now. This This made me a fan. Yeah, um, I'm I'm glad to hear that because yeah, I I I started playing Kirby. So I I was back when I was a kid. I would loved retro video games, or they weren't retro at the time. But um, I I loved old games. Couldn't afford to buy cartridges and stuff like that. So I'd play a lot of emulators. But one of the first Super Nintendo games I ever played was Kirby. I think All Star something something or other Superstar oh. Saga some something like Super, that. Yeah, Superstar Saga. Saga. I I and and um, Superstar, yeah. oh my god, I, I I fell in love, and and that was when I really found out like what Kirby was, and yeah, I I absolutely adore Kirby, and yeah, ever since then, really big Kirby fan. So I was excited for this to come out, um, and yeah, when when it did, it was better than I could have ever even imagined it, it, it being. So um, yeah, shout out to Kirby Forgotten Lands. Great stuff. I always call it Forgotten Worlds on accident too. So there's that. I, I feel that. But yeah, Kirby's great. Pick up a Switch and buy it. It's, it's the one game where I'm like, oh, I don't hate playing this on a Switch. Yeah, like, definitely. It every feels, other Switch game, I'm like, why am I here? But this one feels right. good. I feel to like play. that's what I'm gonna be doing with Fire Emblem Gage happening very soon. I'm gonna be like, God, mm -hmm. if this was on anything else, I feel that. Like on Steam Deck, get 60 frames. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Wink. Number Wink. four for me, Tunic. I'm a little mm -hmm. game. Okay. Uh, another okay. one. I, I feel like doesn't get a whole lot of love. Totally. Uh, at least totally. not enough. I fell in okay. love with. I finally got to experience what all our elders tell us about. All oh, games are so different. They didn't tell us everything. Oh, all the garbage that spews <laughs> out of them, right? Well, yeah, I got I got to kind of experience that. This is clearly Legend of Zelda inspired. I mean, it screams Legend of Zelda at you at every totally. point, um, except when mm -hmm. you get a gun. But aside from that, uh, it's pretty much Legend of Zelda the, the entire. The yeah, they yeah yeah they give the fox a gun. That you wow. kill people with. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's very strong, Fun. surprisingly. Nintendo um, would never. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you, uh, you shoot Link him in with, a, the, with a Glock. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you, you hit up in the wrong Hyrule and he's just cocking a Glock. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that actually sounds fucking sweet, actually. Doesn't that it? sounds Doesn't pretty it? dope. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, Saints Hyrule or something. I don't know. Um, but back to Tears of the Kingdom are actually tattooed on <laughs> <laughs> two tears. Is like, this is my kingdom. <laughs> tears of the kingdom. Oh my god. Anyways, that's um, great. Tunic. Uh, you play as an adorable fox, and there is an, an a horrific story playing beside you uh, the entire time. Um, and I'm not exaggerating. What has happened is incredibly dark and incredibly fascinating. Uh -huh. And I implore everyone to give this game at least a shot. I do understand if it is off-putting with both some of the difficulty, although I would argue it's not very difficult, I would say. It's just... It's just obtuse. It's, it's obtuse yeah, in obtuse its game design. Archaic. But it's uh, purposely obtuse. It I never f figured a solution out and went, that's a little cheap. I always kind of felt like, oh, okay, I just didn't think about it that way. Or I didn't think of walking around that corner. or the thing. It really is, hey... Touch every corner of the game. There's probably a secret there, or it will lead you to a secret, or there's something around there that you should uh, explore. And I find that very compelling in this game. I've never been like that, by the way. I, I When I heard mm -hmm. what the original Legend of Zelda had you do, where you put a bomb in a random corner and it opens a dungeon, I was like, that doesn't <laughs> sound fun at all. This one at least tells you these things, right? You, you, like, I don't believe there's a single point in the game where, like, there's a hidden thing you just have to randomly do. It, there's at least a structure, right? When you get a bomb, there are, there's cracks in the walls. I will say I did get stuck a couple times, but it was very gratifying when I figured out. I actually made a rule that I wouldn't look anything up from this game. Uh, I don't know why I did it. I think I, I just made it up while I was playing it. I just I was like, I always look stuff up, so I, I didn't want to with this one, and I didn't. And I, I was able to finish the whole game. I only had to look up 
um i want to say two two or three things i was i couldn't find one of the of the booklets i think or it was one of the booklets that i had to find and i didn't want to beat the yeah. game until i found the booklet even though i didn't know i sh should have the booklets for something that happens at the end of the game but a uh, very good game. Uh, I love the story. The story again, I will say, is is in shockingly uh, scary, but it is very good. Uh, and mm. no dialogue, uh, no voice acting, nothing is said to you. Uh, there are little um, uh, text bubbles above a couple things' heads, but there's they're usually like ghosts, and it's only like to kind of hint at stuff, but it's. There's never really like something like said. Mm. And if I could like really recommend something, it's it's how brilliant the booklet is in the game. Whereas like you collect pages of the instruction manual for the game. And that is so cool. That, that's so creative. And you piece it together and you, it literally teaches you the game. Now, you could have you could have figured these things out by just pressing buttons. But, it, you know, it tells you like, oh, dodge roll to you do this. Uh, uh. Uh, I, I remember that was the, the funniest thing when I learned to run. When I found a page, I was like, oh, you can run. You like, all you got to do is whole day and like run around. Like, that, that was, in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it was like five hours or something. I was like, wow, that's kind of cool, though. That, that like, uh, I don't know. I guess I just didn't think about it. But I found a page and it told me. And I'm like, oh, now I know. And this and it tells you a story in the booklet around the instructions. So like if you look like like, a you know, like a, a finger length, like deep, you can kind of figure out like, oh, this is the beginning of the game. Oh, this is like where you came out. And then the twist at the mm. end is nuts. It's really cool. Huh. I very much right. love the game. Um, it does cool stuff with like saves for one of the puzzles. I am not smart enough to figure out like the big puzzle in the game. So I looked all that stuff up and write about like what a bunch of people did. And then like a bunch of people got together and were able to figure stuff out together. It has to do with sounds and things. It's, cr it's crazy, but wow i was able to figure out the game at least i wasn't able to do all the secrets of course um the leveling up the uh the the moment you figure out how to level up is so cool like when you're like oh my god i could have done that the whole time but i just didn't know and it, it's so cool it, it has a very mm. elden dark souls-esque rhythm to where like you learn as you go and nothing overtly mm. screams everything at you. It's very nice. Um, yeah, it, and I, it and I wish me... more people oh, would try it. It's on Game Pass. Um, I'm actually, I, I'm done with my rant. Please, Emmett, uh, uh, contribute. <laughs> I, I'm actually, um, it sounds a lot like if you, what I hear from a lot of people who like either import a Japanese game or just find a ROM online and they're like, oh, this game looks so interesting. I can't read anything, but I'm going to play this anyway. It point. seems like that type of vibe. Like it's trying to it emulate is. that experience of like going in blind to something that you can understand enough, but it's going to eternally just be mysterious forever just because you can't understand the language it's speaking, but it still has a special effect. Like and then that since, seems since cool. you mentioned that, so there is a, um, it's like a fake language, right? There's a language, but it's the guy made it. Oh. And you can actually decipher it. Apparently, it's really hard. I think a few people figured out some stuff. It has to do with like I think sound or something. Um, I, it's been a long time since I played the game. I played it like I think it's September or something. But um, like you could, if you wanted to, sit down, piece out. It's almost like um, um, Jesus, I'm blanking. Uh, Japanese written language. Uh, Ani. Yes, thank you. It's wow, almost like I that where you can ask. Good job. <laughs> I think it, I think that's what they call it, where you can um piece out like the language like, and figure it out. Okay. That way. Like like it's intriguing, and I would mm. I, of course I'd never figure something like that out. But it's it's very cool that the developers thought that much. This game is like they literally thought of everything about the game, and again the twist is nuts. But mm. I'm done. Brandon, would you like uh, anything to add to to the tunic discussion before we move on? I haven't played too much of it, maybe a few hours of it. Um, enjoyed what I played of it. Um, I, I, like you said, the the book portion. Uh, it looks like they actually like photocopied or, or, or scanned in like real pages of, of a book and then animated them, and they look really really great. Um, uh, it's something I'd like to get back to. I uh, just haven't had the time yet. I hmm. get it. I get it. I respect it. Emmett. Yeah. Number four, please. Um, I'll say for even though I had something to say about Tunic, I I literally played the demo and bounced off because I was like, this game's too hard. But now the more I hear about it, 
maybe it I'll isn't try. isn't that hard. Um, and again, I, I made the dumb rule. I mean, I feel like I probably did five to ten hours because I was too stubborn to look something up. So like you could mm -hmm. you could probably do it way faster than I did. Uh and just look stuff up if you get lost. Like literally there was one yeah. night, it was one AM and I got stuck and I was like, I ain't going to bed until I figured it out. I stayed up till four a.m. I stayed up till four AM. It oh took me, Lord. It took me three hours to figure out where I was stuck. And I figured it out. I woke up my wife like, hey, I'm going to bed. And she was like, What? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what time is it? It's 4 a.m. I was like, I couldn't stop. And so I figured you gotta it out. You're going to wake up in two hours. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, boy. Uh, Sometimes you just get caught on something, you know, and then you just got to, you know, fin finish it out and see what it's happens. It's like an itch. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I can't leave it. Well, speaking of getting stuck, this next game here, my number four, is, is a game one? that I thought I was going to be stuck on at first. I started my playthrough and I was like, I'm trying to get through this. I'm trying to play. I'm trying to enjoy it. I'm already like fucked. Like, I already don't know how to proceed. I've been trying and trying and trying. I don't know how to get through this. But thanks to some recommendations on Twitter, I made a different build entirely, a uh, kind of easier build. I was able to get through that part that I was stuck and I kept playing for another 20 or 30 hours. Haven't beat it, but I think I've put enough into this game to know why it's special and to be able to say that I enjoyed it a lot. Might be a little lower on the list than most people would say, but number four is Elden Ring. Oh, beautiful. Of course. Mm. Yes. Yes. Makes sense. Yes. It was about time Elden Ring got brought up on the show, and I'm guessing it's going to get brought up again later. Yes. Maybe. It oh, sure yes. will, my friend. It sure oh, will. Yeah. It sure will. I figured. I figured. Um, but yeah, my experience with Elden Ring was I had never played a From Software game. I, I played oh. Souls Likes. People know. I love me some Surge 2. The Surge 2 is one of my favorite games ever. It's on my top 100 list, even if it is in like the 80s. What's crazy is you play the RC Cola of the Coca-Cola. Like, what the fuck are you doing, Emmett? <laughs> That's true, yeah. You're yeah. drinking RC the Cola. Coca-Cola is okay. right there, my friend. <laughs> but Coca-Cola, I, I don't like fantasy settings, man. I The only That's fantasy fair. game okay. on my top 100 list at all is Skyrim. And that's mostly because of the gameplay. So, like... I just don't care about fantasy settings, so I never looked at those. But the surge was like, oh, sci-fi? Dismemberment? Yeah, let's fucking go. Um, but Elden Ring, people wouldn't shut up about it. People who usually aren't the Souls heads are also not shutting up about it. So I'm like, people right. played this game, which mm -hmm. is shocking. shocking oh, yeah. Yes. So I figured, okay, maybe I should pay attention to this. So let me, even though I just bought Dark Souls 1... Because of uh, once again Noah Caldwell Gervais' video on the Dark Souls uh, trilogy, I just bought that first game based off of that. But I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna have the patience to play through all of that and get into Elden Ring within the same year. So let's jump into Elden Ring, Steam Deck compatible. Let's fucking go. And I couldn't believe once I made that second build and had that second restart, couldn't believe how much fun I was having. It was satisfying. It was gratifying. Um, you know, just exploring the world where I never got the vibe of like, oh man, this feels like such a vast open world full of limitless possibilities that a lot of people have. But I did get a lot of the thing that I found refreshing was okay, here's another dungeon, here's another location. And it felt like in the way where Zelda or you know, more less restrictive open worlds where they're like, Oh yeah, you can go anywhere. And then sometimes you're like, oh, that's the bad part. Let me not go here. Okay, this is the good part. Now I can go here. This felt kind of like that, but in a different way where I felt like everything was lethal. Just because I have never done these Soulsborne games, I was always afraid of them. I was like, everything's lethal. So if I get past anything, it is a blessing. And it wasn't until later when I've been getting past a few things here and there where I start going back to areas where I was getting killed in one shot. And I'm like, wait a second, I can hold my own now. I've either built up the stats or I've built up the skills to know when to dodge, when to block, I can make it through this boss battle. And that just kept compounding and compounding until now I'm 20, 30 hours in, and it's a good 60% chance that a boss battle comes on, and I'm like, all right, let's fucking go. I got this. Like, I am confident now in a way where I didn't think I would ever be. And I know I'm still very early. I know there's apparently a halfway or last third part of the game that is vastly different from the rest of the game so different yes which i understand i will be coming across that soon but um what i've played so far i think is more than enough to know generally what this game's about and i want to play more i'm definitely going to go back to it i once i can get my actual pc running it was running 60 frames per second just flawlessly on my pc i think it's going to be beautiful when i play it there 
And uh, yeah, it's a great game. I understand what people are talking about when they say FromSoft games are good. And once I got enough of Elden Ring, uh, Sekiro's next up on the list. So I'm definitely going to come oh, through these. Oh, baby. So, yeah. So, yeah, oh, I my God. If there's two I can I can beg you to play, it's Bloodborne and Sekiro. Yeah, Sekiro totally. definitely yeah. is difficult, so I won't, I don't blame you if you're like... Yeah, Sekiro oh, is disgustingly difficult. It's I'll the hardest it's, ones in my Sekiro, opinion, by far. It's hard, but what... what the reason I was sold on Sekiro is it's hard in one specific way. It's all timing. Yep. Yeah. So like I I already play enough like co- like action games, parries and such. Like I love a good parry in like a God of War or something. Like I I'm already into that type of stuff, so perhaps that won't bother me too much in Sekiro. The thing I hated about the Dark Souls games for the longest time is like you hit the button and you got to sit there and wait for the animation to play out before you can do anything. There's no animation yeah. canceling, there's no speed, there's no Very it's delivery. all Oh, you you better have timed this shit out because you're gonna miss if you missed it or you better look at their motions blah 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 blah. but Sekiro I can like my hands can make up the gaps in my brain <laughs> yeah. if you're into if you're into Metal Health Slinger you'll probably be into Sekiro because yes, it's it is a kind rhythm. of a rhythm game <laughs> yeah it's secretly a rhythm game like yeah, you, you it, learn it's hell yeah oh my god dude Sekiro is so good yeah Sekiro Bloodborne, oh, man. Bloodborne is yeah, awesome I could talk too. about Elden Ring or Bloodborne a lot but yeah Sekiro I is really really good um, yeah. anyway yeah i'm gl- glad that you came to your senses and you you uh <laughs> yeah, you you gave that a go together. around this because... man really said i never played well i played souls like i played surge 2 i fucking want to punch oh, a wall. The surge play the surge punch two. Punch when atlas rising comes out and everyone's like oh where'd this come from this is great i'm gonna be like you fuckers didn't play the surge 2 you're gonna play be on a mountain <laughs> like yeah i'm gonna be in fucking appalachian mountain near in georgia <laughs> going, hey, play the surge too I don't know where the voice came from, but you get the point. <laughs> I like the voice. I like the voice. I do. Yeah. I do too. I, I won't mention too much because we're going to be talking about it later. Um, I'm sure me and Brandon will be gushing about it. So Indeed. let's go to number four, Brandon. Uh, God of War Ragnarok. Oh, Ooh. oh. Um, we're Killer. in the we're in the lower fives now, which means we're in these the are games game that now. I liked. You know, these are games I enjoyed. I, I had a good time with and I you hated I all the very others. much hated them terrible anything <laughs> past five trash um <laughs> anyway yeah i got a ragnarok was fantastic um i uh, the combat is where i think that game really shines it yes. is it meticulously created and it is uh, there's it's just packed full of different things you can do and different maneuvers and combos and and abilities and skills and all sorts of cool upgrades and other bullshit that you can unlock and and they really sort of take what they were doing in the original god of war and sort of just build on top of that um and i I think that's great um the the story itself bigger crazier uh wackier more 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 characters more everything is bigger and badder you know and and i think that that's great for the most part um I think it had some pacing issues. I think it went on a little long at times. There was some times where I was like, we seem to be going and this is like this offshoot story, you know, that doesn't really pertain to the main thing all that much, which is, is fine. You know, the world building, character building, etc. all that good, all that good stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, overall, fantastic package, impeccably made, really, really fun time all around. Um, I, 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 hmm. Don't really have much bad to say about those games other than I, yeah, I, I think maybe there was a little bit of pacing issues, but I mean, it, it's hard to complain about a game that's so Im- immaculately created and, and, and thought over like that, like that. Hell yeah. I respect that. I respect yeah. that. Of War, like I said, it's, it's a game that I haven't played too much of, but I am just so like, I can't wait to see where the fuck it goes. And I, I'm also falling into that combat loop once again. And also so many more encounters of just Kratos being a good dad now. Like yeah. it's, there's one there's one side mission where a jellyfish is involved. And if you know that side mission, Ooh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one. That side mission just warmed my little heart because it's dead God. ass. Like it reminded me it's beautiful. Very yeah, it's beautiful and it reminded me of a very short story of I'm sure many times have happened where this has happened, but one time me, me and my dad were doing like a marathon, a 5k race and he was exhausted. Like he, he's a little bit heavier at this point. He's fully in dad mode, but I, I hit him on the shoulder as we're crossing the bridge. I'm like, Hey dad, let's see how far my spit goes. If I spit off the bridge. 
And like that little just child innocent thing gave him the like energy and uplifted the spirit that he kept running the rest of the way and didn't oh, stop cool. the walk. So like it's that type of shit where it's like just the cute father shun bond stuff. That side mission reminded me of it, and I'm excited to see more of that type of thing in the game as we as I keep playing. Yeah. So packed yeah, I can see you like it. of that stuff for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, really, really packed the gills with just these these wholesome moments between Atreus and um and and Kratos and and even Kratos and, and other characters. He he softens up a lot in this game. And um, oh yeah, love Man, that. Really, really good stuff. Uh, um, uh, immaculately made. Like I said, it, it's it's a giant, big budget Marvel movie, but it's really well done um, in the way that they do it, and um, lovingly created, and in, in just so many ways. Hell's yeah! Can't wait to play more. Yep, yep. <laughs> we are to our top three of the year, ladies and gentlemen. Da-da. And I'm gonna be honest, my top three is probably the most I've struggled with. Pretty much ever since I started, first off, at, at least making content. And then second off, just making these lists in general. Because I would always do them for fun, but actually making content. This is probably the hardest year I had with my top three, probably. So I went back and forth a lot, and I think at the end of the day, my number three is Horizon Forbidden West. Mm. And it's in between two and three for me, and I feel like it's one of those things, like just my, my top ten, where any given day, I wake up, I think I'm going to want it too. Sometimes I'm going to want it once. I'm going to want it three. A lot of the times I, I'm talking about the side quests and I still can't believe how great they were. And there are the times I'm like, eh, it was fine. And I'm there's just no in between. I think it's just day by day thing. This top three, I'm just, I think I'm just going to cement it. It's number three. I find Aloy an incredibly compelling protagonist. She is so, I mean, cool, first off. Second off, she's so much more than I think what we're used to with these kind of cookie cutter esque protagonists where either they're meant to be the vessel in which you experience the story. So they aren't technically really given anything to do or say, mm-hmm. or they are the, you, you are them. So you make their decisions for them. And Aloy uh-huh. is to me, Aloy. And I love that. I like that. She's become this character to me. I love that. I'm kind of experiencing the world almost through her. I know that sounds kind of strange, but like, I feel like I'm seeing Aloy. You're seeing her perspective. Yes. It, it, hers perspective. Not, Oh, I want Aloy to do this. I'm saying, well, Aloy would probably do this, you know? So mm-hmm. that's something I give a lot of credit to gorilla. That's not something easy, right? You, it's it's hard to develop a such a main character that's that compelling and that that has become such a personified part of the game in mm-hmm. Aloy. And I respect them a lot. And I feel like she should be the new mascot for PlayStation. That's not happening. I think it's Astrobot or whatever. Probably would be Kratos, let's be honest, but... A human I, mascot doesn't sit right with me, but I get the point you're I making. I get it. I mean, Nathan Drake, I think, was the mascot for a long time. Um, Kratos was, but Kratos was like a god more than a person. That's like Samus outside of the suit being a Nintendo mascot. It's like, no, nah, that suit is part of it. Yeah. Or Aloy. It. Yeah. Aloy's just a redhead, but like Astrobot is an entity. <laughs> I get it. Mario I think it's, is Nintendo. Right? Yeah. Like, he's a cartoon plumber. That is a human person. He looks like a person. I thought he was a person until New Donk <laughs> Finney came person. out. And he's clearly yeah, exactly. not a person, so he's some sort like, of alien those, being. Those are specific proportions and a specific art style where Mario is technically a human, but like he don't he's look not. like one. That's true. He's, yeah, he's, he's like, not like he's realistic in any way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'll actually agree with you with Aloy. Like I, I'm right there with you. I like her character a lot. I think her character is Stronger in this one, especially compared to the first game, where I see aspects of myself in Aloy now yeah. that I feel like she was too flat for me to have that happen in the first game. Um, they give her a lot more characters to bounce off of. They give her a lot more information to parse that changes her life and her understanding of what she is, who she is. Um, I love that stuff. And yeah, they do a lot with her. They do a lot with a lot of the characters. There's a character... Uh, I, I'll say I'm going to talk around. This is not a spoiler or anything. I won't even hint at it. There's a character I cosplayed from the first game that 
Oh, when I, no. I went to a convention and no one knew who the fuck I was. Like they everyone not people didn't even know what game I was from. That might be because I did the cosplay poorly. But like one person recognized me and I was like, thank you so much. If I wore that same costume, now that this game has come out, I'd be instantly recognized by anyone who played the game because that character is so much more important now. And not only is it that character is so much more important, all of the side characters feel like they are vitally important yes. in the way where I, I said earlier that, hey, the first game had really cool lore, but the active story wasn't much. The active story in this game goes so hard and it ties into that lore directly in ways that I did not expect. And yep. Yeah, I, I just love it. I just love it so much for that. And it does a lot of cool stuff with characters like you were talking about. And, and I'll say it too, like the story, I, I challenge anyone to say they saw what anything in Horizon coming. I mean, I, I feel like you'd be lying. Like it mm -hmm. is so unique in the way it, it we find everything. It's so unique where first off, how we find the world. Second, how we figure out what happened. And then third, how this other sect of humanity came about in yes. this oh. game and when that you finally so cool. figure out and peel away the layers of lies that is such a cool mm -hmm. story i mean this might be one of the best new sci-fi stories in the last decade probably um, I said I, the first game and now here we are again <laughs> yeah i would, I would say that, that about that not... yeah the the it first is, game it... especially with how they tell you how the it's it was incredible and then w when you figure out who aloy is like oh my god so mm -hmm. cool. and how yeah. it makes the, sense the sci-fi trappings that they have uh, that, that's a, even a bad way to put it because it, it is more than just being a, a setting or a theme you know it's like it's great concepts the, yes the concepts that they're working with are insanely interesting um and, and i think that's what keeps me coming back to horizon and uh, along with i uh, like like you guys are saying aloy being such a, an important and interesting character um i i completely completely agree um i i think she is such a badass like in in so many different ways, you know, other than just killing dinosaurs, robot dinosaurs at that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, like, like I said, the, the concepts that they're working with here are insanely cool. Mixing the prehistoric with the futuristic is just rad mm -hmm. as hell. Yes. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the way that Gorilla is able to pull that off, I think, is is. Um, noteworthy interesting um really really good <laughs> now, and i'd like to also add like, like none of us have talked about this but the gameplay in this game is way better than the first as well where yeah. the first one felt very felt a little basic in its arsenal like yeah you're holding a couple weapons at a time but like okay you got a lance you're throwing javelins you're you got your arrows it felt kind of like obvious for a lot of weaponry here here in the sequel, they have a lot of sequels to that type of weaponry. They expanded a little bit and they have new weapons to the point where fights didn't just feel like I'm running away and shooting. It kind of felt like that improv that, uh, that improvisational feel that I love about something like The Last of Us, where it feels like you're always scrambling to get ready yes. while you're like running from the enemy. Like I love that feeling, and Horizon is just that to a T, where you're like trying to fiddle and craft ammo, so just so you can turn around. And it also has that Ratchet and Clank energy a little bit, where a lot of the weapons are not quite to the same level as Ratchet and Clank, where weapons do entirely different things and have entirely different effects, but they're just distinct enough to where it's like, oh, I'm shooting an arrow, which is pretty basic, or I'm throwing like a Beyblade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and oh, now like I have a yeah. and now mm -hmm. I have a rhythmic attack. Where yes. you throw it, and if you time it right, you'll throw it back and do extra damage. Like that's mm -hmm. so creative. Like, and the um, the throwing spears, where like like you throw it, oh, and it's yeah. like this the giant detonation. Oh yes. my god, it's so yes. cool. And the way and they the the explosive ones are just awesome. They yes. just do crazy they're damage, so and they're strong. awesome. They're so strong. Yeah, they're really um, fun to use. And how addicting it is to be like, oh, I needed. Uh, I forgot I needed the horns from the frog lorns. Oh, well, yep. There's Let me go right there. Some of those. Boop, and you hit the yep. horns, you see the pop, they come out, they hit the ground, the thing starts running away. Like everything yeah. like can happen so fluidly. You can see uh, the animals kind of interact with the environment. And then I've already said this in past podcasts, so forgive me if you've already listened to that. But when 
when you find other tribes and there's a whole subculture like in yes. them. Oh, dude. That is some of the best. I mean, mm-hmm. that is some of the best writing that we've gotten in a very long time where the the the, the, the tribe that carries seeds. I've said this so many times. Oh, yeah. The, the carry the seeds with them. And what that means so, when you figure it out, like they're given mm-hmm. that seed when they're born, the seed, but yeah, you're right. and then when they die, oh my god, it's beautiful. Yeah, it, there's so much. Like that's another thing I love about not just you know Horizon itself, but like the world is just so like. I real. think it's so cool. Like an aspect that people don't talk enough about about the Last of Us lore or the Last of Us, the Horizon lore is that the sins of the past are f- completely wiped away. It is a Noah's Ark situation where yeah. humanity starting from the beginning, but we have no knowledge of what we did in the past. Nothing. And so because of that and the game continues, but because of that humanity is able to start and configure itself in a way that is so idyllic from this point of view, where races, genders, all that shit is just mixed into a pot and it's just out there and there's no separation for any of that stuff. And then on top of that, just Gorilla went ham, like the subtleties and skin tones, like you got all different types of Asians, you got all different types of black folks and specifically in black folks, because that's what I noticed. Like you can tell when someone's like a more North American african-american or are they like from egypt like you can tell that in skin tones in real life and it's not until this game where i could see that in a video game and it's it's very interesting how detailed that was and just how everyone feels like their own person because they get to be their own person because culturally yeah we'll make up all the stuff in the tribe and whatnot but we haven't separated ourselves through race and gender yet so it's like it's just such an idyllic place to visit and it's a place that just gives me I don't know. It just feels like the burdens of current society don't exist in this world to such a degree. And yes, there are still some things that happen in side quests and stuff. But for me, it just feels like a great place to visit because it's just like, yes, everything's not perfect, yeah. but the troubles are so much lesser compared to where we are now. <laughs> it's not yeah. like a god awful dystopia for the most part, you know, like it's not mm-hmm. great, but like, you know, it, it it's it's pretty normal for the most part, you know, like yeah. these people are living like they would live if, you know, we were living in, you know, a thousand, two thousand years away from us or whatever, you know? So, um, exactly. yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree with you guys. Like yeah, on a world building level and in a, the way that they incorporate the characters and, and have them interact with each other, I think is the most interesting part about horizon, you know, um, th- that's what makes it. Other than the robot dinosaurs, of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And also, I, I, one of the few games that I actually read every codex I pick up or a uh, piece of writing, whatever you want to call them in yeah. this game. Audio log, that type of stuff. Audio logs, that stuff. Like when they start detailing pre. Um, I forget. Pre fall. Uh, pre zero dawn, I guess. Um, yeah, pre zero dawn. Yeah, that's right. Um, First off, it's horrific. Some of the stuff you read, like it's really genuinely mm-hmm. terrifying, like water wars, have, literal water wars, like yeah. machines <laughs> killing American civilians for rebel. Like, ooh, it gets real dark. But man, is it good. It reminds me of this is like Mass Effect level of of depth where if you read some of the Mass Effect Codex it is insanely deep and intriguing. And it's like literally like a book inside of a game is is like if you were able to like put all that together it tells a through line story i remember there was like a you can follow like the life of this like a couple of these uh privates and you can find where they like eventually go and die and oh yeah there's like a resource hidden there yeah it's yeah crazy. It's, i mean it's so good i i can't I, this game was great i it in um, unfortunately um it got Drowned out by by the other two games that I'll be talking about, but it's still a great game. I I, I oh. fell in love with the game. The last thing I'll say, uh, under there's an underwater section, one of the greatest oh my like, visual things I've ever seen in my life. When it games happens, otherwise it is so yeah. beautiful. It I yeah. literally paused and was like, I can't handle this. This is so. It's so visually like it's so much that you're like, this is is breathtaking, literally breathtaking. It literally, like, yeah, it, it is. You are playing art. It, that is the closest thing. Like, it feels are, like I'm playing art pieces. There are scenes you come out into that game where it's just like, whoa, like that is mm-hmm. some that's some next gen shit, like for sure. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, even though not, it came out on PS, even though it came out on PS4, it does kind of feel like a PS5 game. 
Like mm-hmm. it feels a little next gen. Good. Honestly, it feels more next gen than God of War did. Um, by yeah, a, by a yeah, lot. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, mm. but yeah, yeah, you know, what? I think I'll leave it there because I could talk about this game all day. Uh, with how it, <laughs> yeah intelligent it was. I, um, I, I I do agree. Yeah, a re- really really fun game. Really really great stuff. Um, a lot a lot to see, a lot to do, a lot to be happy about there. So. Certainly, certainly. Emmett. Emmett oh yeah. Please. Uh, uh, number three um speaking of some of the most beautiful games we've ever seen speaking of insane just expansive worlds speaking of uh wonderful characters wonderful performances this is pretty much everything that the highest budgets in gaming can get you my number three is vampire survivors (laughs) oh my god (laughs) nice (laughs) yeah um vampire survivors is um is a gem for sure it it is it it is genre defining i would say um Mm -hmm. and it is um impeccably designed Mm -hmm. yeah it is it is it's impeccably designed but like it is absolutely you can see where this game could have turned insidious because so much about this game like literally they've talked to uh one of the developers like the main developer of the game He has a background in working on like slot machines and that type of software. So he has a very deep understanding. Yeah, he knows like, let's get these bright colors. Let's get these numbers. Let's get a bunch of chaotic shit happening on the screen. And people want to roll that roulette wheel. That makes sense by by how people got massively addicted to this game now. Exactly. Even when you you pick up chess, it rules like a roulette, you know, like it'll... it'll, (laughs) Yeah, even using like the gem terminology of also from uh you know arcade or gambling machines and such. You, like you brought up the chest analogy, you're like wow, that makes so much sense because I remember picking things up. I'm like Jesus, why is it so bombastic when I pick things up? Yeah, they want to tr- they want to trigger the monkey brain that we have. Exactly, like, bright light, good, bright light, good, keep going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the game is it's it's one of the only games I've seen where it's designed around that, but it isn't taking advantage of you because there is a there's a universe in which this game is free to play you would pay for yes. each and every character yes you would pay for each and every upgrade yep. there's a world where they would nickel and dime the hell out of you for this game this game was an early access for four bucks and then when it finally released it was five the dlc came out at the end of the year three dollars that and DLC what was drop awesome was nuts. And what yeah. was awesome was nuts. when they released it, they were like, "We're sorry, it's exorbitantly priced." And then you go and look at it; it's three dollars. <laughs> like, I love them. Exactly. And then on top of that, they made a mobile phone version so people could play this whenever. The mobile phone version has no way to pay for it. It just plays an ad after each death, and that's it. That's you can't beautiful. spend money on this if you want it to. So, like, it is. They have taken the most chaotically good route possible with this game. And on top of that, the game's just fantastic. And also another thing where you might think, okay, they don't want you spending a bunch of money, but they're going to get you playing it forever. They limit your sessions to 30 minutes. If you get a perfect run where you're just That's killing right, everything yes. and you're just an uh, unstoppable monster of death, they cap you at 30 minutes and then it pushes you back to the start screen. Which is so cool. Like, like literally the Grim Reaper comes and kills you. That's uh, it's so cool. It happened to me yeah, once. Yeah, there's, I was like, there's Whoa, no that's way cool. to get around the death in the game. Yeah. You know, like you will die at some point. I, I like that too. There's there's a gameplay reason for the timer ending, you know, yeah. like mm-hmm. I like that exactly. um, instead of like, it just being over, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as someone I, I talked about earlier with Marvel Snap, I don't have great impulse control. So it's great that a game that you? tickles that little small. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so impressive that a game that's specifically designed to tickle that very harmful part of my brain also has things built into it to not ruin my life. And I so appreciate that. But then the actual parts that are there to tickle that part of the brain are great. Like, I love getting these upgrades. You know, I, I, I figured out I like roguelikes a lot. But this is, it's one of those, I like the numbers going up games, you know, like your cookie clickers and whatnot. But instead of cookie clicker, which is just strictly idle, you just sit there clicking, you watch the numbers go up and there's no gameplay other than that. You're having to judge, okay, do I go around this way? Do I go around this way? There's an obstacle here. This enemy might take a lot to kill. So do I want to get close with my garlic with them? Or do I want to stand back and hopefully the electric can hit them? Like it's a lot of choices to make and strategy, but it's never overwhelming it's a very easy, it's a great podcast game, easy to relax to. Been playing it on Steam Deck. That's like my main platform for this game. 
Um, Vampire Survivor is just so great, and it upsets me that it's been getting snubbed so many places uh, where everyone's tried it, everyone's played it, everyone kind of gets it, but because it's not the indie darling of Immortality or Tunic or the mega AAA Elden Ring or God of War, it's neither of those. It is like one thing done perfectly, but it's a very small thing, so people aren't taking it quite seriously, but I want to be bold. It's my number three. I like it more than Elden Ring, goddammit, and it deserves your $5 or your Game Pass visit. It's on Game Pass. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it truly is the the, uh, the the working man's video game, I yeah, think. It, 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 is. It is, it, it's, it's so much value it. and time for your money spent, and they respect the hell out of that. And If you're a gambling addict, pick this up that. and don't gamble. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. to actually, you probably could yeah. get away with that. Honestly, it is insanely addictive. So I wonder. I'd be curious if this would actually stave gambling addiction or something. Yeah, I feel like it's my thinking it, it might make it, it worse. Like, I don't know. How do you say talking. nicotine free cigarette? This, this is yeah, that version. That's what I'm saying. Like this is like <laughs> totally, yeah. This is this is like smoking just nicotine without all the like rest of the shit. Like, um, I I, I my stepmom does that where like she'll have a, a thing where it's like flavored and it just has nicotine so she doesn't smoke cigarettes anymore. Like maybe yeah. this is that version, like you said, and it's just yeah, it's like the the vape of video games. The... <laughs> yes, <laughs> vape pyre survivors. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. my god I, 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 want, I want to play it some more for sure but I, I definitely just I did feel a little left out because everyone loves this game so much and I'm just like hey, it's not bad it's good it's great even it's amazing honestly it's just, once this I'm, podcast is done and edited just play this podcast and just play Vampire Survivors for the four hours it'll take for this show to end to, yeah, to <laughs> render for sure we've been going hard yeah <laughs> I appreciate cool. you guys sticking around you know, oh yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely now please Brandon Oh, uh, so uh, I have already gushed enough about this oh, game yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, honestly, right. not um, much to say here. He, but he, my he, number three is Immortality. Yes, yes. Oh my god, this. Uh, love that game. We it was amazing. It, yeah. Oh my god. It, it almost, I would argue, it almost doesn't even count for this year because I played it quite literally the last weekend of the year. But um, okay. I'm gonna, Fine. I'm doing it anyway. Amazing video game. God damn, you should definitely spend the time to play Immortality. It rules. I will say, as a little peek behind the curtain, I wanted to, I was playing Marvel Midnight Suns to try and beat it before this podcast. And I was going to mention on the air, be like, look, I'm cheating, but I didn't make the video yet. So I feel like I, I, I had an opening. <laughs> I beat it like 24 hours ago, but I just didn't make it. It's so fucking long. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god! I don't. I don't blame you. I do not blame you at all. Um, especially Midnight Suns. I've heard is 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 a trek. So, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, great stuff. Num- number three, immortality, kills it. Number bingo, bingo. two for me. God of War Ragnarok. All right. What a all great right. game! <laughs> great what stuff. a great game! It's incredible. Um, since there's, I'll get to. What makes it great? But for one second, I'm going to put the reason why it fell to two. And honestly, the reason it might have even have felt fallen to three. Mm. A tr- uh, Atreus. Yeah, Atreus. Does some fuck shit. Yeah, Atreus <laughs> does some stuff. I'm not going to spoil yeah. it here. <laughs> but there's a section involving Atreus. And the whole time I'm like. I could be getting the good shit, though. Yeah, yeah, Do you, I feel that. And every time that happens, I go, look, I love the New York strip. But the filet oh. mignon and ribeye is much better, right? Okay. We can all agree, all right. right? I'm, I get the look, point you're making. Both yeah. are incredible okay. steaks. Okay. Both are really good. But if you expect a filet mignon and you're given a New York strip, it's not going to taste as good, right? Yeah, can well, can I ask something real quick? Please. You in the times where I've had New York strip, usually the filet mignons in the freezer anyway, so it wouldn't really you'd have to sit there and thaw it out before you got to eating it. Mm. Are there moments where you're eating the New York strip, but the filet mignons like fresh out the skillet and you're like, oh, shit, I could have been eating that. Are there moments like that? I would. No. I, I mentioned earlier. I mentioned earlier mm. that there might be some pacing issues yes. with this oh, game. Um, okay. And 
I mean, yeah. When it happens, like, it's intriguing is the problem. The it story is. isn't the issue. It's pushing the for the story forward and you're you're forming those character bonds, which is great. Um, but yeah, like once again, I, I agree with you. You're constantly you're thinking like I could be Kratos, though. So, yeah. You know? It could be mm-hmm. way um, fucking better. <laughs> like, another thing yeah. that 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 kind of tickled my brain a little bit when I was I was playing this and, and doing this is I was thinking, what comes after this? Exactly. Because uh, eventually we're going to get to the end of this game and something's going to happen to Kratos. He'll either, you know, be alive or he won't. Right. And then what's next? Like, does Atreus do his own thing? Do we get an Atreus video game? Do we get another God of War game? And what what is Kratos doing after this? Like, like he's uh, Brock and Sindri, uh, Kanan Lynch, spiritual successor. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a heist game. Yes. Featuring... <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite dwarfs have gone bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, and yeah, just, like it blurs yes, ahead. I, I mean, I mean, a great game, amazing. I, I, I think there is some pacing issues, and and I was, I was constantly thinking the whole time, like, what is gonna happen next? Where are they going? Like, where does this go? And it is my kind of takeaway. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I, I can see where you definitely come from with that, and I also un- understand why people just didn't fully vibe with other people. I, I know a lot of people were saying like, "Oh, this is a masterpiece." I understand if you if you didn't love it as well, especially given some of the reasons that I think the game kind of falls flat sometimes. But I think overall, it's a masterpiece uh, for the eyes, the hands when you're playing the game. I mean, the combat is. I mean, I does it get better than this? I don't know. There's things that happen in this game that I just can't spoil, but like. <laughs> when certain things happen, I'm like, this is fucking cool. Like, it's just cool. Like the things that are going on, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. Uh, the, it is the, top the tier entertainment. It, yes. is, it is. It is a popcorn movie at the fullest extent. Yes. Um, and I will say one thing, and I and I apologize if it's too much of a spoiler. I feel like it isn't because it's. I think it's obvious. What's it be for me? I don't think so. I've only seen the black girl once. I'm in the first part of that. I'm not saying that. That's pretty early. No, no, no. Nothing, okay. nothing, nothing about that. that. Okay. All I right. will. I will say that. You know what? I'll leave it. I won't say it. Actually, I don't think it's okay. a spoiler, but I actually don't want to risk it just in case. Okay, um, fair I actually said this on a prior podcast. So if you had listened to my prior thoughts on God of War, you understand the word that I want to say. Um, and that is actually a detriment, in my opinion. Mm. It it just it. Feels like you can kind of figure it out what's going on. I'll okay. leave it at that. I'll leave it. That at was that. I, I've heard of other a couple other people like um, reference this game close to being something like a Marvel movie where it's like high, high you know high entertainment value, like not deep really, but you know big and and grandiose and and large and exciting, and um, I, I think it does that really 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 well you know while while you're not t- going i'm not you know coming away from god of war thinking like you know what does it mean to be a person you know like <laughs> yeah, like my- why why do i exist you know but like it, it it's more of like a um you know like it's just like a fucking good time super fucking good time yeah really really fun and um the dialogue I will say when people if if someone said that to me, I, my re- retort will be the dialogue. And again, I'm not spoiling it because the some of the dialogue in this game between a few characters is some of the best shit. Fuck, I mean, ever sure. I, ever put in a game, I will remember a specific thing said near the end of the game. Possibly until I die, because it oh, is so shit. deep in having a recent death in the family that is that specific thing hit very hard mm. um and i just have trouble with death in general so hearing that almost made it feel better feel that uh, as someone who has also experienced a death recently um and with the strong fathered uh, son elements that was that was a, a a big one for me so i'll give you that i'll give you that i believe both of you <laughs> Emmett. I will take your word for it. Huh. Number two. 
Number two, um, you want to talk about emotional stories that really hit you in the core. You want to talk about games that are just giving you the the most entertainment value money can buy. You want to talk about games that are just drop dead gorgeous, 60 frames, 4K, all that good stuff. This is one of the most transcendent games of our generation. Kirby in the Forgotten Lake. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking fantastic. Oh, my God. I invited God. who on these podcasts? The, fuck the was God I Killer, bro. <laughs> the God <laughs> Killer. <laughs> From now on, when I say Kirby, I'm going to say Kirby the God Killer. <laughs> yep, absolutely. He's the, sure, he's the, sure. the pink badass. Yeah, he's got their ears on a necklace like Daryl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God ears. Um, actually, that that goes hard as a name. I'll think that, about that later. That God does ears. go pretty hard. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, shout out. That's a new Metallica album. God ears. Um, God ears. <laughs> anyway, Korean Forgotten Land. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but um, it was just so cozy. That I literally, it it took me a while to really be obsessed with the game because, like a lot of people have complained. It doesn't start off slow, but it starts off very safe, very mundane. It is, if you've seen a Kirby game in 2D, it is the 3D version of those Kirby games for the first few hours. It is very much so simple, swallow whatever enemy you want, turn into them, have some fun. You find a couple secrets here and there, but it is very cozy. It is very heartwarming. Kirby is so unrelentingly cute that that carried me through those first few hours like just even when you like get the little collectibles and you go into the little coin machine and it's just kirby on the edge of the table just staring just affectionately at the little uh, character he's unlocked it's like it's so cute it hurts and that got me to begin with but then the more i kept playing the more you're upgrading these abilities because yes kirby you can swallow any of these enemies and oh you swallow a fire enemy now you have fire you can shoot fireballs um you got a, a a ranger enemy that has like a musket you swallow them you have a musket you can upgrade all these abilities to the point where they get insane that that character with one musket you can upgrade them now they have dual wielding muskets and the, and then you can get even crazier like the flame guy I told you where you can throw fireballs you can turn into a fireball and just like push yourself forward a little bit and fly there's like, and you turn into like a dragon on the third evolution of that as well. There's one that's called, I think it's called Time Crash. Literally, it's the most anime ass ability I've seen in a game that isn't really technically anime or whatever. It's literally like Kirby will pause time, and then whatever Kirby touches while time is paused will just like do that thing. Like, have you ever seen? I'm gonna use a weird reference. You ever seen Crime Stop or not Crime Stop? Clock Stoppers, the Nickelodeon original movie. <laughs> It's basically that where uh, like the whole point yes. of the movie. Good on you for having a, a memory of that. Um, they would stop time and they would like manipulate people while time stopped. And in real life, they'd be like getting fucked up. Um, it was that. So like Kirby will just like touch an enemy and they'll like go flying off, but time will still be paused. Then as soon as like the bubble comes back and time's restored, once it all hits Kirby again, they all just go flying and explode. It is the for our modern thing. audience. X Men Quicksilver. Yeah, even <laughs> yeah, could have just said a the much movie. more yeah, known good. movie. I like uh, but Nick, you... Nickelodeon Time Splitters, though. That's no, 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 no. I see. I like, I like it because that is the most Emmett thing possible. He referenced yeah. a Disney yeah, Channel original Quicksilver. movie instead of a <laughs> Nickelodeon. Movie everyone would know. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Believe it or not, I watched that movie like three or four years ago actually because i had remembered it and i was like oh shit i should rent this on on uh, youtube and it was terrible she loves these fucking (laughs) uh yeah zeta the warrior queen or whatever the hell she told me about zena yeah Hmm. oh xenon yeah xenon you talking about the barbarian one or the future one Yes. In any oh, case, Zeon, Zeon, Zeon the the twenty first century girl. That's what we're sure, talking about here. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I thought that was. Uh, I was thinking of Zoe one hundred one. I'm getting it confused with Zoe one hundred one, which is great. also a, a TV show. Yeah, I loved Zoe. Um, too many white girls on TV. Anyway, yeah, too many. True, 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 true. Uh, no nonsense. We've been here for a while anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, Kirby Forgotten Land. Uh, those first few hours, the cuteness kind of held me up. But once you get past a certain point where things just get crazier and crazier, the abilities get more insane. And by the end, like like we 
fight God. And it's not a simple, oh, let's go. It is, there are quick time events. There's one of these things where you're just pressing the button a bunch, just trying to finish the quick time event. And it's really high stakes. And you're like, oh shit, this is crazy. It and it's like, just that. very explosive towards the end. Um, do you yeah, eat oh, God? Dude, that, that's, that moment is so cool. You don't Agreed. eat it God. Rules. Oh, that's like, yeah, yeah, you don't. You, you actually it, crash into him with a bus. <laughs> yeah, or an uh, eighteen wheeler. <laughs> yes, right, right. yes, or an eighteen wheeler. Yeah. <laughs> crash into him with a bus. <laughs> yeah, that's enough to kill it's him. Really great. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah you, you fucking them off. You 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 run you run them the fuck over yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> just beat the shit out of God. From a side. <laughs> <laughs> I just pictured God it's coming great. out. It's like I am your God. Oh shit! Ah, oh, stop! Spawn <laughs> <laughs> the fucking fucking lot. <laughs> he gets pancaked it's a, pretty hard. It's for a sure. Waffle House equivalent <laughs> of fighting video. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> did in the video. Um, Shout yeah, out to Waffle kids. House Girl. Yeah, we all love she you. Waffle House Girl. They should give you. We all love back. you. We yeah, all give her a job cool. back. What the fuck? She. Yeah, she that, didn't fight her. A... Yeah, she deflected the attack. Like, what's oh, up with like that? A badass. Um, it... So cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, definitely. She's gonna get hired at IHOP after this. Is fine. Totally. Yeah, um, totally. totally. Denny's yes. got her number, bro. Denny's got her hooked up for sure. They're about to call her like the Avengers. We like talking about it. <laughs> <That's simple>. um, <laughs> we got downtown Eddie, Atlanta. We need Kirby's you Kirby's great. Yeah, Kirby's exactly. great. Exactly. Kirby's cool. Yeah. Um, I love Kirby. It's great. Everything we said about it beforehand is still true. Uh, it made me... This is the first Nintendo franchise that has always been a Nintendo franchise that I can wholeheartedly say I love. And that takes a lot considering how shit the Switch is. So mm. here we are. Hallelujah. It's true. It's true. Technically Please. Speaking. Number two. Pentiment. Oh, a very okay. late title. I yeah, love it. I was, I've been holding that one close to my chest this whole time. You um, have. If there's, if there's anything better than immortality, it's a pentiment. Holy oh, right. goddamn shit. I have not played what this a, game. What a fucking video game, dude. Josh Sawyer crushed it. Obsidian absolutely fucking destroying it over there oh my What's... god I, I i should preface this with saying i'm a huge obsidian fan yeah huge arcane studios fan any, you have taste. anything like that mm. all of my that's my jam bro and so yeah obsidian heard they're making this game called pentiment actually my my ex co uh co-host on my my podcast uh jess got me super onto this um so shout out to jess and uh oh my god I don't even know where to begin with this game. It, it, you're solving mysteries. You're doing RPG stuff. You're uh, talking to people and and living your best life in in this Renaissance era, historically accurate, fictional, uh, amazing. Oh my god, it's really really cool. You guys should play it. It's I, I guess, no, seriously with, like with it's this, so awesome. This high, I'm definitely um, going to be playing the game. Um, um I. I, yeah. I it, it's even uh, once again it's one of those games it's hard to speak too much past yeah. like kind of surface level stuff because as soon as you start doing that you start getting into spoilers and stuff but seriously mm-hmm. please 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 play pentamin oh my god definitely not enough love out there right now um really really good video game that i i, I got my girlfriend into it uh, and, and and we we both were just obsessed with it for for a good you know, couple weekends, and um, it literally have not stopped talking about it since then. Um, my God, awesome, awesome video game, really, really good. Okay, all right, I'm definitely gonna be looking into this. It was one of the games where I started, and literally, when I mean started, I turned it on and like I think played ten minutes or something. I'm gonna just restart it when I get back to it, but it's one of the for games sure. where I'm like, ooh. This is I feel like this is going to be like something I want to just play. And I was playing Midnight Suns and I was like, I don't really want to like jump back and forth. I feel like I'm going to mess with one other one of the other games. So I was like, once I finish Midnight Suns, right into Pentiment, I go. Bingo, bingo. I, I'm very yeah. excited to try it out. I've heard glowing stuff, but like you said, not that much. I feel like it had a big pop when it released. Totally. And then everyone just stopped talking about it, I feel like. 
it's yeah i think it's less that it had a big pop at release and it's more that like it got great reviews at release and so everybody was like oh fuck maybe i should play it oh, oh we're not actually gonna play it because it's still an obtuse subject matter <laughs> yeah it's That's still true. it's still out i there gotta sure, read yeah. Yeah, lots mm-hmm. of uh, that. That is one thing. If you're not into playing games that are all about reading, like maybe this is. I was thing, hoping you were gonna say, if you're not into reading, you're not. If gonna you're not read. into reading <laughs> words, then this may not be your thing. But um, genuinely, I, 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 I would even go as far to say, like anybody who likes playing video games should play this game. At least the try. way they, the way they handle things, and and drive you through the story in a very mechanical way uh awesome 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 stuff so yeah i'll wait until they do a pentiment definitive edition with all the microsoft money behind it but then get voice acting just like just say pentiment ultimate <laughs> there edition go. there we go <laughs> bingo is that what you just said yeah pentiment definitive edition i'm not saying it's an announcer is going to be the announced but like penultimate <laughs> edition oh my Yay! god he said it boom bam Damn, Penta lit. Pence, <laughs> more like Penta. Anyways, more like pe- Penta. Uh. Don't get yourself pent out of shape. It's fine. Oh damn! Yep, there we go. Pensing on. Um, I'm going to I'm say up. the number one because I am pent up, and I'm finally gonna say what it is. I've been dancing um, around it, but it's, Elden Ring. It's Elden it's, Ring. It's time. Wait, I'm, it's not the Bratz game. It's oh, it should be the Bratz game. It should be the Bratz game, right? It, no, it's Sonic <laughs> Frontiers. That is my number one game of 2022. Why are you guys? Hey, talking? actually, uh, honorable right, mention. Junior. Honorable mention goes out to Sonic Frontiers. Yeah, please get that shit out of my face. It is Elden Ring. Elden yes. Ring shocked. I'm sure everyone is. I'm not very original. Yes. This top yes, three, I'm sure, is half of the industries, but. Uh, what can I say that has already been uh, been said? What 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 can I say? That has it's the best Legend of Zelda times. game ever created. It's better than any Zelda game ever made, easily. How about that? Um, it, what it else can I say? Maybe make the best mad? one of the best games I've ever played in my entire life. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's, it's probably good. one of the oh, okay. Well, Emmett, <laughs> <laughs> number four, baby. <laughs> Vampire Survivors number three. I like walking around. Oh, uh, the guy who put Horizon at eight. I also feel like a loser, so no. Worries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll talk about that coming up. <laughs> number one, Elden Ring. From the narrative that I guess doesn't exist, according to some people, very confusing. Um, uh, to the subtle storytelling in some of. Uh, the items to the brand new worlds that we keep finding ourselves in with the FromSoft games. Um, I feel like a lot of people get confused because they because since there are people in the game, they think it's like, oh, this is like our world. Like you really do have to go into this like this is this is a Lord of the Ring esque moment. Like this is all new stuff. So like you got to come at it with like you got to like figure out all right, what's the greater will? What are the uh? Uh, what is the Erd tree? Where does that come from? Like all these little things that are so fascinating. The lips of iridescence. Lots of fingering yeah. going on in that There's game. So many fingering. So yeah. much fingering. Yeah. There are finger readers. So people, while they're fingering, they're being read. Oh yeah. Um, they read the fingers, mm. uh, and that tells. That's the reading. Way. I don't mind. Yeah, fingering <laughs> reading. I love it. Anyway, uh, Elden Ring. Uh, from the combat to the. And beautiful, I mean, the environments. Every now and then, you just kind of stop and look around, and you're like, wow. To the subtle way they direct you, right? Uh, I think um, Emmett mentioned it earlier, right? He went to a place, he was way too over level or under leveled. So he went to something else, he came back, yeah, he could hold his own now, and he can now venture into that place and figure out what's new there. And the twist that I'm not going to ruin here. But the twist with two different ways the twist happens with your map is. I mean, like, yeah, when you think you've experienced the game, it keeps surprising you. And that is the best way I can put it, if you will. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) It's uh, it is. It is. It's pretty lit. It's pretty Um, lit. All all right. Anyways, um, I I don't fully understand this reference, but (laughs) it's so lit. It is. Um, but 
to getting to the nitty gritty of, of when you get to a certain culture that delves somewhere around um, things like Kalid and when you go to places like uh, the Halleck Tree, when you fight play, uh, people like um, Millennia, like all these memorable pieces of the game, uh, when you figure out who Marika was, when you get to that part that that preludes the final boss and the fucking music starts playing, man. And then when you figure out what the final boss is, they have the music for that. It is transcendent. Yep. I agree. I agree. With I would agree. With how you. the music is overlaid throughout combat, throughout your world, throughout the individual boss battles that you're doing. You're making and me want to play Elden Ring right now. Dude, I, I, got, I, I was uh, uh, reading some more lore about it because I just love reading about the, the game. I got into like a, a new fix and I'm like, I'm I'm going to go play some Elden Ring. I, I definitely am. Once I finish Midnight Suns, I'm going to probably play a little bit of Elden Ring and go to Pen Enemy. But uh, back to Elden Ring. The side quests in the game, the various characters that you meet, the... I mean... The game is so sad because this horrible thing has happened and you got to you have to stop it or or not stop it. It's up to you on on how on how you think this should end. This this kind of place should uh should stop. And I understand a lot of people's problem with the game that it's not very direct with the storytelling, but I implore people to at least try to put a little extra effort into listening to what people say when they direct you somewhere go there and see where's around and in every now and then it's one of my favorite moments when i'm walking around I'm like oh i remember that the character said that his daughter was sick and was stolen by this band of people that worship her because they think she's like a goddess because she has this rare illness like you go there and you find her and you talk to her and she needs this thing you go you heal her then she like goes and does her own quest line you follow her to her inevitable conclusion like stuff like that is mm -hmm. why i love this game and i love that people found from soft the amount of people who have played this game is eclipses all the other from soft games and i like that a lot of people had the um goal to give it a give it a shot because it's it's intimidating it's it's a little scary right like all you hear is people being like yeah it's so hard or i beat it but i i did it with no hit but whatever and at the end of the day it's not it's that a, hard it, it's it, become it's, a cultural phenomenon like it is it's it like oh I sure, it's dark crazy. Souls. It, like it's it's become a thing that you say in, in gaming culture and i'm so glad that more people got to try it and more people felt that they should try things because it at the end of the day, it is a great story. It is a great environment. And some of the stuff is is like but like narratively and um environment and then the overall world building is on par with something we'd see out of fucking Tolkien. Yeah. And I'll it's, leave it uh, at that. I mean you got you got George Railroad Martin on board on that. Go you know, George but, hey, Railroad close Martin. To it. Did a I mean, good job. Yeah, he he clearly had influence, you know, in, in yep. the way the world is built and, and the way far, that, that's all set up. So as far as I understand, he wrote the the stuff that happened like five thousand years before this. So like ah, the, the sure. crazy stuff with the um I think the outer gods he had like some help with and then the way he did the dragon rebellions and all I think he did all that stuff. I, I don't remember. I think that's they're right. they, yeah, they haven't it, talked it, too much about right. what he actually wrote. Yeah, I'd be curious to know like what he put his hands on, you know. There, um, there was one I think uh interview he did on Colbert that he said mm. he wrote all the like when he was approached, he they wanted him to write the stuff that happened five thousand years prior or something like that. So that means he they wrote like the dragons, uh, the Great March, and like all that. Crazy a lot of the stuff. lore that goes yeah. behind like the, what the, we see in the yeah game. the crazy yeah. lore that happened like way before the game. Well, really quick, I'll, I mean, I'll get it out of the way just because this is also my number one. So oh, we can okay, get okay. M, M yes. at the stage here uh, yes. after this. Um, but yeah, um, absolutely adore Elden Ring. Oh, my God. Um, I, I, the, the, 
well, like we were talking about earlier, how like you remember, uh, you you hear these old, older guys saying like, you know, back when Zelda first came out, I would draw the map and yeah. write notes and 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 all this Very stuff and, and just and like it, it was this mystery to them, this huge mystery about you know what exists out there, and like Elden Ring has that feeling, you know, like of the unknown in the mystery and and how it unfolds you it is a we were also saying this earlier it, about another game being a video game ass video game and like this is the most video game video game there is like every single thing services the gameplay and the gameplay services everything else and it is this perfect balance of the whole game existing inside being a game and 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 all all of the parts of the game reach other parts of the narrative and in the characters in the world and like it's a work of art it's beautiful it, it is it is it is one of the best games ever made it is something that i think if you like video games in any way shape or form you should probably at least attempt to play elden ring um it is really fucking good so. Yeah, my dad played this game, which shocked me. I was like, "You played Holy shit. what?" Like, and he got—he didn't just play it; he played this game. He like beat it like five times or something. Like he, he like That's kept playing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, it, it has it play? has that that draw to it. Yeah. It, is, it is it is beyond oh, this, the this game. I'll try a magic build games. and like this yeah. game. You know, it has all this replayability where it feels like almost a different game when you play it in front of us because there's so much other shit you can do. Like there's quests that you might have missed. That you can do on totally. a second character. There's things that you do that will lock you out of other quests. So you have to pick which one you'll do. So next time you play, you can try something else and, and do a little things differently. And of course, there's just like with the Dark Souls games, there's the endings with this game where they're all different. And technically FromSoft does does that just period. Where like there's multiple endings and that's a different way you can play the game. So I love it. The It's an RPGs video game too. Like you said, it, it, and this will, I think, influence game design for the next decade plus with yeah. the the way it subtly points you these sites. That get, I hope everyone likes Sites of Graces, because I really do think people are going to look at that and be like, wait, we can have things that narratively make sense in the world, but also work as a gameplay mechanic to pilot the uh, player. Like that is incredible. Like if achievers, if you don't know, each it's side of grace, it's basically like a, a checkpoint. It's like it's like doing it's it's like taking checkpoints to a whole new level. I guess yeah. um, checkpoint and a signpost in one. Yeah, it's a yeah, sign, It's absolutely. literally a signpost. Like it points to another side of grace, so it will always point you to a new thing, and you'll be able to, to investigate the everything. Right way. It's brilliant. That whole game tugs on you in every direction constantly. I didn't um, even I mention the that's... dungeons, by the way, with which is like oh yeah, the, classic the, the, from the soft design. Too. You you roll in, just roll into, you know, yeah. like uh, amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> One of my favorite oh, bosses yeah. is actually. Uh, it's just beautiful, and I'll end it with this. Uh, it's something called the ancestral spirit, where I, I almost weeped while fighting this thing because it's. It had that it's kind that of beautiful. It's just that beautiful. It had that effect that Shadow of the Colossus kind of had at me where like this mm. kind of docile creatures and i have to fight them and it feels almost wrong doing it because i'm so invested in the world i had that feeling like i was kind of weeping when i had to like fight this thing and it was so beautiful and it was like literally it was like fighting art like like the way it moved and danced and did these intricate abilities it was the way it got it was, jiggy with it i understand the way it, yeah, the way it did the the cha-cha slide like <laughs> i've talked enough that bit. Um, oh boy let's leave it with your number one of course we heard it before but please tell us again uh it's a game we've talked about two separate occasions now um and i already said it once so yeah let's just say it's horizon forbidden west my favorite game of the year and now i'm going to explain why specifically i like it over everything else because i've talked a lot of reasons why i like it this is the only game this year that did everything I'm looking for, where we've talked about, you know, we've talked about all the games on my list, like Kirby to Forgotten Land, just so comfortable, so cozy. I love it because it's just a nice, welcoming game and a nice, welcoming environment. 
And I've talked about how Horizon has that same feeling in a different way where it is so diverse. It is so, especially being so close to nature, it just feels like a welcoming world that just wants you to live in it and to just exist in it more than it wants you to just run through and do all the content. So it just felt like a very welcoming world to be in. Um, I've talked about Elden Ring. It was cool exploring and all that stuff. I think exploring was more engaging in Horizon. And I understand a lot of people disagree because, you know, oh, there's an icon here, icon there. At a certain point, Horizon is so good about the variety of icons where, yes, you know you're going to go to a tall neck sinking point, but you don't know how that's going to play out. Because rarely does it ever work out the way you expect it, where you're like, okay, I'm going to climb this tall neck, hack into its head, get all the stuff in the area, and we win. Most of the time, it's, oh, the tall neck's broken, so now i got to like repair it. Or, oh, the tall neck's underground, so I have to do this whole underground dungeon just to get to its head. Or, oh, i got to do this. So yes, icons are always going to tell you what the goal is. You never know how you're getting to that goal. Even with like the little holiday globes that you collect as well same same thing oh my god the holiday globes i forgot about that it's, that was another fun uh collecting mm-hmm. one um yeah damn it you're about to say something yeah oh uh, yes um uh i don't know what they did to specifically the um long necks but mm-hmm. they feel alive and yeah. i actually felt sad when i found one trapped and like, mm-hmm. I really wanted to save it. I was like, oh, no, it, it's trapped. It, it shouldn't be like laying down. Mm-hmm. We got to we got and, and, and I, I don't know. It, it's so strange how that one thing and I, I, I don't really feel that super much about any of the other ones for some reason. Maybe it's because we have this kind of symbiotic thing going on where I help it a little bit. And no, it's not symbiotic. I, I forget the yeah. word where both it's mutual, but mutual. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's just it, mutual help like i help it and i get its little sync thing Mm -hmm. but i'll say the main reason i think they feel more alive in this game is because you're not catching them in the same state all the time in that Mm. first game they were just walking around in one circle and you just had to figure out where in that path did you hop on it it just felt like the robot it is um where in this game they are in different situations they are in different states of repair there's one where like it's not even broken it's just not fully built yet so you have to go oh, through this right cauldron. oh my god yeah. about that yeah, yeah. i forgot you have about to go that this cauldron and like get its pieces back together and then you end up with it coming to the ground and that is like right next to the underwater sequence we talked about earlier that is another scene where i had to pause and just i was overwhelmed again i'm like this game is just so fucking beautiful the other scale that they show off there is Mm -hmm. awesome in fact i i want to go out and say that the the way that they're purveying scale um in games nowadays is really cool like god of war does this a lot too where like things are monstrous you know yeah. and like just so much bigger than you like it's it's crazy to think that it even exists you know and and e- even like how like you know like some characters are taller than you or shorter than you, you know it's like you notice that and, and like how that i don't know just plays into these characters interacting with each other is it, a very interesting thing to do and you didn't get to see that a lot until kind of where we're at now with graphics being so fucking nuts as they are like just the scale of things is, is becoming such a, a mechanic a gameplay hook in and of itself you know mm-hmm. exactly so yeah all that stuff is just beautiful about this game i i love the way like i said elden ring was so cool for the exploration horizon hit that exploration button even more with stuff like the scale with stuff like the beautiful things hidden around every corner uh, I talked about, you know, Shadow Warrior 3. You know, I love just getting the very simple combat and I love upgrading as well. Like you're always collecting something that's an upgrade for your character, or your guns. And Horizon, all about upgrades where you're yeah. you're getting a rank for your skill tree to its or detriment, your detriment, I would say sometimes. Say again? I, oh, I said to its detriment sometimes. Oh, yeah. So I can understand I that because I, commi- first- I committed massacres mm-hmm. on woodland creatures to get like a new fucking belt or something. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, yeah. we could have we could have halved all this. I feel like the like, amount I, of materials that you collect is I killed too many a bunnies. little crazy. But um, mm-hmm. I mean, it does capture that whole idea that you're like you're hunting different yeah. creatures, you're you foraging, know, foraging. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Foraging, hunting different things for various oh, pelts or whatever the fuck you're getting you know mm-hmm. and i will give yeah. it to them they actually gave you th- uh, this one a little bit more identity where in the first one you were just kind of playing the game and this one they're like 
do you want to be a trapper? Do you want to be a like uh I forget the other ones, shocker, There's I like think is one of them. One, like they have a Stealth, bunch of different like yeah. shadow not, yeah, they don't outright give you classes you have to choose, but like Correct. you can pick yeah. your gear into certain yeah. directions where like, yeah. like you want to do like yeah. all traps, this will boost your traps and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or you want to just be really fast and just slink around and use this very fast bow with this armor. Or if you want to be stealth, you can use this long range bow with this armor. That's going to give you a stealth bonus. Like they do a lot of stuff there and it doesn't fall into the trap of something like a Borderlands where a million guns, a million pieces of loot. I don't care about any one of them because they let you upgrade and continue to boost the specs of any particular piece of armor or weapon or whatever. You get invested with it. And so you're sticking with it for multiple hours. And yeah, you might get something better later. But you're having solid relationships with your gear that you weren't having in that first sure. game because you would just drop stuff all the time. Um, I would say that uh, that was maybe a hang up for me with that game was I felt mm. like they didn't let you spec enough, you know, where oftentimes I felt like it didn't matter that much that like I was better with traps or better at stealth. Like I, I feel like they didn't play much into like how I was playing the game. Um, I, I felt like I could easily stock through an area if I needed to, or traps work, you know, perfectly efficiently, you know, and obviously that stuff adds to it or whatever, but it never felt like it was compelling, I guess. That's just me personally, but um, yeah, you know, and anyway, it's just sorry. fair enough, fair enough. Completely disagree, but fair enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. Yeah. That's why we're here. That's why we're yeah. here. I mean, really, that's the whole reason why I like Horizon. I listed so many of these elements in other games that I really like. Um, and Horizon gave all of that to me in one package where I'm not going to lie. Kirby was, I was thinking Kirby might've ended up being my number one, but the more I thought about it, the only thing stopping me from wanting to be so loud and proud about Horizon is the fact that no one else is. And I'll be damned if the consensus stops me from being who I am. There <laughs> so, you go, baby. Yeah. Hell yeah, so, dog. Yeah, Horizon 2, it's the one. Can't wait for the next one. Can't wait for the fucking DLC. Oh and my God. I am excited. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to see what we got coming with that, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, I, you know what I'm more excited than anything for is whatever, like, the end goal of this game is, is what I'm excited to see. Like, because it's going to be a big ass set piece. It's going to be fucking nuts. It's going to be crazy. And uh, that is really what I'm excited to see. I just yep. wish they would have given me and maybe a little, little bit more. But yeah, what they set that's... up at the end of this game, I'm like, oof, I wonder how that's going to pay off because we know it's exactly. coming. But like, what is it going to look like? Because because, you know, what they mentioned, it's like, all right, well, that's not like a form per se. I imagine it'll be a very intimidating thing that we fight. But I don't know. It, the You can really use your imagination on what might happen. Great. Yeah. And I. That's another this game just it gives you so much for your imagination to work on because there's even some things we've talked about how it's so cool that this world is untainted by the past. Uh, some things are learned. That's all I'm going to say. Some things are learned and it is endlessly it is almost as fascinating to think what if you didn't have context for some of the stuff that exists now? What if tomorrow you found out what an iPhone was for the first time and you don't know what a computer is like how would that work like that is almost as endlessly fascinating as all the other lore implications from the first game uh this second game it just invites so many more questions and it does that thing that i love in any piece of art where i'm thinking about it well after putting it down that is the mark of a truly special thing and a lot of these games did that but i think horizon did that in the most interesting ways and in the most consistent and did it the most consistently even the co side mission or god the main CEO. mission it's where it's a mission but yeah it is a main mission but yeah that whole thing was fascinating as well and that's exactly the type of stuff i'm talking about where it's like strangers in a strange land even though it's your own land like yeah. i love that type it's of so stuff. cool so, the way yeah. they get so creative where it's like yeah let's pretend like if they found like a sheet of paper from this world like how weird would it be if they like read about what CEOs were or something like that and like all right well like let's mm -hmm. play with that a little bit and they do and I love that they're not afraid to be a little weird because at the end of the day, the Chio probably written out sounds a bit weird, like, but they are able mm -hmm. to work with it. And they made this like kind of pseudo villain. And then they had this like. Tiny piece of horror inside of that mission where like you never I love see that this, so much. You never see this incredible hey. monster except people's reaction to it. That is like classic 
movie monster like 1960s shit. 100%. Like, that, that, like I mean, you that never actually and they have like, to, yeah like that is mm-hmm. like like written in movie like mystery like that yeah. is how you and to have like, the, fear the restraint to never show it is incredible i couldn't believe it i was like that i didn't believe i was like we're gonna see there's no way we don't see that thing and i was like that i i applaud them it wasn't a- yes I, I applaud them that took i gotta balls. admit the way you guys are the way you guys are talking about horizon is making, it, it, it's it's brain, brain, making me feel a little bit more for mm. that game I, I feel bad mm. i feel like I, I did that game dirty now I, i'm feeling i think uh, i, I might have up. to i, I might have to too. might have to come back and and, and uh, give that another round honestly to, to see yeah, yeah when that dlc hits everyone will realize oh shit we were blinded by elden ring like oh fuck i think maybe <laughs> unless maybe they drop it up. <laughs> the dlc the week after and myself we, yeah the week after i do elden think ring we're getting an elden ring dlc we soon are and, and, i want them yeah, a week but, apart <laughs> yeah. oh my god that would be that would be the most ironic i'm thing a part a lot more than a week if they do that i hope to i <laughs> hope the, i hope like the producers are talking to be like look we're gonna try and shoot for like march of next year make sure mm. to hit that date <laughs> like just to fuck with people don't fucking kanye 50 sent me in 2007 <laughs> don't do that to me <laughs> oh my god I do um, slightly I, regret the number two now. I, I I feel like it should be number two. I, I I really do love that game. Anyways, final thoughts on last year as we close out. As I have kept you all here for almost five hours now, what are hey. some final thoughts? This could be anything. <laughs> what last year had for us? Uh, as we close out twenty twenty two for sure. What is something you want to leave with us? With the achievers, of course. With some of your fans that'll be watching. Emmett, we'll start with you. I'll let you go first, Brandon. Oh, or, Brandon. never mind. I will no, go. No, 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 no. Uh, Emmett, Emmett <laughs> bequeathed it to you, Brandon. So please, you. Oh, there you go. Oh, go well, off. Uh, okay. Um, Unless you're I'll not ready, off. I could take over, but either way. Oh, don't don't okay. worry, Emmett. I'll, I'll go off. It's Look cool. at him. Look uh, at him. He exudes I... ready. Okay. So <laughs> basically, I'd boil this year down to being a year of really great video games. Did we get a lot of them? Eh. We could argue about that. I think there was a substantial amount of indie games that came out that were absolutely fantastic. If We could even say it maybe was a year for indies. Um, but the lack of AAA titles that we did get this year made up, in, uh, made up for itself in, in, in the, the content that was uh, introduced to us with those AAA video games. Um, games like Horizon. Games like Elden Ring, games like God of War, Ragnarok, some of the biggest games of the last five years. I mean, things that we've been waiting for for a long time. So I, I think it was overall a great year for video games, even though we had some middling moments throughout the year. Looking back on it all, there's a lot to chew on there, especially at the back half of the year is really when things started picking up. So um, overall, yeah, uh, p- pretty great. All right, Brandon, you have the talking sick. Who do you bequeath it to? Oh, uh, Emmett, of course. Okay, okay. You just giving hey, it back to Emmett. Yeah, I got it. You've been queefed. Right back in my hands, baby. Um, wow. <laughs> That's a phrase. Um, yes, uh, 2022. I think 2022 was a great year for video games. Uh, it's, of course, not the greatest year of all time, but we have gotten so much quality from so many different corners of the industry and from so many unexpected unexpected places because we knew God of War was going to rule, but God of War, you know, was a holdover from previous years because it got delayed. Um, you know, Elden Ring, we knew it was going to rule, but that was also something that we've been anticipating for a long time. So it's a year of things that we kept expecting to come finally coming it was a year of what the fuck is this vampire survivors holy shit what the fuck is this i don't really care about this game and i'm a little salty that it got so much attention but i respect people because they like the game a lot but stray came out of nowhere oh my god and then i agree yeah i agree, I agree. we yeah, like cats and that's a, the not, only identity we have I mean, yeah, that's what it is. But also, like, good for you for making an audience out of nothing. Yeah. Like, as an indie game, I understand that can be difficult. So there is a laser like beam spring. in that game. To be fair, that is true. Yeah. That there is, is true. a laser beam in that yeah. game. That so. is true. I might have not a bad game. Just, just not as not just, that just that throwing game. that out there. There is a not laser indie beam. of the year. It is not indie of the year. year. No, 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 no. But I there is cat. a laser. Um, <laughs> laser of the year, maybe. But that's it. Um, but yeah, we we had a lot of. 
we had a lot of just great games from unexpected from unexpected corners. Neon White is another one where it's like, who would have oh, thought a speed running so FPS visual novel would be taking over people's minds like that? I was shocked when um, people kept talking about the game. I'm like, really? I this? feel bad for not putting that somewhere on my list. If I'm being honest, I think it yeah. was super See, good. <laughs> and this is a this has been a year where there are a lot of games like that. Where even me knowing that I haven't played too much. There are a lot of games where I'm like, fuck, I, I would have played more Neon White if I had a chance. I would have played Immortality if I had the chance. would have played more High on Life. Like, there is so much. There's so many different things here where, yes, it was Elden Ring versus God of War when it comes to the game of the year. But really, there's so much variety that the rest of that top 10 is can be so many different things. And even yes. going through our list, there were going plenty ours, where yeah. it's like. Yeah, I like, oh, none of y'all had Metal Hellsinger or, oh, I didn't have Citizen Sleeper, but y'all both had it at different spots. Even Horizon being at number eight just speaks to how many other great games that really stuck to you if yeah. Horizon didn't. So, I thought that was interesting, actually. I, I was pretty convinced we were going to have similar um, lists just because of, kind of to avoid, yeah. the lack of titles this year. But like, man, it was very diverse in the way that we looked at it. So I, I exactly. appreciated that. Yeah, it's a it was a buffet of games rather than the one main course that everyone tells you to try. Uh, and yeah, ultimately, that. Yeah. that might be a better year for me than the opposite, because, yes, we got our Elden Rings. Yes, we got our God of Wars. But, you know, the th Vampire Survivor is going to stick with me for a long ass time. And that's Horizon, awesome. even if it isn't what everyone loved, that's going to stick with me for a long ass time. And then all these indies, you know, Immortality is going to be something that sticks in people's hearts and minds for years to come it seems so i'm just happy that we got this year can't wait until next year and hopefully i can balance real life and video games better oh, than God. i did it in 2022 because real life has been winning y'all but also yeah, real life might keep winning. wink wink but yeah we'll see <laughs> um 2023 is looking to have an absolute astronomical amount of video games so i'm i'm kind of concerned for how i'm going to play all of them but I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> yeah, I promise I will. <laughs> I, sh I surely will do my best. <laughs> I'll close this out. Uh, I will be a bit of a broken record and say the same thing. This year, although seemed quite dire, I will say, uh, going through it, especially if we're considering just video games in general, um, I was one of the loudest ones where I was like, this might be a pretty bad year because we went from the giant Horizon Elden Ring to pretty much a no triple A game for about six months, pretty much. And then we hit September and we got, in my opinion, like just a bunch of disappointments. Saints Row, Gotham Knights, just things that didn't hit quite as hard as everyone kind of assumed. But written out on the top 10, this is a pretty great year, especially with the honorable mentions, especially if I um, go on to talk about everything else I played, like, you know, Pokemon Violet, Crisis Core you know even though uh, cool. it's totally oh, totally quarry was a game that i enjoy like there's oh, the a lot of games was good. Oh, yeah it was great too yeah yeah absolutely. there's a lot of games here where i'm like yeah th this was good overwatch 2 to to, to kind of remind myself like yeah overwatch crossfire was x good. no i'm kidding crossfire x, x, fire x yeah bro <laughs> oh my god so good remedy's um, greatest game yeah oh my god <laughs> Remedy, what's what happened? Well, like Max Wayne, because you're waiting and call it. No, I don't love that one. Continue. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> moving on from that. Uh, but yeah, we'll be control, a, and then they're like, "What if we make a, a military what if we, shooter? What if we just make something bad? Like, let's let's get the bad energy out. We'll get the bad <laughs> energy out, so we really make hard. sure all of our stuff is good. You know? They're like, yeah. we could maybe make Call of Duty. Maybe we could do that. It's easy. Or like Alan hate this game. I'm done. <laughs> Alan, More like, hey, uh, Alan, wake me up when this is over. <laughs> wake me up inside. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Anyways. More like Quantum Break the Dist. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say the year was actually much better than I think we all thought, or at least myself. This was much better, especially on paper. I mean, yeah. this was actually, I would argue, probably better than in the last than the last two years, maybe, man, maybe slightly better than nineteen and twenty, definitely. I would agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Like so, absolutely. hard to argue with things when it's written out this compellingly. Uh, the last, I was, I would argue, the last few months actually saved us from from a pretty whatever year. Um, but yeah, yeah, I thank everyone for joining. Like, oh, and like you said, uh, Brandon, uh, Nick, this year. 
looks to be I mean, Scary. my God, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I made a list me. to prep for an episode and we, I mean, there's like 20 games I want or something like that, like close mm -hmm. to 20. I think it's like 15 games I'm interested in and it ends at June. And that's how that's just the stuff we know about. So like Ugh. we're we're probably entering in where we might not have enough time to play like the best of the best, which will be unfortunate, but we'll have to see. From the but, makers of Hot Girl Summer, it's not Girl Summer because I'm inside playing games. Yeah, <laughs> no more women for me. <laughs> Thank I'm, I'm, you I'm all off. for Why joining so us. Um, Cut off. Thank you all for joining us for this longest podcast that I personally have ever done at four thirty-two thirty-five. Oh. Thank you for joining us. This was fun. Remember, Emmett, where can we find you? Your Twitter, uh, whatever, Instagram, whatever you use. Plug all the stuff you'd like. Oh, whew, of, of course, first off, Players Club Podcast. That's the show that I host uh, usually every week, but we're still technically in holiday break as we're recording this, but we're about to come back with our Game of the Year show uh, towards the end of the month, so be on the lookout for that. Um, also, you know, articles I've written, the top video essays lists, you can check that out. A lot of great picks in there. I love all those videos, so check those out. Hopefully you get put onto a new YouTube channel. I love that. And then, um, of course, welcome to the thing podcast, uh, literally type in welcome to the thing podcast.com. We have a website now, uh, we're going to be recording that soon. I love that show. Jared green tail foster. Great show. Spoonful podcast as well. Mario, uh, Paco Dio and I are just talking about random shit. We just did the Spoonies awards and you can go look at back at the last year of pop culture there and EJ spun six, one everywhere on the internet uh instagram add an extra one but everywhere else ej spun 61 uh on twitter and that's all i got I, my, my little block of self-promotion is getting bigger by the year so i uh, need to be i see i was like god you make me feel so lazy i need to do more shit i don't have time otherwise so it's all good <laughs> yeah yeah i need i need to do more stuff there's a, a show i'm gonna revive this year get excited to i'm not talking about it quite yet but very excited for that brandon where can oh, everyone find you uh, so I have been um, I've been, uh, been on YouTube for many, many, many years now. Um, that, that being said, um, my, my my most recent channel that I had been working on was called Game Corner. Um, I, I was uploading uh, regular videos every week about game news, sort of in an entertaining sort of way. Um, and uh, that was going pretty well, except the last few months of my year have been pretty miserable on the uh, self personal side of things. Haven't been able to do that. Um, that being said, I've been working for maybe about a couple months now on a big revival slash rebranding slash mm -hmm. um, kind of doing a new thing in a new direction. So I will be releasing videos again here soon um, on on a new moniker, but I have not uh, I'm not talking about that quite yet. Um, we're, we're getting close, though. So um, I, I got I, my, all my art is ready um, and, and I'm just getting some content together at this point. So can I um, guess I I will have some new shit soon, but if you would like to watch what I have been doing in the last year, uh, you can do that on youtube.com slash my game corner, and you can find me anywhere on the internet at flustered tomcat. So, yeah. Flustered tomcat. I like that. I like that. Can I guess what the name is? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Corner full of games. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't believe I was gonna it. go for a game cornier, but okay, that works. Too. <laughs> game cornier. Uh, it's the That's game coroner, good. actually. We <laughs> we uh, we bury and and put the games down to rest. I kill games. That's actually not a bad name. That is a pretty game corner. Just pretty, did that right off the top of my head good. there. Yeah, yeah. Just use that one. Cancel all your art. Do all <laughs> yeah, this shit. I'll, I'll, I'll burn <laughs> everything else. I imagine that's e that's corner. easy. Yes, I indeed. imagine it's easy. Well. Achievers, while I keep my cat from stepping on my keyboard, thank you so much for joining us. Again, this is one of our longest things I've ever done. Uh, this was so much fun. Remember to check everyone out. I'll have their stuff in the description as well uh, to all of their socials and these things. Uh, remember, go, Chief. Peace out, y'all. <laughs>